This is Audible. Audible Studios presents Hard to Break, written by Bella Jewell, performed by Carly Robbins. Prologue. Exhaustion threatens to take over my tired, aching body as I walk carefully down the stairs. My eyes are burning from the lack of sleep in the past few days, and my feet are hating me for every painful step I take. My house is dark, but I know he's down there, because I can hear him retching. Frustration seizes my chest, a savage twist to my heart as my feet slowly take me closer to a scene. I'm so tired of acting out. Quinn, he cries between retching. Quinn! Swallowing down the anger threatening to rise and explode from my chest, I walk with numb legs towards the bathroom. I step over an empty bottle of whiskey on my way there, the remainder of its contents soaked into the carpet for me to clean up once again. I put my hand at the slightly ajar bathroom door and push it open, stepping inside. My father is on the ground curled in a ball, covered in vomit. Pain rises up and flashes through my body as I walk towards him and stare down at his pitiful form. He wasn't always like this. Before my mother died, he was happy, fun-loving, and clean. Now he's a drunk, and he has been since the day she was taken from us. I'm the only person in the world who cares enough to stand by his side, no matter how hard that is at times. Dad, you need to get up and into the shower. I have to clean this mess up. He groans and rolls to his back, his shirt soaked with stale sweat. My shoulders slump and I know there's just no way I'll get him into the shower. He's too drunk, too far gone. Instead, I go to the sink and fill it up, and then I take a washcloth and start the daunting task of dabbing him clean. When his shirt is vomit-free and his face is wiped clean, I get to work helping him out of the bathroom so I can clean up in there, too. We make it to the couch before he vomits again, swallowing down my tears for a third time. I start cleaning up that mess. When I'm done, I force him to drink some water, then I go about hiding the remaining alcohol in the house because I know he'll look for it. He's too drunk to bother to try too hard. If he can't find it, he will, as always, just pass out. Once the bathroom is clean and sanitized, I cover my passed-out father with a blanket and then disappear down the hall to my bedroom, closing the door gently. I gather my clothes, Take a shower and then slide into bed. It's late, probably past 1 a.m., and I have an entire garage to run tomorrow. The dull ache in my chest, the one that never leaves, is heavier tonight. It's heavy with the burdens of our lives. How the hell am I supposed to fix it all? I'm 25 years old. I should be out with friends, falling in love and having no care in the world, except what I'm going to wear for the day and what sort of coffee I'm going to order. Instead, I have the responsibilities of a business, because it's the only thing that keeps me sane. I have to keep this two-bedroom shack tidy, because it's the only home I have. I have no friends, except the guys that work at the garage with me. I have very few family members, and only one of them actually gives a shit about my dad and me. That's my uncle, who visits as much as he can, but mostly, he is too busy. I have never been in love. In fact, the only boyfriend I've had time for was when I was 16. He left me when he saw the state of my house and my father. Oh, and when he got into my pants. Since then, there have been only a few random dates that didn't go anywhere. I want happiness. Truly, I do. But there are far too many obstacles in my way to ever begin to imagine where to start. The business is struggling. The expansion we did two years ago didn't pay off the way we originally thought it would. And our debts have doubled. The mortgage is overdue and utility bills are piling high. My dad gets worse by the day. In fact, it's been over two weeks since he's dragged himself off the couch and came in to check on his own garage. So it's just me. I'm all I have, and right now, I'm okay with that. Aren't I? As I close my eyes and drift off into a fitful sleep, I wonder just how much longer I can take all of this before I eventually end up exactly like my father.
when the pain becomes too much, where will I go from there? Chapter 1 Good morning, Dad, I say, heading into the kitchen the next morning. My father is sitting on the couch still, his head bowed, a cup of joe in his hands. He looks up when I come in and I wince. Once, a long time ago, my dad was an exceptionally handsome man, with his golden hair and bright blue eyes. He had a big frame and was all muscle. Now he's frail and weak. His hair is dull and his eyes, they're empty. Morning, sugar, he rasps. I'm, uh, sorry. About last night. He says this every time that happens. No biggie, I say in my best chipper voice, pouring a coffee. Are you coming into the garage today? He frowns. I would, but my stomach, it's not so good. Maybe tomorrow. He says that every time, too. Okay, Dad. I gather my keys and carry my coffee to the front door. As I pass him, my dad reaches out and curls his hand around my wrist. I'm sorry, Quinny. I'll try to be better. I look down into his empty blue eyes, and I wish I could believe that. I really do. There's a pain etched deep in my chest, and it's one I live with on a daily basis. There is pain for the loss of my mom. There is pain because my dad is so broken. And there is a deep pain knowing that my family is no longer beautiful like it once was. I don't resent my dad for being this way, but I can't accept it either. I've tried to understand, but I guess, since I've never had a love like theirs, it is beyond me. I pat his shoulder and pull my wrist from his. Okay, Dad, later. I rush out the front door and get into my old, restored, baby blue Mustang with white leather interior. It's the only thing I cherish in my life. It is important to me, because when my dad was sober and my mom was alive, we fixed this car up together. It's the only piece of the old him I have left, so I hang on to it with both hands, cherishing the memories it holds for me. My dad taught me everything I know about cars and how to restore them. I've never loved anything as much as I love being under the hood of a car. Strange, I know. But it takes me back to a place where happiness was like a bubble surrounding me. It was hard growing up being a tomboy. I had the looks to be a girly girl, but I never used them. I loved being around the guys, and I loved being with my dad. During my high school years, I got a good deal of taunts thrown my way because I was different from the rest. I still recall the memory when I told dad I wanted to be a mechanic. The very thought makes me smile. You want to be... what? He asks, his eyes wide. I want to be a mechanic, I say proudly. Like you, Daddy, he blinks. Baby, you're a girl. I stare at him, shocked. And? He shakes his head. Shouldn't you want to... I don't know, wear dresses and paint your nails? Not all girls do those things, Dad, he laughs. No, but... Honey... I don't think it's the right profession for you. It's a world of males and, well, male things, I straighten. You don't think I can handle that because I'm a girl? That isn't enough of an excuse, Daddy. I've been under those cars since I was big enough to do so, and you know it. Don't be like the rest of them. Don't make me feel stupid for pursuing something that isn't necessarily feminine. My dad's face softens. Baby. He says gently, I'm damned proud when I watch you under a car. I just want you to do what's right for you. If this is it, then Quinn, I'm over the moon. You know you've been my little sidekick since you were little. I'd love nothing more than to be able to expand your knowledge. I beam and throw myself into his arms. Are you saying I can work for you? He chuckles, squeezing me tightly. After you talk to your mother about it. I come back to the here and now, with a smile on my face. My dad never had a chance of stopping me. I was born to be under cars, and once he convinced my mother of this, I never left the garage. With a smile, I back out and drive to work. The garage my dad owns, and has owned since I was born, 
is only about 20 minutes away from home. There are five of us that work there. Jace, Lenny, Oscar, Maddie, and myself. These guys are the only reason I keep fighting as hard as I do, because there are so many times when giving up would be so much easier. They've been in my life for a solid five years now, and if it wasn't for them, I would have never been able to hold the garage together. During this time, I've managed to bond with them all. They've become the only family I know. Jace is my closest friend out of the four guys. He's two years older than me and an amazing mechanic. He's got a skill under the hood that not many people have. He's also a playboy at heart. He has more women than underwear. But I have a friendship with him that is just that, friendship. There is, and never has been, anything sexual between us. Even though he's handsome, he's funny, and he makes me smile. Lenny and Oscar are the oldest of the group. Lenny is 50 and Oscar is 58. Both are friends of my father's, and so therefore are like second and third fathers to me. They're loyal to him, and they do amazing work. Lenny has serious talent when it comes to fixing the bodies on cars. He has a way of making them look better when they leave than when they came in. Oscar is an old-school mechanic, and people love him for that very reason. The garage just wouldn't be the same without them. Maddie is our newest member, and he's only 20, but is blossoming into a great mechanic with every passing day. He's training under us, so he also studies as well as puts in hours at the garage. He's good with his hands, but most importantly, he's got an eye for the smaller things, the things we often miss. He's smart as hell, and he's taken in every single thing he's learned in his time with us. I arrive at the garage and pull my car into the reserved spot that's always been mine. I throw my booted feet out and then slide my body out at the same time, slamming the door behind me. I'm always first to arrive and last to leave. But it's not just because I love this place. I help out with the cars, but I also have paperwork coming out of my ass on top of it. I don't mind, though. There's a certain peace this place brings me, and being here gives me stability. I'd be lost without it. I walk towards the large two-bay garage with pixie wheels, written in bright blue across the top of the old steel-colored walls. My mom used to call me Pixie when I was little, so Dad made sure to include it into the name when they started this business. I've never had the heart to change it. My parents had so many happy years in this place, and I think it's part of the reason I hang on to it so tightly. It's the only happy memories I have left. I open the door that leads into the office from the workshop and step inside. There are two offices in the front left-hand corner of the garage— one that has a reception desk and files, and another that has a computer and phone, as well as a crap load of tools and boxes stacked against the wall. The second is where I lock myself away to do most of my work. Maddie rotates his time between the garage and reception, because we can't afford a receptionist right now. I had to install a phone in the workshop so we could take calls out there. I drop my phone down onto the reception desk and flick on the lights, I open the door leading out to the garage and see we have four cars still needing to be pushed through before we can take on any more today. The locals around here know the business, know me, and know my story, so they are loyal and always bring their cars in to us. Even still, when you're so far behind, business has to be better than that to stay afloat. I sit at the desk booting up the computer and hope to get through some invoicing before the guys start in two hours. I have a lot to do, and it's the only time we're quiet enough for me to be able to do anything without interruption. I manage to pour through fifty invoices before Lenny sticks his head in the door, his deep brown eyes softening when he sees me. Morning, sweetheart. Hey, Lenny. I smile, standing. He studies me, and his expression becomes grim. I know he can see that I'm exhausted. Hell, I can see that I'm exhausted. I avoided looking in the mirror this morning because I knew that I'd see what resembled a run-over, beaten-up clown looking back at me. I don't have time for a reminder of what I already know. Lenny steps through the door, his tall frame taking up most of it. Even in his fifties, Lenny is strong and fit. His hair is more pepper than salt still, giving him that rugged, older, hot guy look. I bet the old ducks go nuts over him. 
That thought makes me scrunch my nose up. Nobody wants to think about old people going at it. Great way to start the morning. Rob give you trouble again last night? He asks as I try to step around him. I wave a hand. Nope. I look like a clown because I was out raging all night. He gives me a bitter expression. He doesn't like my humor. He's too caring. He doesn't understand that my humor is all I have left. He reaches out and takes my shoulders in his big hands, looking down at me, his expression dark. Quinny, you're exhausted. You've got huge circles under your eyes. You look like shit. Don't lie to me, honey. I frown. He can see right through me. He got drunk, made a mess. It was fine. Lenny shakes his head and his jaw goes tight. Going to have a word with him again this afternoon. What's the point, Len? I throw my hands up. We've all tried, and let's face it, he doesn't listen. He'll never listen. You're running yourself into the ground. He's telling me nothing I don't already know. Don't worry, I'm made of steel. Quinn. Lenny, I'll be fine, I say in a firm tone, stepping past him. I enter the garage just as Jace, Oscar, and Maddie come in. They're always on time, each and every one of them. I'm grateful for that. Jace strides over wearing his favorite pair of coveralls, which, believe me, do not take away from his masculinity one tiny bit. He wraps an arm around my shoulder and plants a loud, smacking kiss to my forehead. Morning, sunshine. You look like crap. I smile. Thanks, and you look like Farmer Joe. He steps back, hooking his thumbs through his coveralls and grins. You like? Not even a little bit. Better not let your ladies see you in those. You'll go from hot to... Well, not. This is a lie. Women would probably throw themselves at his feet if they got a look at him in those coveralls, with his long dark hair curling at his neckline and those bright blue eyes twinkling with mischief. Farmer Joe, eat your heart out. I always knew you thought I was hot. His grin gets bigger. I roll my eyes. How you got that out of what I said is far, far beyond me. Morning, Quinny. Oscar says, winking at me. With his salt and pepper hair, he's far more worn out looking than Lenny, but he's got the sweetest green eyes. You do look like shit. Come on, guys, I protest. You're killing me here. Can one of you tell me my hair looks totally rad, please? Hell, just lie to me and we'll be cool. You look like a sweet sugar pie, Maddie says in his Texas drawl, which I absolutely adore. Now you nearly made that believable. I grin. He chuckles. Maddie has only been in Florida for the last four years. Before that, he was a Texan boy through and through. He's going to be handsome as all hell when he fills out, from that young man to an older, more mature man. He's got sandy blonde hair and hazel eyes. His face is handsome, yet sweet, and there are a good lot of girls who want to get their hands on him. What are we pulling in today? Lenny asks coming up behind me and resting his hands on my shoulders. We need to move what's already in here and then bring in as many more as we can get through before closing. I'm on it, Oscar says, disappearing into the office to collect the booking information schedule. I'll do the little sedan, I say, nodding to a red sedan that's without its tires in the corner. Tell me what it needs. The alternator has shit itself, Lenny informs me. Got all the parts ordered in and ready to go. Also got some new tires for it. Cool, I say. Well, let's do this. I disappear into the office to get my things, and then head into the female bathroom to put on an old pair of faded jeans and a long-sleeved button-up shirt that's seen better days. I quickly change, rolling up the sleeves on the shirt and lifting my black hair into a high ponytail. Then I dare to look in the mirror. I don't like what I see. They're all right. I look awful. My eyes, which are usually dark brown, are bloodshot and there are some serious dark rings under them. My hair, black as the night, is limp and gross. I look drawn out and tired. I splash my face with some water and slap my cheeks a few times to give them color before heading back out to get started on the day. I slide right on over to the car that will occupy my morning and get it raised up so I can slip underneath it. I get down to work and listen to the guys chatting casually as I do. 
The radio is playing through some speakers that are mounted on the walls, and every now and then one of the guys will laugh loudly, which always brings a smile to my face. They're a dream to work with. I finish the red car in about two hours and move on to replacing a few batteries and doing a few general services on some others that come in. Then I get to work helping Lenny fix the body of a car that has been in a serious accident. It's not easy when there's so much damage, but I do love replacing old parts with the new. It seems to give the cars a fresh vibe that most people are happy to drive away with. Yo, Quinn, Jace calls just after lunch, when I'm head deep in the engine of an old Ford that sounds like it's about to fall to pieces. Yeah? I call. Call for you. Ugh. Why must people be so needy? I push up to my feet and walk into the reception area, lifting the phone. Hello? I say in my best chipper voice. Hello, Quinn. My name is Wesley. I'm calling about my car. I sit down, crossing my legs. Sure, Wesley. What's the problem? Well, Betty seems to be smoking quite a bit. I blink. Betty? Uh, Betty? Her name. Oh, dear. Right. I fight back a giggle. And has Betty been doing this a lot? No, he says. Well, she's quite old. I've had her since I was just a teen, so it's been a long time. Sounds like Betty is trying to blow herself up. I wouldn't blame her. Has, uh, Betty been regularly serviced? He snorts. Of course. She's my pride and joy. All righty, then. Okay, listen, Wesley. It sounds like I might need to take a look at her. Smoke from the engine is never a good thing. Don't worry. We'll lead her away from the edge. Wesley is silent. Do you think she's on her way out and is trying to tell me something? Dear Lord. I think so, Wesley. But we'll see what we can do. I'll bring her right down. He hangs up the phone before I can even say goodbye. I shake my head with a smirk on my face when the bell above the door rings, indicating someone has just entered the office. I turn and my mouth drops clean open as I take in who just walked into my garage. I must be seeing things, because there is no way in hell I am actually seeing who I am seeing. It can't be right. I blink a few times. I'm pretty sure I even rub my eyes. No way. It can't be. It is. Tazen Watts. Tazen freaking Watts. He's only a world-famous custom car builder. Everyone in Florida, the States, and probably the entire world knows who Tazen Watts is. He has been building cars since before he was 18, and is now well known for his television show Hot Fury, where he is filmed building some truly amazing cars. Some of the best racers in the world have cars from him. He's epic. He's not only built cars for racing, he's also built customs for millionaires, celebrities, and even for charity auctions. I've seen him on television, watched him, swooned over him like every other hot-blooded female in the world. He was my idol when I was younger. I spent hours watching his show. He inspired me to keep following my dreams, even when I wasn't sure this was the right place for me. Seeing the way he created such beauty made me determined to one day build another car for myself. And he's in my garage. Wait, why is he in my garage? Morning there, little angel. He purrs, letting his eyes travel over my body. I shudder. He just checked me out. Oh, my lord. Tazen Watts just checked me out. Swoon. I changed into my coveralls earlier, when the job got a little more greasy. So I have them down, tied around my waist, so he is getting a full view of my tank-top-covered breasts, and nothing more. I don't like bras when I'm working. My breasts don't agree with me on this poor choice, but they don't get a say in the matter. Ah, uh, I say in a weak voice, and I know my eyes are wide and shocked. C -c can I help you? Great. Just pretend you don't know him. It's better that way. There's a good chance I'm going to pass out. Yeah, you can help me all right, he says, his eyes lusty. God, he has beautiful eyes. In fact, he has beautiful everything. 
I don't even try to stop my eyes as they travel over him. He's standing there, looking devastating as hell, and I have the urge to rush over and lick him. Tazen is the picture of hot male. He's tall, maybe six feet, and built like a brick wall. He's all muscle, from the bulges at his shoulders to the biceps pressing against his shirt. His longish brown hair is a mess, but in the best possible way, as it curls slightly near his collar. His eyes are the color of milk chocolate, melted milk chocolate. His skin is lightly tanned, and he's got killer dimples. There was a time when I stared at those dimples every time I watched his show. They are to die for. Tazen Watts has the power to make any girl's panties melt off, even if they're batting for the other team. He's that beautiful. I'd take a guess and say he is around 30, and he is rocking it. Oh, yes, rocking it. Well, he says, his voice a low, thick husk. You going to help me, Angel? Or are you going to stand there and give yourself wet panties checking me out? My eyes snap up and I splutter. My panties are not w wet. I'm stammering. Someone kill me. He gives me a lazy half grin. That's so? Oh, boy. What can I do for you? I say, trying to steady my shaky voice. A dimple appears in his cheek. Well, now I have wet panties. I'm here to see a dude named Quinn. Heard he's running this. He glances around. Old fucked up place. Get him for me, will you, love? Oh, he did not. My back snaps straight and all my attention for him flies out the window. He just insulted my garage, and worse, he insulted me. I hate being called love. And more than that, I hate arrogant men that assume that it must be a man running the place, because it couldn't possibly be a woman. I study him, and then grin. Of course, I'll just go and fetch. I trail off and run my fingers down my cleavage. Him. His eyes drop to my fingers, hovering over the swells of my breasts, and I want to slap him. Tazen who? Asshole. You do that. I turn, and with a grin, I untie my coveralls, pull them up over my shoulders, wipe any emotion off my face, and turn back to him with my hand extended. Hi there. I'm Quinn. How may I help you today? He blinks. Then he narrows his eyes. Then he bursts out laughing. Right. Good one. I don't smile, and I watch as his eyes travel to the name embroidered onto my coveralls. Then they widen, and he mutters, Fuck. Yes, that would be an appropriate word, I point out. Now, what exactly brings you into my garage, Tazen Watts? I'm sure people like you have plenty of better things to do than come into my old fucked-up garage, right? His eyes skim over my face and my skin prickles. People like me, Angel. He did not say Angel in the loving kind of way this time. Yes, people like you. I understand my little space isn't up to standards for a man like you, but you're here and obviously you have a reason. I want to know what that reason is. The fact that you came in here and insulted me by insulting my garage and assuming that I was a man has already pissed me off. So make it quick, will you? I have no time for sexist pigs. Now his brows shoot up. Sexist? I lean in close. Yes, sexist. You have a name that can be read wrong. It's hardly being sexist. He has a point. I say nothing. Why are you here? He crosses his arms and it takes all my strength not to stare at the bulging muscles that pop out from that very movement. I've heard this joint is for sale. I'm interested. Say what? My body flinches and my eyes widen as I let his words sink in. For sale? No. He must have it wrong. I think you've misunderstood, Mr. Watts. This place isn't for sale. Tazen, he says, his voice a low growl. My name is Tazen, Angel. Mr. Watts makes me feel well, old. His eyes drop to my lips, and I can assure you that I'm far, far from old. I shiver, but manage to force out my next words. My place isn't for sale, Tazen. His teeth flash as he smiles over my use of his name. 
I hold his eyes, my glare not wavering. You really are a tiny thing, aren't you? This place is adequately named. Wouldn't you say so, Pixie? My blood boils. Don't ever, I growl, stepping closer. Call me that again. I wonder, he says, lifting his perfect freaking hand and scratching his chin. How well you really run this place. I mean, obviously you're not doing a good job, from what I've heard. I'm going to lose my shit in about 3.5 seconds. Tell me why the hell you're assuming my business is for sale? Your business, he says, raising his brows. I thought it belonged to Robert Peterson, and you're just filling in? It does, I say through gritted teeth, but right now he's out of action, so I'm running it. I'm his daughter. His eyes flicker over me, and I shift uneasily. Well, it would appear you're in some trouble then, wouldn't it? Hey, Jace says, stepping into the office and up to my side. Back off. Tazen gives him a bored expression, as if he's no more than an annoying fly buzzing around his space, then turns back to me. I get in before he can. You have your wires crossed. It is not for sale. Now, can you please leave? He looks up to the front door, then back to me again. You're in a prime position here. Investors are piling up to take over this garage. It might be a shit heap, but with a bit of money poured into it. It could be amazing. I have money, and there are a hell of a lot of car enthusiasts around this area. Not to mention some of the biggest races around the world come here every year. It's a gold mine, and therefore a perfect location to open another shop of mine. A lump forms in my throat, but I keep it together, saying dryly, It is my garage, and until that changes, you're on my property, and I want you to leave. He shrugs. I'll leave, but it won't be for long. I'm making an offer on this place this afternoon. This is my home, I whisper angrily. His eyes soften slightly, and I'm sorry for that. But business is business, Quinn. Are we done here? I mutter. His eyes grow dark and I swallow down the lump forming in my throat. We're done for now. Go to hell! He smiles at my sass, flashing those killer dimples. Damn him for being beautiful, Angel. Hell is for the weak, and if there's one thing I am not, it's weak. This guy is pissing me off. Leave. He gives me a lazy, lopsided grin that makes my heart pound. Afternoon, Pixie. With that, he turns and strides out. When he's gone, I turn to Jace, who is watching him go. Was that? He swallows with wide eyes. Tazen Watts? Yes, I mutter. It certainly was. Tazen Watts, he breathes. Holy fuck. He is only the best custom car builder ever. I'm aware of that. You should have gone over and just held him, at least for a few seconds. He's a god. You love his show. I loved his show. Now I want to stab him. Jace turns to me, biting his lip to stop the laughter. I point a finger at him. Don't. I have to call the bank. If he's right, we're in trouble. His face falls. Jesus, Quinn. Yeah, I whisper, staring at the door. If we lose this garage, we lose everything. Chapter 2 Yes, but... I try, but the lady on the phone cuts me off once again. Miss Peterson, you're four months behind in payments, and unless you can provide these funds in the next 30 days, then we have no other option but to foreclose on the garage. God... I knew we were behind, but I must have miscalculated because I didn't realize we were this far behind. My father is sick, I cry frustrated. If you can provide documentation from a doctor, then we may be able to extend the time frame. That won't happen. It won't because he isn't sick. He's an alcoholic. Damn it. Damn him. Please, I beg. This is my life. I'm sorry, Miss Peterson, but this is my job and I'm unable to bend the rules. I understand, I whisper, feeling my chest building with pressure. How much is it that we need to get back up to date? Twenty-two thousand. 
$22,000. I'm going to vomit. Okay, I say, my voice breaking. I wish you the best of luck. We hang up and I lean over, lifting my legs to my chest and wrapping my arms around them. I start panting, trying to breathe through the panic. A hard hand curls around my shoulder, but I don't look up. Sweetheart. It's Lenny. I open my mouth to speak, but nothing comes out except a broken sob. Quinn, tell me what's going on. He spins my chair slowly around and kneels in front of me. He captures my face in his big hands and forces me to look up at him. Tears are running down my cheeks. He swipes one away with his thumb. Tell me, sweetheart. Twenty-two thousand, Lenny. I have to give them twenty-two thousand in thirty days, or the garage is gone. Lenny closes his eyes, and pain flashes across his face for a brief second before he pulls it together. We can fix this. We can't fix it, I laugh bitterly. We're behind. We're never going to get that much money in such a short time. Yes, we are. I jerk my head and see Oscar, Jace, and Maddie standing at the door. Guys, I whisper. We'll do a car wash. Say it's to raise money. The locals will be all over that, Maddie says. We'll do a deal. We'll have a heap of tires out the back that need to be used. Free tires with a full service, Oscar puts in. We'll talk to businesses. See if any of them are willing to make a donation, Jace says. My heart breaks. Because these guys will go to the ends of the earth to save this garage. It's just as much their home as it is mine. I know I need to dig deep and fight for this. But right now I feel so damned empty I can't breathe. I open my mouth to answer when, of all people, my father stumbles in. Yes, stumbles. He falls through the door and his hand lashes out just in time to stop him from falling. When he's managed to steady himself... He looks up and smiles a twisted, drunken smile. Well, howdy, tame. Jesus, he's smashed. What are you doing here, Rob? Lenny snaps, standing and storming towards my father. Just coming to check out my garage. Your garage, Oscar snorts. Don't insult us, Rob. My dad's eyes find mine and he gives me another wonky smile. Hello, love. Not going to give your old dad a cuddle? I stare at him and something inside me snaps. It just snaps. I storm forward and my hands lash out in front of me and land on his chest. Then I shove him with all my might. He falls backwards in slow motion. Lenny's arm shoots out to try and catch him, but he doesn't make it in time. My father lands with a thump and a bounce. He yells out in pain, but I'm too far gone. I see red. My head is pounding. My body is prickling all over as I storm towards him. When I reach him, I lean over and scream in his face. How dare you come in here? How dare you come in here drunk? How dare you have the nerve to call this place yours? It isn't yours. It's mine. I am the one who has worked here trying to keep it afloat. Don't you come in here when everything is about to fall to pieces and have the nerve to do it drunk. I leap over him when I've finished screaming and run out. My heart is pounding and my head is spinning as I charge past the doors of the garage and onto the driveway. I stumble down the sidewalk, passing my Mustang. I rush down towards the row of clubs, restaurants, and bars that line the streets. I don't know where I'm going. I just know I can't breathe and it hurts. I trip a few times, shoving through people. I'm so confused, so torn, so broken down. I hate the mix of feelings fighting against each other in my chest. One minute I feel guilty for being harsh to my father. The next I feel a wild anger that he's so careless. And the next, I want to hold him and make his pain go away. It's emotional whiplash, and every day I live with it. It gets a little bit harder. I want to understand. I want to run away. I want to help him. But I can't be everything all at once. My mind is a mess when it comes to him, and I honestly don't know how to change it. My mental fog clears slightly when I hear a distant voice calling out for me. I don't stop. I'm having a panic attack. 
Unfamiliar with panic attacks, I've experienced them all my life. I usually have them in private, but this one is full force, and there's no stopping it, public or not. I push past a few more people, tears running down my cheeks, when a set of hard arms go around my body and haul me to a screeching halt. My ears are ringing so loudly I can't hear who it is that's calling my name. I can only feel arms tight around my waist. Then I'm moving quickly, being shoved through the crowd until I'm set down at a quiet table outside a restaurant. There are hands in mine. Someone is kneeling in front of me, talking to me, but I can't hear what they're saying. I just want it all to go away. I close my eyes, panting, gasping for air, and trying to bring my bound hands to my chest, which is so tight it feels like I'm having heart failure. Someone starts rubbing my back furiously, and that feels nice. The pressure eases my breathing, and slowly, as reality comes back, I hear the voice talking to me. You're all right. Just keep breathing. I drop my hands to my sides and my eyes flutter open as my breathing goes from a deep pant to short but fairly deep breaths. My eyes focus on the man kneeling in front of me, and I gasp, skittering backwards in my chair. Tazen Watts is in front of me, crouching down, one hand wrapped around my body, rubbing my back. His eyes are concerned. He's got an alarmed look on his face. His lips are gently parted and his eyes are narrowed making a little crinkle form on his forehead. I don't want his concern. Hey, you doing okay there, Angel? I'm, I gasp, fine. I try to stand, but my knees wobble and I go crashing back down. Whoa there, you need to sit. He turns and flicks his fingers, and a moment later a waiter comes over with a glass of water. Tazen takes it, nods and turns back to me, placing it in my hands. He curls his fingers around mine, and for a moment, my breathing becomes shallow. But it's because of the feeling of his hands on mine, and not from my panic attack. Drink it. It'll help. Trust me. Trust him? He wants to take something from me that I'm not ready to give up. I understand his need to buy my garage, but I want him to understand how important it is to me. He doesn't see that. I jerk my hand in the glass and water sloshes over the side and lands on my lap. His eyes hold mine as I bring it to my lips and sip it. You have panic attacks often? I lean in close, having gotten myself together enough to leave. I stare at his lips, and his eyes shoot to mine, a strange attraction sparking between us. I ignore it and lean closer. Then I tilt the glass forward, and all the water in it spills out and lands all over him. He leaps backwards, and I stand, staring down at him with cold eyes. I have them when assholes come into my life and try to take everything I love away. Then I step past him and rush off down the sidewalk. Tazen Watts will get nothing from me. Nothing. Chapter 3 by the time I get home that night, I'm emotionally exhausted. My eyes are heavy and burning. My chest feels like there's a 200-pound weight lying on top of it. My legs ache with every step I take towards my front door. I am dreading going in there, but not because I'm afraid of how my dad will react. It's because I'm ashamed over how I reacted. He might deserve a lot of things, but he didn't deserve my verbal or physical assault. I shouldn't have behaved the way I did, and because of that, I am swimming in guilt. It's like beating up a wounded puppy. He doesn't know what he's doing. My attacking him only makes me the bad guy. I should have held it together, kept myself calm. My actions did nothing to change the situation. In fact, they did nothing to him except confuse him more. I reach out with a shaky hand when I stop at the old rickety front door. I take a deep breath and curl my fingers around the handle, turning it and pushing it open. I step through the front door and inhale deeply. Something smells. Nice. Curious, I walk towards the kitchen. I immediately see my dad standing at the microwave, pulling out a dish. He turns and notices me and quickly places the dish down. He doesn't look drunk, but his eyes are bloodshot red. He does, however, look defeated. 
His shoulders are slumped, and he looks exhausted. Quinny, honey, he says, his voice full of shame. I'm sorry. My heart breaks. I rush over and throw myself into his arms. It's okay, Dad. I'm sorry I did that. I can smell alcohol on him, but I didn't expect not to. He can't just stop drinking. If it were that easy, he would have already done it. I've tried to get him help before, but you can't force someone to do something unless they're ready, and I don't have the money to send him to a rehabilitation center. I made dinner, he says, giving me a wonky smile. I look down at the dish. It's a mix of pasta that seems clumped together with a cheesy sauce. Oh, I say, staring at the mess. It looks, uh, great. Mac and cheese, he mumbles, leaning down to pull out two bowls. Nothing special. He serves me a bowl of food and we sit down at the table. I take a mouthful and struggle to swallow it down. I keep going because he's trying, and it isn't right of me to turn my nose up when he's actually making an effort. Dad, on the other hand, scarves his down as if it's the best food he's ever tasted. That makes me sad. Listen, he says after swallowing his final bite. I'm going to fix this for us. My chest tightens, because there's no possible way he can pull himself together to help me. I know he'll try, but he's too far gone to dedicate himself to this for long. I know that better than anyone. Dad, I begin but he waves a hand, cutting me off. No, it isn't fair that I'm leaving this all on you, Quinny. You should be enjoying life, making friends. His eyes scan the small, crappy house. Moving out, I close my eyes. He reaches over, his warm hand capturing mine. I flick my eyes open and glance at him. Dad, you owe $22,000 in 30 days. How do you suppose you will fix that? I'll find a way, but I promise you, Quinny, that I will figure it out. I won't leave you without a home. It's not the home I care about. If only he understood that. It's the garage. Because that's not just the place I work. It's the only home I've ever known. Listen, let's talk about this tomorrow. Right now, I'm exhausted. Thank you for dinner, Dad. I stand and take my bowl into the kitchen. I rinse it out and then kiss Dad on the head before heading towards my room. I'll fix it, Quinny, he calls after me. I don't answer him. There's nothing he can do to fix this. I'm the last hope this garage has. Come with me, Quinn girl, Jace grins, flashing the killer of all killer smiles. I'm walking down the sidewalk, nearly at the garage the next morning. Jace caught up to me two blocks ago, after coming to my house to get me, but finding I had only just left. He's been following me, trying to convince me to go to the races on the weekend, where Tazen is unveiling his newest race car. Tazen gave him free tickets and two nights' accommodation. Talk about trying to bribe him, the dick. I'd rather stab myself in the eye with a blunt instrument than go to anything that jerk is at. Why are you awake so early? I ask, trying to change the subject. Was your girl for the night unsatisfied? He snorts. No lady leaves my bed unsatisfied. I roll my eyes. Sure, Fabio. He nudges me with his shoulder, getting back to the subject I've been trying to avoid. Come with me, Quinn. It's two days. I don't have two days, I point out. I really don't have two days. I have so much to do, and I honestly don't know how the hell I'm going to find the time to pull it all off in a month. You have two days, he protests. The garage is closed on the weekends. Yeah, it is, I mutter, and I'm trying to save it, so I'll be spending my weekend coming up with ways to do that. We'll talk while we're drinking cocktails by the pool and watching famous car racers fly around the track. I turn and stare at him, lifting my shades. Cocktails? You just ruined your reputation for me, he laughs loudly, wrapping an arm around me. Don't be such a fun spoiler. Come with me, I groan. Isn't there another poor girl you can torture? None as pretty as you. I snort laugh and roll my eyes, pulling my shades back down and walking towards the garage again. Now you're using flattery. 
And while I'm sure it works every other time, this girl isn't interested. I hate Tazen, and I have absolutely no reason to go. He is unveiling Chief, Quinn. My eyes widen. I've been watching the show, and watching Tazen and his crew building Chief. It's an amazing, sleek, lime-green race car that is seriously panty-melting good. No, I breathe. Yes, and you could be there to see it. I swallow back the anticipation, because now I really want to go. He only gave you those tickets to try and sway me to sell, Jace shrugs. And? Are they going to make you sell? I snort. Exactly. So really, I got free tickets, and if that dude is giving away shit, I'm taking it. Come on, it'll be epic. Jimmy Fordola is racing chief for the first time. Jimmy Fordola is a NASCAR champion, and it would be amazing to see him racing one of Tazen's cars. Still, I really shouldn't be taking time off. Can't you find another girl to go? I'm sure there are plenty. There are, but you're the best, because I don't want to fuck you. And therefore, I can just chill and have fun. I put a hand over my chest. I'm wounded. Not that you're not beautiful, cause you are. You just aren't my type. I scrunch up my nose. Is it my uneven breasts? Because that's a very real, very common problem. He bursts out laughing. Dude, you have uneven breasts? I smirk at him. Maybe. Is that going to be a problem when we're on our little two-day love fest? His smile gets bigger. I told you, you're not my type. A love fest between us could be... Disastrous, pitiful, epically disappointing. Hey, he says. Now I'm wounded. I shake my head. Seriously, Jace, I'd love to go with you, but I can't. You can. No. He takes hold of me and spins me around so I'm facing him. Quinn, honey, you can. I search his face, and I know how much he wants me to go. I'd love to, on any other occasion, but I can't right now. I have a garage to save. Two days is two days that could take away essential planning time. I can't lose two days, Jace. You can. Because today we're going to come up with a solid plan to save the garage. We're going to do that. And then you're going to lock those doors on Friday and come on a weekend adventure with me. Why do you want me to come? Truly. He leans down so our foreheads are touching. Because you're my best friend and I want to see you smile. Damn. It's no wonder he gets laid so much. The guy has charm. Fine, I sigh. If we get a solid plan in place, I'll consider coming. He pulls back and fist pumps the air. Yes! But if I see Tazen, I can't be held responsible for how I'll react. I promise to hold you back if you try and de-nut him. I laugh. I knew you were an amazing friend. He chuckles. Now that that's out of the way, let's get to it. We have a lot to do. He hooks an arm through mine. Yes, we do. Including picking a smoking hot bikini for you. I roll my eyes. Men, we are going to a car race and all he can think about is a smoking hot bikini for the few hours we might get to spend by the pool at the hotel. I thought you didn't want to see my uneven breasts. Hey, he says casually. Breasts are breasts. You're sad, he snorts. Never denied it. So tell me what poor girl is in your sights right now, I ask as we walk. No one special? I nudge him with my shoulder. Is there ever going to be anyone special? He huffs. Doubt it. Why? Because relationships are too hard. I'd much rather just get laid. Well, at least you're honest. I smile. What would I do without Jace? Chapter 4 The sound of someone banging on my office door causes my head to jerk up. I'm neck deep in paperwork and trying to cut costs anywhere I can until we're back on our feet. I look up to see Maddie leaning against the doorframe, arms crossed over his chest. He gives me a warm smile and I return it, though mine is probably flustered. Hey Maddie, what's up? Just letting you know the car wash is ready to go for Thursday. I give him the warmest smile I can muster up. I do this because I don't want him to see just how scared I am. 
The car wash might make us a couple thousand dollars, which is super helpful, but it isn't enough to even get us close to getting the big money by the time the end of the month rolls around. Right now, my prayers are going towards a business donating to help us out. That's awesome. Thank you, I finally say. He studies me. Jace says you're going away with him this weekend. I purse my lips. Yes, that should be interesting. It'll be good. I think you'll have a blast. I don't even want to know how he managed to get those tickets out of Tazen, though. That man has a special kind of charm. He really should look at a profession as a gigolo. He bursts out laughing, and I can't help but join in. When we both stop, his face is warm. Good to hear you laugh, Quinn. I swallow the lump that forms in my throat. Well, let's just hope things get better, and we get a whole new world of chances for laughing. His eyes grow warm. I hope so, for all of our sakes. Me too, Maddie, I sigh. Me too. Cars? I ask. Check, Lenny calls out. Wash buckets? Check. I run my fingers down the paper. Soap and washers? Check. Men in sexy bikinis? All of them frown and I burst out laughing. I guess that's a check. I came up with the idea to make the car wash a little more entertaining by having the guys dress in bikinis. They aren't too thrilled about it, but it's funny, and it will bring in the girls. We're doing it on the main drag and any normal car wash won't catch people's attention. This one will. So I went out and bought some cheap bikinis, including one for myself, and broke it to the guys. The only one who seemed on board with it was Jace. That didn't surprise me. Even in a bikini, that man could get lucky. I'm too old for this shit, Oscar mumbles. Aw, oh, come on now, I croon. You look stunning in your bikini. I love you, Quinny. But right now I'm tempted to give you a good spanking. I giggle softly. But it's because you love me that you'll do this. I glance down at my watch. One hour to go, guys. Let's get everything ready. Are all the signs set up out front? All done, Maddie says. Then go and get your sexy on, I say, biting my lip to stop myself laughing. You'll suffer for this, young lady, Lenny scoffs. Yeah, yeah, I say, waving my hand and walking back into the garage to gather the last of the supplies we will need for the car wash. Half an hour later, I'm wearing a bikini that's light blue and compliments my skin tone. I feel self-conscious. It's been a long time since I've worn so... little. With warm cheeks, I head out and my nerves instantly disappear when I see the line of men, all wearing bikini tops and shorts. I laugh so loud, I have to double over and wrap my hands around my stomach. Oh, I gasp. My God! I stand back up and look at them all. Not one of them looks impressed, even Jace. They are all scowling at me with their arms crossed. I choke down my laughter and say, Aw, oh, come on, guys. This is for our garage, and most of all, my voice grows serious. It's for me. At my words, they lose their scowls. Fine, Oscar scoffs. But this never happens again. Understood. I smile, still trying to fight down a laugh that's threatening to bubble up again. Let's do this, Jace says. We quickly make our way to the large parking lot we secured for the car wash to happen. We have our production line, with each of the guys doing a different job. It's $20 for a full wash and shine, as well as one hell of a show. I'm at the end of the line to offer a sheet that has information on how to make a donation to the garage, as well as offering free coffee and tea. Cars line up within a mere hour, and soon we're full. Maddie gets the music going, and the men quickly get into the swing of things, when they realize my idea was genius, and people are coming in left, right, and center, for their chance to see these guys washing cars in bikinis. Locals who are frequent customers of ours stand around, helping for free and making everyone smile. Quinn, love, this is wonderful! I turn from organizing the money tin, to see a regular customer of ours, Joanne White, smiling at me. I return her smile in full force. Thank you. The guys have really pulled it off.
From what I hear, it's you that had this marvelous idea. She is giving me a mischievous little grin. She loves the guys being in bikinis. I can't say I blame her. I'd come down just to see that. Well, I might have been behind it. She laughs and places a hand on my shoulder, her expression going more serious. How is Rob love? My heart clenches, but I keep my smile. He's doing okay. It's been a while since I've seen him at the garage. I was meaning to ask, but I've been somewhat busy lately. That's no excuse, though. My dad's fine, Joanne. We'll do everything we can to help you save this wonderful garage. You have a lot of people supporting you. I smile and nod. Thank you. Our conversation is interrupted by the sudden screeching. I look around Joanne to see a group, a rather large group, of females screaming and jumping up and down. I look over to what has caught their attention and my mouth drops open. Tazen Watts is walking over to the car wash, looking like he's just dropped from heaven. Clearly everyone here knows exactly who Tazen is, because the entire car wash has come to a screeching halt. My eyes scan the mass of people, and they all hold a different expression. Some have their mouths dropped open, others are wide-eyed and shocked, some are screaming with joy, and others are just standing there, confused. I watch with a burning rage building in my chest as Tazen's eyes fall on me and a smile spreads across his face. A cocky smile, the arrogant ass. He strides towards me and I can't help my eyes as they travel over his body. He's wearing a pair of jeans and a tight black tee that is showing serious biceps. He's got a cap on that's twisted backwards and a pair of shades over his eyes. He looks casual, but a total badass. Hello, Angel. He practically purrs when he reaches me. Why the hell are you here, Tazen? I mutter, noticing that Joanne is scurrying away to my left. Thanks, Joe. Heard you were trying to make money. Thought I'd come down and check it out. God, he makes me want to punch him in the nuts. To gloat, you mean? He crosses his arms and his muscles flex and bunch beneath his skin. No, Angel, I'm just interested to see what you've got. What I've got, buddy, I spit, stepping closer, is a whole lot more than you could even begin to imagine. I can't see his eyes behind those shades, but I know... I just know they're running over my body because a slow, sexy smile spreads across his lips and he mutters, Fuck yeah, you do. Ugh. My cheeks burn, and I cross my arms to stop myself swinging at him, which is what I really want to do. There are a thousand other garages in the area, I whisper with fury. Go and find another one. There are. You're right, he says, stepping closer but yours is in the perfect location. I want to stomp my foot with rage. He is purposely here just to get under my skin. For whatever reason, he's decided that taunting me is the highlight of his no-doubt action-packed life. Don't you have better things to do? Being a world-famous ass? I mean, custom car builder? His grin gets so big, those dimples pop out. God, he's so beautiful it burns my eyes. Jerk. No one should be that... pretty. She's heard of me. I'm flattered. And for your information, Angel, I do have better things to do. Plenty of better things. But you have a location I want. What more could a man ask for than to be doing what he loves, in a garage in the perfect location? The problem with your perfect little plan, I snap, is that you're taking away my garage. My passion for working with cars and stealing what I love. His brows shoot up. Sweetie, do you really think you can do a better job here than a famous custom car builder who has worked with cars his entire life? I lean in close, so I'm up on my tiptoes and in his face. Hell yeah, I can, sweetie. I just hope I'm right. He snorts. Well, that makes me feel a whole lot better about trying to take this garage. You're clearly not in a stable place within your mind. I lift my hands and place them on his chest, giving him a shove, but he's too quick. He catches my wrists and jerks me forward, so I lose my balance and fall towards him. I gasp as he leans down, 
So close, our lips are only millimeters apart. It's time for you to give it up, little angel. I will get this garage, and I will do it justice. Consider it me doing you a favor. I'll give you a good price. You can pick your life up and get out of debt. Won't that be nice? What will be nice, jackass? I snarl. Will be when I save this garage, and you have to take your shiny, expensive ass to torture some other poor person. He lets my wrists go and steps back. We'll see. He turns and looks towards the guys who are busily scrubbing cars. It's so nice to see men who don't mind doing what they're told. Good job, Quinn. I'm sure they all feel exceptionally manly with their nuts in your pocketbook. Pig. He turns and saunters towards the exit, but there is no way he is getting out after insulting my guys. I grab the nearest hose and aim it towards Tazen. I charge towards him as he turns around, hands going out in front of him. I spray him right in the face, and he lets out a gurgled bellow as the water spurts into his face at full force. With a grin, I stalk closer. Oops. Sorry, Tazen. Whenever you're around, I seem to have the worst habit of spilling water on you. He barely lets me finish my sentence before he lunges at me, wrapping his arms around my waist. We slip and go down with a thump, him falling over me. Pain shoots through my back and I cry out in agony as I squirm to get out from beneath him. His hands find the hose in mine, and he shoves it out before forcing my hands above my head. That was unfucking cool he barks, and so is insulting my guys. I spit back. You're the one dressing them in bikinis. Why don't you cut their dicks off while you're at it? You're such a jerk, I squirm, trying to get out of his grip. He leans down close until our lips are nearly touching, and you fucking love it. Get off me. He presses his body into mine and I bite my lip to stop myself from gasping at the feel of his hard flesh pressing against mine. He feels fucking incredible. I'll get off you when I'm good and ready. You're the worst person I've ever met, I snap. Well, he grinds his hips against mine, and there are plenty of girls who would be envious of you right now. God, you're disgusting. Why don't you go and lay one of them down? He grins, because none of them are as feisty as you. I like the challenge. And I'd like to get off the damned ground. Shit, dude. Get off her. This comes from Jace, who's approaching us with an angry gleam in his eyes. I'm grateful because a moment later, Tazen pushes off me. No harm done, Tazen says. We just took a little spill. The bastard then proceeds to lean down and capture me under my arms, raising me to my feet. When I'm steady, I jerk backwards. He smirks at me, then gives me a long, sexy stare. We'll see each other again soon, Angel. As always, he leans in close. It was a pleasure. I grit my teeth and turn away. Damned Tazen Watts. He's getting the better of me. Chapter 5 Are you sure you're going to be okay? I say to Dad as I pace the room Friday after work. Quinny, it'll be fine. I told you I'm getting better and I'm going to fix things. You're not even leaving the state. You can call in if you're so worried. I bite my lip, mulling this over. After a heck load of work, the guys have managed to free up my weekend so I can go to the race with Jace and spend a few nights away from everything. We managed to make just over $3,000 at the car wash, but it isn't nearly enough to pay off what we owe. But it's a start, and everything helps. The problem with going away is the fact that I'm leaving Dad alone, and I'm not all too comfortable about that. I'm worried he'll get drunk and hurt himself, or choke on his own vomit. I've told Lenny to check on you each night. My dad frowns. I'm not a fucking kid. No, then maybe you shouldn't act like it. I shake those angry thoughts from my head. I hate when they pop up because they make me feel guilty. Please, Dad. If you care about fixing things, then let him come around. He stares at me, then mutters, Fine. Okay. A knock at the door interrupts our conversation. I rush over, flinging it open, to see Jace standing, 
ready to go. Hey there. Hey, honey, he grins. I step out of the way and let him in. How's it going, Robbo? Chase says as he follows me down the hall I'm currently charging down. Hello, Chase. When I reach my room, I fling the door open and step inside. I've been so busy worrying about leaving Dad and organizing things to make sure he at least eats that I haven't been able to pack. I drag out a suitcase and start tossing clothes in. Whoa there, woman, Jace says, wrapping his arms around me and pulling me away from the suitcase. Come on, Jace, this won't take long. No, it won't, because you're packing clothes that accentuate your masculine side. I glare at him and to prove his point. He reaches in and pulls out an old, grease-stained pair of jeans. There is no way you're wearing this shit. I bite my bottom lip. Where are your good clothes? I cross my arms. You're being mean now. There's nothing wrong with those jeans. Sure, if you want to be mistaken for a homeless person. Hmm, maybe you can ask people for spare change and raise money for the garage that way. I snort laugh in spite of myself. What will you have me wear? Because I'm telling you, I don't do tight anything. There's got to be something good in here, he mutters, walking to my closet and swinging the door open. After five minutes of shuffling, he comes back with an armful of clothes, most of them I have never worn. I went through a stage of trying to be girly, but it didn't happen, and so the clothes ended up at the back of my closet. Now Jace has managed to find each and every one of them. You are going to look like a female this weekend, he says, throwing the clothes onto the bed and then emptying my suitcase. I watch as he tosses skinny jeans, dresses, bikinis, and tank tops in. I scrunch up my nose. I'm not sure my ass still fits in any of that. He stops, stares at my ass, then snorts, What ass? I'm offended by that statement, he laughs. No, you aren't. Where's your hair and makeup stuff? I don't answer. He turns back to me. Quinn? I don't, uh, have any? except my hairbrush, which is already packed. Jesus, it's no wonder you haven't been laid for a long time. You're probably growing cobwebs down there. Hey, I protest. I do not have cobwebs. Just a little dust is all. God, he mutters to himself. This is going to be a real eye-opener, isn't it? Chapter 6 Give me another one, I cry, sliding my shot glass across the long wooden counter towards the bartender. And me. I turn to Jace, who is sitting on my left side and smile. He wraps an arm around my shoulder and leans in close. Told you that letting your hair down would prove to be fun. I should listen to you more often, I say, reaching for the shot glass that has just been placed in front of me. I tilt my head back and let the liquid slide down my throat. Yes. Jace was certainly right. This is proving to be awesome. We arrived at the hotel just after 7 p.m., after stopping at a department store for makeup and hair supplies. I straightened my hair after Jace and the saleswoman insisted that I buy a straightening iron, and I must admit, my hair looks super amazing after using it. Then we got changed and headed to the hotel bar to get our drink on. The race is tomorrow, so tonight is all ours. Let's dance, Jace yells over the music that is slowly getting louder. I need to find some action for the night. Jace tugs me, and we both slip off the bar stools and walk onto the small but packed dance floor. We start swaying to the music, hands in the air, smiles on our faces. It feels good to let go. It's been such a long time since I've had the opportunity to be able to think about something else other than the rut I've been stuck in my entire life. A pair of hands find my hips as I swing to the music, and my eyes pop open with shock. I quickly glance to my left to see Jace has already snagged a woman and is dirty dancing in the middle of the dance floor with her, so it isn't him. I stare down at the fingers curled around my body and hope to hell I'm not about to turn around and see King Kong trying to grope me, because that wouldn't be cool. I turn slowly and gasp loudly when I see it most certainly is not King Kong but instead a jerky, hot-as-hell custom car builder. Tazen Watts has his hands on me, 
and he looks about as shocked as I do, that we're both in the same place at the same time, and worse, he's got his hands on me. I watch the recognition hit his face and his eyes widen, the chocolate depths filling with a good range of emotions. Then his hands drop, and he steps back. Fuck, he says. I didn't expect to see you here. So charming. I'm sure all your dreams have come true, now that I am, he grins. Yeah, you're probably right about that. Rockin' dress, by the way. Makes your ass look great. God, such a man. It would seem the good Lord dislikes me enough to put me in the same place as you and your cheesy compliments. Next, you're probably going to tell me I look like I fell from heaven, I mutter, stepping past him. Ouch, Angel. Is there any need to be so hostile? I was going to go with public singing to win you over, but you just ruined that chance for yourself. Unlucky me, I scoff, walking to the bar and ordering a drink. I take the drink I ordered and swallow it down, and then I turn to him. Are you going to follow me all night? I step past him before he can answer and decide I need fresh air. My head is spinning and I need to get out of his space before I throttle him or drown in his charm. I push through the crowd of people and out the front entrance. Then I make my way quickly towards a large tree just off the sidewalk. I reach it and press my back to it, taking a deep breath. Do you always run so fast from attractive males? Well, I guess he's not done with me just yet. I don't see any, so that question is not even worth an answer. Ouch. For someone so little, you really know how to pull out the insults. I glare over at him, screwing my face up. If he doesn't get the hint, he's blind. Why are you following me? Don't you have someone else to torture? He grins at me and I want to hit him in the face. No one could possibly be as entertaining as you. He leans in close. Angel. Do I look like an angel to you? I mutter. Honestly? He drags his eyes away from mine and slowly runs them down my body, over my dress, down my legs, and then says in a husky whisper, Fuck yeah, you do. Jesus. Listen, Tazen, it was nice chatting, but I'm done here. I turn and walk back towards the bar. It's quiet out tonight, with only a few people wandering about on the streets. My head spins and I take hold of a nearby pole, leaning against it and pressing my forehead to the cool metal. I really have had too much to drink. The warm summer air tickles my face, and I steady myself, enjoying the way it feels against my skin. You look good with your hair down. I sigh and open my eyes. Tazen can't take a hint. What do you want from me, Tazen? You're acting like a bad smell that just refuses to leave. He laughs, deep and husky, and then I feel his body press up against my back, I gasp and go to step forward, only to realize there is a pole in front of me, and there is no forward. My skin breaks out into a thousand tingles, and I'm trying to suppress the shudder threatening to rise. I hate how good it feels to have him leaning against my back. You've caught my attention, little angel. I'm curious. He whispers this into my ear, and I have to close my eyes, because all I can think about is how amazing his perfect lips would feel against my skin. I don't want to be the center of anyone's attention, I rasp. Especially not yours. Funny, he says, running a finger over my shoulder. I think you want it more than you're willing to admit. How long has it been since you've had a man want you, Quinn? God, the way he says my name. I don't want you to want me. What I want is for you to leave me and my garage alone. Your garage, perhaps. But you don't really want me to leave you alone. Not when you know how fucking amazing I could make you feel. Please, I whimper. Please what, Angel? Please just go. I don't have time for you or your games. He steps closer, wrapping an arm around my waist and pulling my body more firmly against him. I can feel every inch of his hard, muscled flesh against my back, and it's taking everything inside of me to pretend that it doesn't affect me. He lowers his head, and his lips graze my neck. Does this feel like a game to you? His lips brush my skin again, and my nipples grow so hard they ache. What it feels like, I breathe, is a man looking for a quick fuck. I'm no one's quick fuck, especially not yours.
He chuckles against my skin. Most women would be throwing themselves at my feet for even a minute of what I'm giving you. I take a deep breath and then push him back. I manage to twist myself, so we're face to face. I'm not most women. I'm not even close. And believe me when I say, I lean in so our lips are nearly touching. I'm not interested in knowing what you have to give. With that, I step out of his way and walk towards the entrance back inside. We'll see about that, Angel, he yells to my back. Wake up, lazy bones. I groan and roll to my side. My bed is soft and squishy, and I don't want to wake up. I have a headache, and my stomach isn't impressed with my treatment of it last night. So I really just want to stay here. Besides, I haven't slept in for years, and I think I deserve a few hours longer. I don't want to wake up, I mumble. Let me sleep in. Honey, Chase chuckles. It's 11 a.m., my eyes fly open, and I stare at the messy-haired Jace who is leaning over me with a cup of coffee in his hands. You're kidding, right? He turns his watch towards me and my eyes widen, when I see he is most certainly not kidding. I slept until nearly midday. My God. I sit up slowly and rub my eyes, and then I accept the coffee he hands me. I can't believe I slept for so long, he shrugs. I only got up half an hour ago. We deserve it. Yeah, I yawn. Where'd you end up last night? He asks, fluffing one of my pillows behind him and then leaning against it. Uh, I was so tired I came back here. You're an awful liar. I peek at him and he's grinning at me. Stop grinning at me. Tays and Watts, hey? Who would have thought? He likes you, Quinn. Well, I huff, I certainly don't like him. What did he have to say for himself? I shrug. Nothing interesting. He's just fascinated by the fact that I'm not throwing myself at his feet. He seems to find it amusing that he can get me so wound up. Jace nudges me. From what I hear, he gets a lot of women very wound up. Stop it. I laugh. Honestly, though, can you believe your luck? Maybe you get to have your very own stalker. Not funny. Well, he says, leaping from the bed. I'll go back to sleep if I sit here all day. The race is at three, so we have a few hours. Come with me to the pool? Sounds good. We get up, dress, eat, and then head up to the top level of the hotel. There is a massive pool and a whole heap of lounge chairs that take up the entire area up here. Jace and I find one, and as soon as he drops his towel, he charges towards the water and dives into it. I shake my head sitting down on the lounge chair and removing my shorts and tank top until I'm down to my bikini. I bring the towel up and tuck it under my arms, debating whether I feel like getting in the pool. I lower my shades over my eyes and decide to just watch for a while. My eyes move to a group of people sitting about ten meters away from me, and they widen when I realize one of those people is Tazen, and he's not wearing a shirt. I let my eyes travel slowly over his muscled body, nodding with appreciation at his six-pack and seriously hot V leading to a place I have thought about a number of times. When I look back up, I see his eyes are directed at me. Great. He just saw me checking out his body and his package. He grins cockily and I turn away. Damn it. I keep my face aimed at the pool, but a moment later a shadow comes across my body and I look up to see Tazen staring down at me. Up close, his body is even better. Smooth, tan skin, washboard abs, ripped arms and killer hips. He has a hint of a tattoo on his ribs that is obviously coming around from his back. Damn, I study his face. His chocolate brown eyes are mischievous and cocky as he takes in the towel I'm clutching to myself. His lips, so full and tempting, Curve into a wicked smile. Good morning, Angel. Did you have pleasant dreams? Wonderful, thank you. There was a man in them, an arrogant one. I had a wonderful time torturing him with blunt instruments. He laughs, low and throaty. I like your sass. Are you going to sit there all day clutching that towel? Or are you going to come and have a swim? I'll swim. I just won't be doing it with you. Wrong answer. He reaches down, taking the towel and jerking it away from my body. 
Then he leans down and I put my hands up in a poor attempt to stop whatever it is he has planned. This does nothing to hold him off. He puts his shoulder into my belly and launches me up and over it. I scream and start pummeling my fists into his back. This earns me a swift slap on the ass that has my face burning hot. Shame rises inside me as I realize everyone has stopped to watch Tazen's little show. He strides to the pool and I continue to squirm and curse, threatening him with severe bodily harm if he drops me into the water. He laughs and then launches both of us into the blue depths. I hit with a thud and cold water quickly washes over my body. I kick and paddle until I surface. Then I proceed to cough and splutter until my eyes find Tazen, who has just popped up too. What gives you the right? I fume, taking a step towards him. With a wolfish grin, he steps in, leans down, and scoops me into his arms, this time like a baby. I kick and squirm, trying to get out, but it would appear he's having the time of his damned life torturing me. You're even cuter when you're mad, Angel. Put me down, you jackass! He laughs and lets me go. I shove backwards, kicking my legs to keep myself afloat. I glare at him, but he's far beyond taking any offense at that. Tazen? Both our heads turn towards the sound, and I see a man standing with a cell phone in his hand. Call for you, man. Can it wait? Tazen asks. The guy shakes his head. It's the one you've been waiting for. Tazen's eyes flicker to me, almost guiltily before he nods and climbs out of the pool. Someone throws him a towel and he disappears with the phone pressed to his ear. I grumble and swim towards the edge of the pool, ready to get out. You okay? I turn to my left to see Jace swimming over. He's smirking, the big jerk. Don't you even, I warn him, waggling my finger at him. His lip quirks. I roll my eyes. I'm going to do some shopping, I announce. Don't get into any trouble while you're at it. He teases. I shoot more daggers at him. Men. They're all as bad as each other. I kind of like it. Chapter 7 Oh my god. I breathe as we walk around the racetrack. The low, fierce rumble of cars practicing around the track fills my ears as I clutch my hot dog and soda close to me. There aren't a lot of people here yet, because the actual race doesn't start for another two hours. Jace and I are here early to watch them warm up. We find a seat and sit down, so we can enjoy the show before the crowd arrives. The track. I love the track. I love the way the cars sound. I love the smell. I love the rumble that radiates through my body as they speed around the track. I'd kill to have what Tazen has, to be able to work with these types of cars every day. But better yet to be able to build them from the ground up. Look, Jace yells, there's Chief. My eyes turn towards the sleek green car that is sitting in the pit. It's epic. The two-door sedan is as powerful as it is amazing. Whoever is sitting in it has their foot on the gas because she is growling like an angry tiger. The sound fills the air and my skin prickles. I want to go to it, put my head under the hood and breathe it in. I want to ride in it, to feel its power in my palms. Do you think we can go down there? I ask. Probably not, but we can try, Jay says, standing and taking my hand. I look sadly at my hot dog, but the chance to see Chief in action is far more appealing. We rush through the crowd, down the stairs from the grandstands, until we reach the railing that stops people from getting onto the tracks. I can see Chief up close now, and my eyes instantly find Tazen, who is rushing around barking orders. He looks different like this. All his cockiness is gone, and he's in a rugged, demanding state. He's got on a pit uniform that has Jimmy's sponsor's logos all over it. His shirt is V-cut, showing a nice patch of bronze skin on his chest. His pants look like black jeans, and he's wearing boots. He's got a hat on that has racing logos all over it. Damn. Look at him in action, Jace breathes. It's just like the show. I nod, biting my lower lip. Tazen is waving his hands, barking orders, and then his head is under the hood, his hands working frantically at things. Skilled mechanic hands. I shudder. 
That's so damned hot it makes heat rush between my legs. There is nothing better than watching a man under the hood of a car, working with his hands. God, I replied at Jace, it's amazing. Give her more, Tazen barks. Put your fucking foot on it. The man in the driver's seat gives it more gas and Chief barks, gray smoke flying from her tires as the car trembles like it wants to shoot off. Right, Tazen says, straightening and slamming the hood down. I'm going to take her for some laps. Fuck yeah, Jace screams this from beside me, and I step back in shame as Tazen's eyes dart to us. Holy fuck, he looks amazing. His eyes take me in and he lifts a hand, crooking his finger at me. Oh my god, he wants you to go in there. No, I gasp, he doesn't. He does! Holy shit, Quinn, get in there! Tazen keeps crooking his finger, then he yells out, Come here, angel. Oh boy. Jace leans down, lifting me without giving me a choice. He practically tosses me over the railing. Thankfully, I land on my feet. Bring your friend. Fuck yeah! Jace yells again, launching himself over the railing. I walk closer with shaking hands, my heart swelling with anticipation. Boy, oh boy. I'm about to walk up to world-famous custom car builder Tazen Watts in his element with his awesome car. You know what I've got here? Tazen says as soon as I stop in front of him. My eyes are on Chief, and I know. I know exactly what he's got. Chief. I breathe, stepping closer to the car. Custom-built race car. 358 cubic inches, which can produce upwards of 600 horsepower. Amazing cam profile. Keeping the intake valves open longer for exceptional power. She's been watching my show. I love your show, I say without thinking. I'm too taken by the car. Good to know. I step up to the sleek, beautiful machine, and I want to reach out and touch it so badly. You want a ride? I turn, blinking rapidly. What? A ride, he says, nodding at Chief. I have to take her for a lap. You want in? Is that legal? He grins big. My car, baby. You in? I'm in! I cry so loudly, Jace laughs. Tazen turns and says something to his team. I have a helmet tossed at me, and I have to get into some protective gear. When I'm good to go, I walk over to Chief. My heart is pounding and my legs are shaking. I'm going for a ride in Chief. I'm going for a ride. I want to squeal with happiness, but I keep it together. I climb into the tight passenger side and duck under the roll bars. Buckle up. Tazen says, getting in the driver's side. Do you, uh, know how to drive this thing? He flashes me a white smile. Angel, I built it. I nod, swallowing. My palms get sweaty and I want to scream with joy. Ready? Tazen asks, revving the engine. Oh, hell yes. I nod. He takes off. A wicked scream leaves my lips as I'm shoved back into the seat as Chief takes over the track, like she damned well owns it. Joy fills my veins and my screams turn to happy whoops as Tazen picks up speed. He's at ease behind the wheel, taking corners like a pro. It suits him. I put my hands on my knees and cry out happily as the power holds me flat against my chair and the rumble fills my ears. Holy shit! I squeal. Holy fucking shit! Tazen laughs and switches gears. I close my eyes and put my head back, happiness flooding my body. I have dreamed of a moment like this my entire life. I love cars. I love everything about them. I love the old and the new. I love restoring them. I love fixing them. But this, this is the most amazing thing I've ever felt in my life. I happily yell and cheer as we fly around the track for a lap. When Tazen pulls Chief over, I get out with shaky legs and throw my hands in the air, doing a happy dance. I pull my helmet off and turn to Tazen, who is wearing a smile that is so big, his dimples are deep on his cheeks. That was fucking epic! Holy shit! You are fucking amazing! I think you're the most enthusiastic passenger I've ever had. That? I clap my hands and close my eyes, squealing to the sky. Was the shit!
He laughs and comes over, taking my helmet. Glad you think so. I turn to Jace, who is grinning big. You fucking lucky bitch. Oh, Jace, I clap again. It was amazing. Love to keep you guys down here, Tazen says. But we gotta get prepped for Jimmy's race. I nod and my smile is still huge. Tazen winks at me. And in a husky voice says, Later, Angel. Oh, boy. This is proving to be the best day of my life. Chapter 8 The race went well into the night. It wasn't a major race, but it was still amazing. Chief placed second, which was totally cool. Jace and I made our way back to the hotel, still pumped about being able to experience something so electrifying. High on life, I insisted we go out in the city, because there is no way I can be cooped up for too long after such an awesome day. I want to dance, party, and have fun. So we make our way back to the bar we were at the night before. After a few drinks, I step outside for some fresh air, adrenaline still high and pumping. I tilt my head back, and the wind tickles my skin as I breathe in the cool night air. We head back home tomorrow morning, so I'm taking a moment to relish how good this all feels. My tight black dress is a little too clingy, but at least it isn't flapping around in the breeze. Hello there. I turn at the sound of a husky male voice and see a young man approaching me. He's wearing a black shirt and a pair of faded denim jeans. He's got a bit of a swagger, which tells me he's drunk, or close to. His blonde hair is messy atop his head, and he's got piercing gray eyes. Evening, I say, turning back to the street and trying to give him the hint that I don't want his company. What's a pretty girl like you doing out here alone? Whale watching. I mutter. He laughs loudly and steps up beside me. Well, you certainly won't find any out here. They're all inside. Ugh, what a jerk. You're certainly not a whale, he murmurs. You're fucking hot. Some men just have no class. And you're annoying me. Go away. Whoa, he says, putting his hands up. I'm only teasing. Take a chill pill. No, I say, glaring at him. I asked you to leave me alone and you clearly refuse. And apparently you also think that calling women fat is a way to get into another woman's pants. Let me guess, you have a penis the size of a tube of lipstick. So therefore you have to get drunk and drop pathetic pickup lines to get any woman to consider you? How close am I? His face scrunches up and he grumbles, got more than a fucking lipstick. And if you step any closer, I'll chop that little thing right off and toss it into the traffic. Jesus, he grunts. You're a total cunt. There a problem here? We both turn and my eyes widen to see Tazen approaching. I gape at how amazing he looks tonight. He's wearing a pair of black jeans and a tight gray sweater that he has rolled up to the elbows. His hair is messy, his eyes are bright, and he looks breathtaking. His gaze, however, is murderous as he stands next to my drunken buddy. Don't even try it on with this bitch, dude, the drunk man grunts. She's batshit crazy. Tazen steps up to him, intimidating as all hell. What did you fucking call her? The guy's eyes widen and dart between Tazen and me. I, uh, get the fuck out of here before I knock you out. The guy nods and rushes off, clearly knowing what's good for him. No one in their right mind would take on Tazen. He's a big guy. Ah, uh, I say, watching the guy go. Thanks. He hurt you? My eyes flick to his. No, I'm fine. Believe it or not, I can look after myself. He steps up beside me. Never said you couldn't. I nod, swallowing. You want to drink? I turn to him, studying his stunning face. Why do you want to have a drink with me when I'm mostly an ass to you? He stares at me for a long, intense moment. Then he grins. Do you question everything? I narrow my eyes. Mostly. His lip twitches. One drink, Angel. Fine, I say. One drink. He smiles and nods towards a small garden space at the front of the bar. Go sit down. I'll be right back. I nod and walk over, flopping down onto a free chair. 
I wonder why the hell I am agreeing to a drink with this man after he has done nothing but taunt me. But he seems genuine, and one drink won't kill me, especially after he let me have such an amazing experience on the track today. Tazen returns a minute later and hands me a beer. I take it, grateful it doesn't contain vodka or tequila, or anything else that will send me spiraling into an embarrassing drunk before I'm ready. So, Quinn, tell me something about you. I take a sip of the ice-cold beer. Nothing to tell. He leans back in the chair, crossing his ankles. We all have stories, Angel. I meet his gaze, and sometimes we don't want to tell them. He nods. Can understand that. Tell me about your cars. He smiles, placing his beer in his lap and curling both his hands around it casually, so it doesn't slip off. Been under cars and driving them since I could understand what an engine was. Used to build them with my uncle, and I knew from a young age it was what I wanted to do. Me too. He looks to me with narrowed eyes. You're seriously telling me you can fix a car? Are you seriously telling me that you think the only people in the world who can fix cars are men? He shrugs. It's our role. Just like males don't make good hairdressers, you know. Males can be the best hairdressers, I point out. He scrunches up his nose. I can't help it. I laugh. He huffs. Fine. Point taken. When did building become more than just fun for you? He takes a sip of his beer, thinking about that for a long while. My uncle died and left me a good amount of money when I was 19. I figured, what the hell? I'd start building custom cars. It just exploded from there. I got a name and here I am. So you're self-taught, I say. That's impressive. Yeah. He grins. I know. Arrogant, too. He chuckles. Never denied it, Angel. How old were you when you sold your first custom? Twenty. It took me a year to build that car, but I sold it for double the price I paid to build it. That's pretty cool, even for you. He shakes his head with amusement. Do you think you're going to do it forever? Nah, he grunts. One day I'll get tired of it. But by then I'll have enough money, it won't matter. How will you survive when you're not famous, and girls don't throw themselves at you? I say this while throwing my hand across my chest. He looks at me out of the corner of his eye, with an impressive and sexy-as-hell half-smile. I'll have to find a way. I'll probably become a male escort. I snort. You'd probably do well, especially if I dress up. The chicks dig my uniforms. I roll my eyes and shake my head. Enough about me, Angel. I want to know more about you. As I said, there's nothing to tell. I look away, taking a sip of beer. I really hope he doesn't ask too much, because it'll be embarrassing for me when he finds out just how boring my life is. You got yourself a man? We both know the answer to that, I say, still directing my eyes away from him. How long has your dad owned the garage? Since I was born. He goes silent and I turn to look at him. He's staring ahead with a blank expression on his face. It's all I've ever known, I go on. My dad, he, ah. Uh, Got unwell when my mother passed. It hasn't been easy, but I've managed to keep it going. Big job for a girl to do on her own, he says, still not looking at me. Maybe, but it's all I've known and I love working with cars. I have been in that garage since I was little. I used to spend a lot of weekends with my dad. When I learned to fix cars, I did that instead of going out and living like most teens did at my age. It's the happiest place in the world for me. It always has been. He nods and is silent for a minute. That old Mustang you drive, he says, changing the subject. You do that up? I turn to him, tucking my leg up underneath me. Yes, Dad and I fixed it up when I was younger. I love that car. He nods. It's a nice one. Do you have any old classic cars? He turns to me, flashing me a wicked grin. Nah, I only go for the powerful, sleek new ones. Of course you do, I scoff. I'd like one, though. I nod, drinking more beer. You seen a car built from the ground up? I shake my head. No, but I'd love to. You should come past my shop one day. I might even let you drive one of my creations. I gasp. 
You'd let a girl, a simple girl, behind the wheel of your car? He shakes his head, grinning. Maybe. It all depends. Let me guess, I say with laughter in my voice. She has to have model good looks and big breasts out to... I put my hands out in front of me. Here. He looks over to me. No. She just has to be real. I blank. His face doesn't change. He's being serious. Holy shit, he's being serious. Now I feel bad. Most of the girls you are with don't seem real, Tazen. He shakes his head, his eyes traveling off into the distance. Nah, they aren't. Don't worry, I say lightly. There are plenty of fish in the sea. He exhales on a laugh. You're a piece of work, Angel. I never denied it. He turns to me and he's got a serious, lusty look on his face. He leans in close and my breath hitches as his fingers go up and curl around the back of my neck. I've met a lot of women in my time, but none of them intrigue me the way you do. Fuck. Hearing you scream with joy in my car today made me fucking hard as hell. Oh, shit. It's called wanting what you can't have, I squeak. No, baby. It's called wanting. He leans in close so our lips are nearly touching. What's real? Oh, boy. He leans in closer and I realize he's going to kiss me. He's going to kiss me and I don't have it in me to pull back. Hell, I don't want to pull back. And I should. Yet here I am moving closer to him, desperate to know how he tastes. His breath tickles my lips right before heaven breaks open and something amazing happens. He kisses me. I haven't been kissed for a solid five years, but no kiss, no kiss, has ever felt like this. My breath hitches, and I gasp against his mouth as he pulls my body closer to his and tilts his head, deepening our kiss. His tongue touches my lips, coaxing mine open. I willingly accept and let him. Our tongues touch and electricity shoots through my body. I close my eyes and whimper as he takes my breath away. His hand is still around the back of my neck, massaging gently. The other one is on my leg, squeezing softly as our kiss gets deeper and more intense. His rumbling moan blends with my soft, breathy one, and I practically throw myself onto his lap. Our bodies crush together, and I kiss him so hard, I know my lips will be full and sore after it, but I don't care. A throat clears behind us, and we wrench apart turning with panted breaths to see a bartender standing, looking horribly uncomfortable at our public display of affection. Sorry, I gasp, shoving away from Tazen and placing my fingers against my lips. Ah, uh, the drinks you ordered are ready, he says, handing our beers to us. I take one and swallow three big mouthfuls, unable to look into Tazen's eyes. I can't believe we just did that. We just kissed and I'm supposed to hate him. This is bad, so bad. My cheeks burn and I keep my eyes directed away from his. A warm hand captures my jaw, and he turns my face towards his, opening his mouth to speak. He doesn't get any words out, because something launches at him and knocks him clean off the chair. It takes me a moment to realize what's happening. I turn quickly, confused and stunned, to see Tazen on the ground with Jace on top of him, the two are in a serious punch-up, with fists flying and curses being spat. Jace drives his fist into Tazen's face, and then in a split second, Tazen has flipped Jace and is driving his fist into his face. I cry out and leap out as blood starts being shed. What the hell? Stop! I cry. Two large bouncers appear. One lifts Tazen with one big, beefy hand, and another lifts Jace, they hold them apart, but that doesn't stop the words flying. You piece of shit! You lowlife piece of shit! Jace roars. How could you be such a heartless prick? Tazen snarls, baring his teeth and spits. Fuck off, Jace. You just kissed her and she doesn't know, you conniving pig. What are they talking about? I don't understand. Jace, I say softly. What's going on? Tazen turns to me and I see it. I see what I saw earlier. Guilt. I blink rapidly, trying to understand. Honey, Jay says, looking to me. I'm so sorry. 
I swallow. Jace, what's happened? He looks to Tazen, his eyes hard. You going to tell her what sort of man you are, or am I? Tazen growls. You fucker. This could have been done in a kinder way. Oh, Jace laughs bitterly. You mean after you fucked her and had your fun? Fuck you, Tazen spits. Can someone just tell me what's going on? I scream. Everything goes quiet, and all the people around stop talking to turn and watch. He bought the garage, Quinn, Jace says gently. I just found out and came to tell you. My knees wobble and my vision blurs. No, he must have it wrong. I, I whisper, but my voice has retreated to the depths of darkness threatening to swallow me up. Your dad signed it over to him this morning. He got in contact with him, offered a good price, and your dad, thinking he was doing the right thing by you, sold it to him without question. No, no, God, please, no! I shake my head, and tears burst free and run down my cheeks. Chase, I rasp, this isn't real. Tell me it's not real. I'm so sorry, honey. My entire body starts to shake as a mass of emotions flood me. Everyone around me becomes a blur as tears explode and my eyes become fuzzy. The sounds of shuffling become louder around me. And then I hear his voice, the voice I don't ever want to hear again. I was going to tell you, Angel. Don't call me Angel, I scream, swiping my eyes furiously. When I find him, I pin him with a glare so acidic he flinches. How dare you! I told you what that garage meant to me. And you swept in, using me along the way, while you wrapped your grubby, disgusting hands around it and snatched it out from beneath me. That isn't- Don't! I yell. Don't give me excuses. You've wanted it since you walked in that first day. I should have known all this, I wave at him, was a big, disgusting act. You were just distracting me so you could take what's mine. It wasn't yours, he barks, losing his cool. And you couldn't have saved it. You and I both know that. I did you a favor. A favor? I laugh so bitterly it hurts. A fucking favor? How do you suppose you did me a favor? No, you did only yourself a favor. I might not have been able to save that garage, but you owed me at least the chance to try. Listen, Quinn. Don't, I cry, launching forward and shoving him so hard he's forced to take a few steps back. Don't try and make yourself look better. You're a dog and you know it. Worse, you had the balls to kiss me and make out like you actually wanted it. Real, Tazen? I shake my head. You wouldn't know real if it slapped you in the face. Come on, Jay says, wrapping an arm around me. Let's go. With tears staining my cheeks, I let him turn me. Angel, Tazen calls. I look over my shoulder at him. This is far from finished. Then I let Jace lead me away. Chapter 9 How could you? I cry, pacing the room. My dad is sitting on the couch, staring up at me with a check in his hand for a hundred thousand dollars. He looks confused, like he couldn't possibly imagine why the hell I'm sad over the loss of the garage. I understand in his fried brain he thinks he did the right thing, that it was a simple solution. But he failed to think about what the place meant to me. And he knows, even in his state, he knows. I told you I'd fix it, he mutters. Fix it? I whisper. That was the only thing I had left. It was the only part of her. My voice breaks. We had left. My dad flinches and I know that was a low blow. I, he stammers. I was only trying to fix things, Quinny. I couldn't stand to see you suffering anymore. My shoulders slump and I drop my head. I can't be angry at him. Not when he thinks that he has just fixed everything. In a way, he has. Our bills can be paid, our mortgage covered, and things will ease up. But we have lost something that we can never get back. And that is making my heart ache in a way I can't turn off. It's okay, Dad, I whisper. 
placing my hand on his shoulder. We're going to sort all of this out. Let me put the check in the account. He hesitates, staring at the check, promising a large amount of money. He wants it, and I know exactly what he wants it for. I can't risk that happening. If he gets a hold of this kind of money, he'll drink it away before we have the chance to do anything. So in a gentle voice, I say, Dad, if you did this for us, then you need to let me put that money away. He sighs and hands me the check, but his hand is shaking as he lets it go. That wasn't easy for him. I lean down and kiss his head, then I grab my purse and keys, letting him know I'll be back later. Then I head out to the bank, cash the check, and drive down to the garage. We have one week to clear out before Tazen takes over. That isn't a lot of time. I arrive to see people everywhere. Not just my guys, but a heap of others. They're moving out old tools and equipment, and there's a massive truck bringing in new, shiny things. My blood boils and I throw my car door open, sliding out and storming towards the men who are working. What the hell are you doing? I cry. A man pushing an old toolbox looks to me with confusion. Clearing out like we've been ordered to? By who? I demand. By me. I whirl quickly to see Tazen standing with a clipboard in hand. He's wearing a pair of blue jeans with a black shirt that has a picture of a car on the front. Lame. He's got shades pulled over his eyes. Anger swirls in my chest. I have a week. You have no right to be in here before then. This is my stuff. He studies me. What do you plan on doing with it all? Damn it. I don't know. But it's beside the point. It doesn't matter. It's mine. Actually, he says, it's mine. The garage was sold with all the contents. You're a piece of work, I hiss. Listen, he says, stepping closer. I did what I did, but business is business, Quinn. So get your things. He leans in close and get out of my garage. I explode, shoving him backwards and turning, storming inside. I shove past people and make it to my team, who are all standing around looking lost. Chain this shit down. Do not let him take it. They all stare at me like I've lost my marbles. Hell, maybe I have. But for one week, this garage is still in my name. I won't let him just destroy it. Quinn, sweetheart, Lenny says gently. No, Lenny, I whisper. Don't you give up on this. We don't have a choice. It's his now. It's not his, I cry spinning around and charging towards a man carrying out my favorite spanner set. Put that down! I reach him and slap the spanners right out of his hands. They hit the ground with a loud clank and skitter across the floor. I move to the next man, carrying Lenny's favorite tool bag. I yank it off his shoulder, causing him to stumble backwards and lose his footing. Fuck me, Tazen mutters. Just let her take what's hers. I spin on him, waving my hands in his face. Do you even care that you're taking jobs from these men? Men who have families? Tazen's face gets hard. If they want a job here, they're more than welcome to approach me about it. I don't have a problem with taking on your team, Quinn. They should have jobs automatically, I protest. They've made this place what it is. He shakes his head. Quinn, I understand you're hurt, but this is how I do things. If your guys want a job, all they have to do is ask. I will assess their skills and see if they fit any of the positions I have open. What I won't have is you coming in here and making a scene. Calm it down. Now, I have work to do, so I'd much rather you just leave. I'm panting with rage, but I know he can call the cops if he wants to, and I have nothing to fall back on. I turn and march towards the door, shouting, you haven't seen the end of this, Tazen Watts. And he hasn't. He's about to see just how real I can be. Jesus, Quinn. You can't go messing around with this shit. I glare at Lenny, Oscar, and Jace as I button up my jeans. Come on, sweetheart. You could get arrested. Lenny says softly. I shoot daggers at him and snap. Do you think I give a crap? You should. Your dad wouldn't cope, and you know it. Of course. Let's worry about my dad who's an alcoholic and has done nothing for this garage for years. 
Don't worry about me, Lenny. Don't worry about how this might be affecting me. His eyes grow soft. Didn't mean it like that, Quinn, honey. I know how much this is hurting. No, I croak. You have no fucking idea how much it's hurting. We do, Jay says gently. Honey, you know we do. He used me, I spit, hating the tears welling in my eyes. Then he took everything. I won't just lie down and let that happen. I won't. I think you've got a good set of balls on you, Oscar says. Everyone turns to look at him, shocked. Thank you, I whisper. You fought your whole life, Quinny. He smiles. Keep doing it. I nod, tying my hair in a ponytail. I won't do anything illegal, but if Tazen Watts thinks he can just shove me out, he's very, very wrong. You need to be careful, Quinn, Jace mutters. You could get into a lot of trouble. Yeah, and if I don't do this, I'll never forgive myself. Trust me, guys. Please. With a sigh, Jace nods. Lenny walks over and puts his hands on my shoulders. Got your back. No matter what, Quinn. You know that. Be careful, yeah? Yeah, Lenny. I look at them, and I know I'm doing this for them as much as I am for myself. At least, that's what I'm telling myself. Chapter 10 I throw my Mustang into park and slide out of the driver's side. I slam the door and stride up to the garage, as if nothing has changed. I hold my chin high and my back straight. As I push through the front doors, I step into the dimly lit space and immediately see Tazen with a gorgeous blonde. She has a hand on his chest and is smiling up at him, giggling. My heart feels like it's going to drop out. It shouldn't hurt, but it does. Keep it together, Quinn. Don't let him see what he did to you. I start walking towards them, and at the sound of my boots scuffing across the floor, Tazen jerks and looks to me. His eyes flash with surprise before his face becomes tired, like he isn't ready to deal with me again. What are you doing here? I flash him my best smile. Good morning, boss. He shakes his head, pushing the girl back and striding towards me. I try not to notice his tight shirt and those amazing jeans hanging on his hips. When he reaches me, he curls a hand around my upper arm and turns me towards the door. What sort of game are you playing here, Quinn? I'm in no mood for it. I'm working here, I say simply. You're not. I cross my arms. I am. No, you're fucking not. I lean in close. Yes, I fucking am. Jesus! He snaps. Uh, Taz? The blonde says. Should I leave? He turns to her and grunts. Yeah, I'll call you. Don't bet on it. I smile sweetly. He had his tongue down my throat only days ago. This guy is a first-class player. Her face scrunches and she turns to him. Seriously? He grunts and glares at me. We're not exclusive, Bonnie. Bonnie? What were her parents thinking? No, she says, crossing her arms. But you said I was special, different, and... Oh, I know the next one, I say, jumping up and down, waving my hand around. Real! He said you were real. Tazen looks like he wants to strangle me. I keep my smile, even though inside I'm falling to pieces. No, but why would he have said that to you? Because I am real, obviously. That actually makes my heart soften just a little, because he clearly didn't say it to her. Look, Bonnie, he begins, but she puts a perfectly manicured hand up. I deserve better, she declares. Girl power, I say, fist bumping the air. Tazen steps closer to me and curls his arm around my head and then presses a hand over my mouth. I want to bite him, but I just can't manage it, so I stomp on his foot. Stay still, he snaps. I snort. Bonnie stares at us, then shakes her head. This is too weird. I'll call you, Bonnie. Explain, she huffs. No thanks. Like I said... I can do better. Yeah, Tazen snorts. Whatever you say. Ooh, Bonnie got burned. Her face scrunches and she turns, storming out of the garage, picking up her purse on the way. When she's gone, 
Tazen lets me go and spins so he's facing me. Leave. Now. Nope, I say, stepping past him. I'll call the fucking cops. I laugh. I've been servicing their cruisers for years, so good luck with that. Fuck, he barks as I disappear into the office. That's right, Tazen Watts. You messed with the wrong girl. You're doing it wrong, I say, leaning a hip on a pole in the middle of the garage. A young apprentice of Tazen's is trying to fit a tire on the nearly final custom build that is due to go out tomorrow. It's a super cool two-door convertible that's bright candy apple red with white leather interior. It has a V8 engine that is awe-inspiring and sounds even better. The convertible nearly tops a race car in speed. What the hell would you know? He snaps at me. I'm a mechanic, and a good one. You're doing it wrong. Oh, fuck off. I snort. Oh, boss, I call to Tazen, who is monitoring the installation of an engine into a sleek yellow build. Potty Mouth over here doesn't seem to know how to fit a tire. Stop tormenting him, woman, Tazen finally barks. No, if I stop, this car is going to be a shambles. If you give me a job, I can show you how epically awesome I am. Not gonna happen. You can stand there until you get bored. Seriously, boss, the apprentice mutters. Can't you just kick her ass out? Tazen's eyes grow hard. It would be easier to poke my own eyeballs out than it would be to get rid of her. I snort laugh. Admit it, Tazen. You like me. His lips quirk, but he says nothing. He just turns back to the job he was doing. I'm right. He likes me. I turn back to the apprentice. Do you want me to show you how it's done? No, he grunts. Not having no whack job telling me how to fit a tire. I laugh. Okay, then. Your loss. But you should know that is the wrong tire, and that's why it isn't fitting correctly. I turn and begin walking away, calling, You're welcome. When I reach the front of the garage, I slip outside and press my back against the wall. This isn't as easy as it looks. Testing Tazen is truly testing everything inside of me, because all I want to do is throttle him. I hate watching piece by piece as my garage disappears before my eyes. In its place, slick cars and shiny equipment. If I'm honest, it's impressive. Tazen has three builds currently going, and he's brought his entire team over from California. They still have a shop there, and the last lot of apprentices he trained up have now taken over and are running the customs from there. From what I have figured out... Tazen flies back twice a week to overlook the builds and make sure they're exactly how they are meant to be. He is running the shop here with four members of his team that have been with him from the start. He's building a good deal of race cars because of the amount of racing in the area. It's an impressive setup, and the four guys he's got with him are amazing at what they do. Watching them work today has been a real eye-opener. They are skilled mechanics. Watching Tazen work has been even more impressive, though I'll never admit that to him. He is incredibly talented, and when he gets under those cars, it's enough for instant panty melting. Quinny? I jerk and turn to my left to see Timothy, one of our old regulars walking up the drive. I flash him my best smile, but it's as fake as fake can be. Hey, Timmy. I heard what happened here, he says with a sympathetic tone. I'm so sorry. I nod, feeling the burn in my heart extend. There wasn't much I could do about it, I'm afraid. His eyes shoot towards the garage and go hard. Heard about the jackass that took this place. I'm here to give him a piece of my mind. It's laughable that he would say that. Timmy is a tiny, frail old man that couldn't take Tazen on even if he was holding a gun. No doubt he has some serious word vomit to spew at him, though. It's not worth that. Timmy turns his eyes to me and narrows them. It is worth that, Quinny. Your family has owned this garage for a heck of a long time, and some dirty bastard preyed on your weakness to snatch it out from beneath you. I can tell you now, he doesn't have my business. I want to tell him it doesn't matter. Tazen doesn't need anyone's business. He has a big enough one of his own, and his client base is huge. He doesn't fix cars. He builds them. 
I don't say this, however, because it's pointless. If Timmy wants to be angry, he has every right to be. Can I help you? I turn to see Tazen stepping outside. Timmy immediately strides over to him, waving a finger in his face. You cannot help me, you terrible man. Do you know how long Quinn's family has had this garage? Do you? And you took it away from her. You should be ashamed of yourself. You won't have my business. Do you hear me? Tazen stares at the man, then his eyes flicker to me. I look away. I'm sorry you feel that way, sir. Tazen says in his most professional voice. I want to slap him because he sounds genuine. Perhaps I have something I can offer you to make this transition a little less heartbreaking. Pig. Stupid pig. He doesn't care about my heartbreak. He only cares about his business. He just doesn't want a bad name. What you can do, Timmy says, still waving his finger, is give the garage back to the woman who helped build it. Tazen's jaw ticks. I'm afraid I can't do that. Timmy huffs and puts an arm around my shoulder. Then you'll not have any support from this town. With that, he turns his nose up. It would be laughable at any other time, but I can't laugh at his passion. It makes me feel warm inside. If you need anything, you call me, Timmy says, kissing my temple before leaving. When he's gone, I turn back to Tazen. I'm not going to apologize for that, because I'm not sorry. At all. Are you happy now? He asks. I shrug. I didn't ask him to behave like that, but I'm not sad he did. I walk back towards the garage, but Tazen's hand lashes out and stops me by curling around mine. Then he leans down so his mouth is near my ear. Play your games, Quinn. I can outlast them. Know this, though. You will lose. Then he lets me go and disappears inside. It didn't escape my notice that he hasn't called me Angel since this all happened. That doesn't hurt. It doesn't. Chapter 11 I'm still torturing Tazen. It's been a week and I have showed up every single day. I think he's getting more used to me now and that's not cool. I don't want him to get used to me. I want to make him suffer. I also want a job, because not working is something that terrifies me. I understand the garage is probably never going to be mine again, but it's the only thing I've ever known. I can't walk away. Because I don't know how the hell I'll survive if I do. It's Monday, and I've been off the entire weekend. Restless doesn't even begin to cover what I've felt in that time. I've paced my house, cleaned it from top to bottom, taken Dad out for lunch, hung out with Jace, and still I'm so damned edgy that I can feel the swirls of depression tugging at my heart. I need to get back into my garage, and I need to do it quickly. I grab my keys after I'm ready and rush out the door with a muttered goodbye to Dad. I race to my car and get in. The entire way over, my mind is filled with anxious thoughts. One of those is that I have to be batshit crazy to still be doing this. Tazen doesn't want me there. He isn't even interested in giving me a job. Yet I'm going back because I'm not ready to let it go. In fact, the very idea terrifies me. I arrive at the garage and get out. It's around 9 a.m. and it's bustling. I walk up to the door and stop dead. The sign, Pixie Wheels, is gone. In its place is a new sign, stating boldly, Hot Fury. Something slams into my chest and I take a few steps backwards, grasping at my chest. Reality hits like a hurricane and panic swirls in my chest. Ugly, brutal panic. I start panting, an unexplainable hurt consuming me. I start charging towards the garage entry. I burst through, panic rising, and run towards where Tazen is standing, talking to a group of shady-looking men. I don't stop and think. I skid to a halt beside him and screech, Where is it? He turns to me, his eyes wide. Excuse me? Where? I gasp. Is it? He narrows his eyes now, taking me in. He can probably see my panic attack from a mile away, and because of this, his face softens. Where's what? My 
sign, I stammer. Where is it? Quinn, you're making no sense. My sign, I scream so loudly he flinches. Pixie wheels, where the hell is it? He blinks at me. Then recognition hits and he turns to his second in charge, Rick, who is currently working on a car. Rick, he yells. Where's the damned sign? Rick looks up, narrowing his eyes. What fucking sign? The pixie wheels won. Rick shrugs. Chucked it. Why? No. My knees wobble and I reach out desperately, trying to grab onto something. Tazen hooks an arm around my waist. Whoa, he says, steadying me. It, it, it's gone, I whisper. That, my mom made that sign. She's dead. It's the last thing I had left. You... I shove away from him. You took that away! His eyes are gentle when he says, I'll get him to go and find it, okay? It'll be fine. Fine! I hiss. You'll never see what you've done to me. Will you? He gives me a pained look, but I turn and rush off. I go into the office and slam the door, locking it. Then I turn my back to it and slide down. I tuck my knees up to my chest, wrapping my arms around them and cry. I cry so hard my body shakes. Everything is crashing around me, and no one can see it. Dad is acting like he isn't even missing the garage, and the guys are all finding new jobs. Everyone has given up. I stay sitting on the floor for a long, long time. The pounding at the door jerks me back to reality, and I slowly push up to my feet. My cheeks are coated with dry tears, and my eyes are burning. I unlock the door and open it to see Tazen standing at the door with my sign in his hand. He places it against the wall and says, Here you go. I told you I'd get it back for you. I stare at the old sign, then look back up to him. And this is supposed to just fix it all? He sighs. Look, Quinn. I get it, okay? I do. I know this place meant a fuckload to you. But you gotta let it go and move on. It's getting out of hand. I handled it for a week. I can't for another. Then give me a job. At least give me that. He shakes his head. No. Why? I growl. Because I'm a woman? He leans in closer. No. I have no doubt you hold a good deal of talent behind that pretty face, Quinn. But my garage takes a certain level of experience that I'm not sure you have. It has nothing to do with you being a woman. You need to find another job and let it go. I lean in closer. I'll learn. He growls. I don't have a job for you, Quinn. You want to answer phones? Then you can do that. As for the mechanical side, it isn't. He brings his mouth so close to mine I fear he'll kiss me. Going to happen. Prick. We'll see. He lets out a frustrated sigh and steps back, running his hands through his hair. You're pushing my buttons, woman. I'll lock you the fuck out if I have to. I step past him, straightening my shoulders again. Try it. Then I disappear into the garage. I was wondering if Tazen is here. I am sitting at the reception desk, because yes, the phone was ringing so much I could no longer ignore it. So I started answering it. Tazen seemed pleased with this, because he was running in and out having to answer it and it was pissing him off. I've just put the phone down when a gorgeous brunette saunters in. I hate her instantly, because she looks like she fell off the model train. Her long, thick hair is flowing in perfect, loose curls around her shoulders and down her back. She's wearing a tiny skirt and a tight tank that is displaying super-fake boobs that, damn her, look amazing. She has eyes like emeralds and full, sensual lips. Perfection. Damn them both. Oh, I smile sweetly. Tazen was here about half an hour ago. He had to go to an urgent doctor's appointment. I stand and lean over the desk to whisper, You know, for his problem? Her brows shoot up and she leans in close. Problem? You know, he had those blisters on his... I let my eyes dart around. Johnson. I want to snort laugh at the look on her face. She's horrified. His... he... what? Oh, I say. And I know I look genuinely shocked. You're not his... 
girlfriend, are you? She shakes her head. No, but we're seeing each other. He has blisters. I'm sure it's nothing. I wave a hand. It's a very common problem. I hardly noticed when we were together last. You, she gasps, slept with him? I raise my brows. Sure, he's Tazen Watts. She narrows her eyes. I thought, oh, I say gently, you thought he only played with one girl at a time. Shit, I'm sorry. I've opened my big mouth and upset you. He just makes out like I matter, that we're exclusive. Listen, why don't you take a seat and wait for him to finish seeing the doctor? Quinn, the voice is barked from behind me and a big smile stretches across my face as I turn around to see Tazen in the doorway, arms crossed over his broad chest. I wave my arms out to him. Oh, look! You're back? How did the doctor's visit go? Did they give you something to help clear it all up? His expression tells me he wants to stab me multiple times. His eyes are narrowed in a fierce glare that if I didn't know better, I'd be afraid of. I wasn't at the doctor. He bites back. I was out back. Oh, I say soothingly. I'm sorry. I didn't realize she wasn't meant to know. There's nothing to know, he says through clenched teeth, as he flicks his eyes to the girl who is now edging towards the door. Rose, honestly, she's joking. I don't joke, I say in my best serious tone. Uh, Rose says, look. Obviously, there is something between the two of you. I think I should leave. There's nothing between her and I, Tazen says, stepping around the reception towards her. He's telling you lies, I say in a serious tone. But if you're okay to risk that, fine by me. Just wear a condom, will you? With that, I turn and walk out into the garage where I burst into a fit of laughter. I'm pressed against the wall when Tazen comes storming out. He notices me and strides over. Then before I can move, he has my body crushed against the wall, his big hands on the brick beside my head. He leans in close, until I can feel his breath tickling my face with each and every pant. You are pushing this too far. I'm done. Fucking done, he spits. You have an hour to leave or I call the cops. I want a job, and I won't stop until you give me one. Like fuck. After what I just saw, you are fucking nuts. I'll get another receptionist. I don't want to be a receptionist, Tazen. I snap. I want to work with cars. He barks a laugh. Never going to happen. You're not qualified and there's no way you're going near my cars. How would you know I'm not qualified? I protest. You've never seen me work. And I don't want to. He growls. I want you to get out of my garage and leave me the fuck alone. No. No? I lean in so close, our lips nearly touch. That's right, Tazen. I said no. Fuck me, he rasps, slamming his hands on the wall beside my head. What the fuck do you want from me? I told you, a job. And I told you, I don't have the space or the time to train someone who doesn't know what she's doing. Being around cars your entire life and actually being able to build one are two very different things. If you give me a chance, I could show you that I actually know what I'm doing. Not only that, I'll be one of the best mechanics on your team. No, you have an hour, Quinn. Take it and get out. I won't leave. Fuck me, he yells, moving his hand from the wall and curling it around my ponytail. He tugs my head back and brings my face close to his. We are not doing this. We are doing this. We're not. We are. He pushes off the wall and pulls a phone from his pocket. Seriously? I cry, but my throat goes tight. You're going to call the cops on me. Yeah, I am. He mutters his back to me. I just want a job, I say, and my voice cracks. I can't stay at home. I can't. He turns and looks at me, still holding the phone to his ear. You want a job? You can be a receptionist. That's all you'll get from me. It's not me, I whisper. He pulls the phone down, presses a few buttons, and then stuffs it back into his pants. He strides towards me, 
Then go and find a job somewhere else. I'm not playing this game, Quinn. You want to hang on to something desperately that isn't yours to hold on to anymore. That's fine. You can work here in the office. If you're not happy with that, you will go and find something else. You have an hour to make the choice, or I call the cops. He'll do it. I can see it in his eyes. My heart burns and desperation takes over. A receptionist isn't what I want to be, but I'm not ready to leave the garage. Besides, if I'm here every day, I might get the chance to prove myself to Tazen. It's a small chance, but it's hope, and I won't give up. So I do the only thing I can. Fine. I'll be your receptionist. His eyes study me, as if he's trying to see if I'm joking or playing with him. I cross my arms and stay serious. Good. You start tomorrow. Eight until four. I'll pay you a generous salary. Fine. He sighs. Fuck me. Chapter 12 My first day as Tazen's official receptionist is ugly. We fight, we argue. He tells me I'm doing things wrong, and I tell him he has no idea how to run an office. I direct calls to the wrong places, send important customers away by mistake, and generally fail. My second day is no better, and the bickering between Tazen and me seems that much worse. By the third day, I am slowly getting the hang of things, but the tension is hardly eased. You need to file by first name. I sigh loudly as I look up from my filing to see Tazen standing over me, staring down at what I'm doing. No, Tazen, you do it by the last name. I don't call people by their last names. Doesn't matter. The system is more accurate this way. Give me the Michelson folder. He grunts. Their car is finished and delivered. Did payment clear? I nod. This morning. And the paperwork? Filed, your majesty. He sighs long and deep. I have no idea why I took pity on you and let you in here. Neither do I. But now I'm your official employee. You can't just kick me out. He crosses his arms. Can't I? Absolutely not. You owe me a warning or two. Honestly, are you always such a pain? I don't know, I shrug. It would appear you liked me enough to kiss me and lie to me to get what you wanted. He snorts. Still not over it, I see. I'm well over it. Then why so bitter? Let me guess. It was the best kiss of your life, and you can't stop thinking about it. I glare over at him and cross my legs. Kissing a three-legged dog with halitosis would be more enjoyable. He gives me a lazy half-grin that makes my panties extremely wet. I should be ashamed of myself. I should hate this man. But instead, I'm lusting over him like a horny teenaged boy. I can guarantee that isn't the case. He purrs. You've probably stuck your fingers deep, deep inside. Don't! I cut him off. He leans down, placing a hand on the desk and making me tilt back on my chair to avoid being so close to his amazing mouth. You've thought about me, Angel, he growls, just like I've thought about you. He called me Angel. He hasn't done that since our kiss. Don't flatter yourself, he pushes off the desk. If I was to put my fingers in your panties right now, I cut him off, which you won't. You'd be wet for me, he continues. I'm dry as a desert. Now, I'm busy. Can you leave? He winks at me. Of course, angel. Prick. Day four is at an end, and it's been a crazy week. I've never been more excited for the weekend as I am right now. I've finished up for the day. As far as I know, there are only a few guys left in the garage. Tazen is mid-build on a massive project, which is a custom two-door coupe that is freaking amazing. It has a Shelby Cobra look, only it's sleeker. I must admit, I'm curious. I want to get in there and look under the hood, fascinated by what they're creating. I lock the office and walk towards the exit when I hear them talking. Tazen and a group of men. They aren't familiar voices, and when I look over, I see three men in suits talking closely with him. They look like they're discussing something serious. I stop behind Tazen's truck, which blocks me from view, and listen. It's Tazen's voice I hear the clearest, and it has an edge to it that has my curiosity peaking. I told you, he hisses. 
I'm done making that shit for you. We have money, Tazen, and you have the time. Don't see why it's such a big issue for you to build something for us. What happens after that isn't your problem. Tazen snorts. Like fuck it isn't. You fuckers get busted and it's my name on those cars. And, the man grunts, you build it, we buy it. After that, it's our problem. Until they start questioning me. I narrow my eyes. Questioning him? About what? I don't understand what's going on. But whatever it is, it seems sketchy. And you tell them you have no idea what they're talking about. You sold the car and that's that. Tazen laughs bitterly. We both know it doesn't work like that. The heat gets turned up and you pricks decide to run your mouths off and sink me. No, I'm not building that shit for you anymore. I'm picking up my business here and putting a foot in the racing industry because that's where the money is. End of story. Cheyenne wants a car, Tazen. She won't race in anything that isn't yours. I peek around the car to see Tazen flinch. Fuck Cheyenne. The man, who I can see now is tall and lean, with dark hair and possibly dark eyes, laughs. We both know you don't mean that. You don't want her racing in a shit heap, and you and I both know it. So you build us one more car, let us make our money, and we won't see you again. Until you want another fucking car, Tazen grunts. You have my word. One more, then you won't hear from us again. Tazen studies him. She shouldn't be doing this shit, Murray, and you know it. Who is Murray? And who the hell is Cheyenne? She's a big girl, and she's the best female racer we have. She's making us seriously big money. Female racer? For what? If it was just normal racing, Tazen wouldn't be holding back on building a car. What the hell are they doing, if not professional racing? She's also hot-headed, and nuts, Tazen grunts. You didn't say that when you were fucking her for three years. Three years? Wait, what? Tazen was with someone for three years? I mean, sure, that's possible and all. But he never seemed like the kind of man to ever settle down. So this news surprises me. Yeah, and she drove me up the fucking wall, Tazen points out. I left her. Left all that shit. And now you're here wanting more. One more car, Tazen. Tazen studies him. Fine. One more car, but then you're going to stay the fuck away from me. We clear? As Crystal, Murray smiles. The other two men with him are standing, crossing their arms and smiling, but neither of them has spoken. They start chatting about normal things again, so I figure it's my time to act casual and walk out. I take a deep breath and walk out as if I don't know they're there. Hey, Tazen yells. I jerk and turn around, acting surprised he's still here. Oh, you're still here? Sorry, I didn't realize. He studies me, but I keep my face blank. I let my eyes scan over the guys who are now watching me, and make sure I look surprised they're here. Uh, I didn't realize you had company. I'm just heading out. Who's your girl, Taz? Murray asks letting his eyes travel over my tight blouse and short black skirt. Ugh. Eyes up here, I snap. Unless you don't cherish your balls, that is. Murray jerks in surprise and the other men burst out laughing. When his eyes meet mine, I smile coldly. Tazen closes his eyes and runs his hands through his hair. You have a sassy one here, Murray says to Tazen, even though his eyes are on me. Yeah, Tazen grunts. You could say that. And, Murray narrows his eyes, I've seen her before. That's because this is my garage, I point out. Fuck me, Tazen groans. Not this shit again. He stole it from me, but it was mine for a long time, Murray nods. Yeah, been here before. You a mechanic? Yes, I say. Not anymore, Tazen says. She's a receptionist now. I shoot him a glare. Tazen here has a hard time dealing with the fact that a woman can pull spanners better than him. Murray grins. Well, it seems you two have a good lot of tension to go through. I'll let you get back to it. He turns to Tazen. I'll tell Shay you said hello. Don't. 
Tazen mutters. I'd rather lick the pavement than have that girl think I am thinking about her. Murray's eyes flick to me. I wonder what she'll think of your new girl here. She isn't my girl. And if you tell Shay she is, our deal is off. Why would it be such an issue if he told this Cheyenne chick that I'm his girl? I mean, I'm not, of course, but even if I was, it shouldn't matter. She's obviously an ex and therefore should have no say in what he does. Murray laughs. Yeah, I'm hearing you. Later. With that, he takes his guys and leaves. When he's gone, I turn to Tazen, who looks kind of edgy about the whole thing. His body is tight and his jaw is twitching. Interesting. Who is Shay? I ask, not using her full name. Tazen narrows his eyes. None of your business. Why? Is she your secret wife? He grunts and grabs the hem of his shirt, lifting it up and over his head. I stop thinking, speaking, and breathing as I take in his incredible body. God, I could see that piece of perfection every day for the rest of my life and never, ever get bored of it. He's beautiful, masculine, and so fucking muscled. I want to drop to my knees and lick every single one. Eyes up here, he mutters. Unless you don't cherish your vagina, that is. I can't help it. I burst out laughing. It was so unexpected that I can't contain my reaction. Tazen's eyes soften as he studies me laughing freely. I gather myself, but I can't wipe the smile off my face. I do cherish my vagina, so I'll be sure to keep my eyes above your shoulders from now on. Good, he grins, devastating and to die for. Then he strides towards me, and I suck in a breath as he leans down so our lips are close. Your pussy deserves to be cherished, Angel. With that, he steps past me and disappears into the showers at the back of the garage. My legs wobble as I stand, swallowing over and over. He is getting to me, and I can't deny it. I like it. I like it a hell of a lot. I shouldn't, but I do. And a huge part of me is tired of pretending I don't. It's taking all my strength not to go in there and rip my clothes off and get into the shower with him. Instead, I turn and walk out of the garage. Damn it. Chapter 13 How's it going? Jace asks, throwing himself onto my bed. It's only been a day since my realization that my feelings for Tazen aren't going away. It's challenging. I sigh, dropping down next to him. Tazen certainly isn't going to make my life easy. But then I'm not making his easy, so I guess we're even. Jace grunts and rolls to his side, propping himself up on an elbow. Are you sure you really want to do this? I frown at him. We've been over this. Of course I do. You're good at what you do. You're not meant to be a receptionist. There's jobs around. Mechanic jobs. But not in my garage. He smiles sympathetically. It was your garage, honey. You're hanging on to something you can't have control over anymore. I sigh. I know, Jace, but I'm... I just can't leave. His face grows serious. This has nothing to do with him and the little fling you two had. One kiss is hardly a fling, I mutter. Quinn, you're not fooling anyone. You're attracted to him, but you're playing with fire. You need to be careful. Attraction or not, I say, shifting to my side, too. He isn't interested, and we've both made it clear it won't ever happen. That's not what I see. Well, you'd be wrong, Jace. I'm working for him, and right now it's bringing money in. Quinn, you just sold the garage. Yes, I say, looking into his eyes. And my father is an alcoholic. He ran us dry, Jace. The bills took a massive portion of that. It won't last forever, and I don't want to get stuck when it runs out. He nods. I understand. Quinn? The sound of my dad's pained cry jerks me off the bed. Jace gets up behind me. Dad was out when Jace came to hang with me, but he must be home, and by the sounds of it, he isn't doing so well. I rush out of the room and down the hall, skidding to a halt when I see my father hanging off the kitchen counter, barely holding on. He's covered in vomit, his shirt is torn, and he has grazed and bleeding knees. He obviously fell a few times. 
My shoulders slump and I turn to Jace. You should go. Jace stares at my father, the expression on his face a little broken and a lot horrified. Quinn, he whispers. I didn't realize. Jace, just go. He snaps out of it. No, no way. He strides towards my dad before I can and hauls him up straight. Right. Robbo, taking you to the shower. Jace? Dad mumbles, blinking up at him. Yeah, it's me. Come on. Jace, I say, but he gives me a hard look. No, Quinn. Let me help. You clean up the mess. He nods towards the front door and I turn to see a pile of vomit on the floor. Great. Jace disappears into the bathroom with Dad. And I gather up my disinfectant and bucket. Then I get to work scrubbing the carpet. My phone rings midway through. I push to my feet with a weary sigh and wash my hands. Then I pull it out of my pocket and am surprised to see Tazen's number on my screen. Why is he calling me? I press the green button and put it to my ear. What? That's not a nice way to speak to your boss, Quinn. I sigh. I'm not in the mood right now, Tazen. Why are you calling? He's silent for a minute. Everything okay? Don't pretend you care. What do you want? I can't find my recent projects folder. You're in the garage? I ask, surprised. He laughs softly. I don't stop working, Angel. Right, I mumble. Quinny! I hear shrieked from the bathroom, and my back snaps straight. Tazen, hang on. Quinn? Tazen asks, concern etched in his voice. What the fuck was that? Just, I'll call you back, okay? Quinn, I'll call you- My sentence is cut off when my father comes charging out of the bathroom stark naked. I scream and spin around, horrified. Jesus, fuck! Quinn! Tazen barks. I hang up quickly and drop the phone, calling out, Jace? Sorry, Quinn, Jace says, rushing out behind him, his voice sympathetic. I was showering the old man and he freaked out on me. Quinny, Dad protests. What the fuck? Anger bubbles in my chest, but I keep my back to him and my mouth closed. Come on, Robbo, Jace tries for calm. Get yourself dressed and go sleep it off. Fuck you, Jace, Dad barks and I flinch. This is something I've noticed has been happening more and more lately. Dad is getting angrier, more short-tempered. This worries me. Relax, Jace warns. It's time for bed. You don't tell me when I go to bed, Dad slurs. Who the hell do you think you are? Bring it on, boy. Dad, I yell, finally losing my hold on the anger bubbling up. Get dressed and get into bed. I can't take this anymore. If you're going to act like a child, that's how we're going to treat you. Quinny. Dad whispers hurt. My shoulders slump and tears burn under my eyelids. Just, I whisper, go to sleep. There's shuffling sounds, and a moment later a door closes. I slowly turn to see I'm alone in the room again. I glance down at the mess only half cleaned on the floor, and the phone beside it that is flashing with another phone call. Tazen. Fuck. I reach down and snatch it up, pressing it to my ear. Tazen. What the hell, Quinn? He yells. I'm coming over. He's, what? No, you can't come over. I cry. I fucking can. You were screaming. Are you hurt? Fuck, Angel. Are you hurt? He's worried for me. My heart swells. I'm okay, I say softly. It was just, a friend stayed the night and he was drunk. It's a long story, but I'm fine. Don't come over. Tazen is silent a minute. You're lying to me. I close my eyes. I'm your employee, Tazen. You've made that horribly clear. I'm no more. What happens here is none of your concern. You rang about a file. It's under new builds in the second filing cabinet. I'll see you Monday. Angel. He starts, but I click the phone off. I drop my head and let one silent tear run down my cheek. By Monday morning, I'm ready for work again. My weekend was slow after Dad's drunken meltdown, and I spent most of it making sure it didn't happen again. Jace came over to check on me a few times, 
and Lenny showed up once and kept an eye on Dad for a few hours so I could go to the store and stock the fridge. I know Jace told Lenny what happened, and I know they're both looking out for me. But I'm tired. So damned tired. I get into the garage before Tazen and the guys, so I get some serious invoicing done. By the time Nine rolls around, I'm on top of most of the work for the day. This work is boring the hell out of me, and I honestly don't know how I'm going to keep on top of it when all I want to do is go out into the garage. Maybe Jace is right. Maybe I need to let it go and get another job. Hey, I turn to see Tazen standing in the doorway to the office. Uh, hey. He tilts his head to the side and studies me. How was your weekend? I stand. Fine. I have done all the work for the day already. I think I'm going to take the rest of the day to look for work. I'm not cut out for this. Tazen's eyes narrow. I thought you would do anything not to have to leave this place. I cross my arms. Yes, Tazen, you're right. But it's clear you're never going to give me even a slight chance to work as a mechanic. So I'll find someone who will. Now, unless there is something else you need me to do, I'm going to head out. He studies me for a long, long moment before he finally speaks. You want a job in the garage? Is that a stupid question? I mutter. He smirks at me. Answer my question, Angel. Yes, Tazen. I want a job in the garage. Fine, he says, crossing his arms. It turns out I might have some work for you there, but there are conditions. I roll my eyes to the ceiling, then back, muttering, Of course there are. You don't touch my builds. I blink. So, you want me to do what, then? We have a fuckload that come back in for services, replacement bits, things like that. You can help out on those. It's basic work, but it'll give you great experience. You'll have free range with all that. But no one touches my builds, except for my trained men. Gosh, I hate him sometimes. But he knows I'll accept, because even doing basics on the cars that come back in is an amazing chance. It's also a chance to prove just what I can do to Tazen arrogant Watts. Fine, I say casually. You work the same hours, and you take orders from me like the other guys. You're not running this show anymore, Quinn. You do something without permission, I fire you. These are the same rules all the men have. Fine, I say again. Good. He steps out of the way. Let's see how well you really handle this man's environment. Because I can tell you now... My guys won't be happy about having a woman on the team. Your guys can suck it, I smile coldly. Now, can I start? He waves a hand again. Let's see what you've got, Angel. Challenge accepted. Chapter 14 He isn't kidding. The guys don't say it out loud, but it's clear that I'm not an accepted part of their boys' club. They treat me like I'm invisible and only give me the easiest jobs. I keep my shit together and do my job efficiently. That is, at least, until they're little pranks. This isn't funny, I yell, throwing my oily rag toward Tazen who was standing in his office laughing. I stare down at my coveralls and inwardly screech. The men thought it would be funny to cut holes where my breasts and ass are meant to go. I don't have anything else to wear and the skirt I was in is hardly acceptable. I want to smack him for laughing. That's the last thing I wanted to do when I was changing into my coveralls in the female restroom. As I looked at myself in the mirror, I saw that my leopard print bra was poking through the two messily cut holes. I turned and stared at my ass, and my cheeks flushed. I'm wearing a G-string, because I hadn't done the washing, and it was all I had left. My butt cheeks are poking out the holes cut there. I was so angry I stormed into Tazen's office, not even caring if anyone got a glimpse of my ass. How is this funny? I yell. This is wildly inappropriate and offensive on so many levels. He stops laughing. Then his eyes grow a little more serious. Clearly he can see this has upset me. Listen, Quinn, he says. The guys are testing you, seeing how much of their bullshit you can handle. They do it to the new guys, too. I can go out there and rip them a new one, if you're upset, and believe me, I will. It's up to you. How do you want this handled? He's being serious. He laughed at first, but now his eyes are scanning my face, and I know, even though he's arrogant at times, 
that Tazen will defend me if I ask him to. But he's right. They are testing me and I can handle it. I will handle it. I am trying to prove I belong in this world, and so running to the boss isn't exactly going to help my cause. No, I've got this. He nods and hands me a roll of duct tape. Now patch up those holes and get back out there. Show them they can't phase you. I take the tape from his hand. He grins. But before you do, he says, his eyes dancing with amusement. Turn around one more time so I can enjoy the view. Careful, Tazen. I grin at him. Revenge is coming, and you aren't safe from it. I look forward to it, baby. Chapter 15 The next few days at work are crazy. Tazen gets the car out and then a new job comes in, so it's right back to square one. I'm busy helping out where I can, but I so desperately want to work on those cars with him. When the new job comes in, things slow slightly because we have time to move with it, so Tazen calms down. It's then I get my revenge. He purchased a whole heap of nuts for the guys, which he puts out during the day for them to nibble on. He's been doing this since I've been there, but today they're getting a whole new level of snacking. When they're busy, I go in and swing the cupboard open, pulling out all the nuts. I bring them into the men's room, lock the door, and drop them all in the toilet, which is in need of a good cleaning. Then I dredge them out and put them in a bowl. I have my phone held out in front of me as I'm doing this, filming the entire thing. I may or may not do this laughing like a hyena. I shuffle the nuts in the bowl, and they look perfect, like nothing sinister has happened to them. Wiping my smirk off my face, I carry the bowl out to the guys. Hey, nuts are up. As always, the guys don't hesitate. They're in the middle of their lunch breaks, so all of them take a good handful of nuts. Tazen included. I watch with bubbling laughter as they throw them into their mouths, chewing happily. Poor, helpless males. How are your nuts? I ask, making a choked, laughing sound. Tazen has just thrown a few into his mouth and is chewing, but at my words, he stops. His eyes flick to the guys who seem oblivious to my little outburst. They don't seem as salty, Kellen says, chewing. Did you get the unsalted ones in an attempt to keep us healthy? He pats his belly. I burst out laughing. I can't hold it back. Tazen leans forward and spits the nuts onto the ground. All the guys stare in horror at Tazen's chewed-up nuts, and then their eyes flick to me. With hysterical laughter rising from my throat, I open my phone and pull up the video, turning it towards them. As they realize what I did, they start spitting their nuts out. Some even get up to charge to the bathroom. I'm laughing so hard my belly hurts. That'll teach all of you for being assholes and pranking me. I'm laughing and hiccuping and laughing some more. I double over, wrapping my arms around my belly. You're seriously evil, Tazen grunts. I told you I'd get you back. Now, if you don't start treating me like an equal, my next prank will be much worse. Got it? The guys' reactions range from grunts to chuckles to nods. I have come to get to know their names and their roles now. There is Rick, who is Tazen's second-in-command. Kellen and Toby, who are Tazen's apprentices. Drasco and Kyle, who are his painters and detailers. Then Lloyd and Michael, who are seriously amazing mechanics that do all the engine work with Tazen. I haven't had a chance to talk to many of them, because I really only work with Kellen and Toby on the easy jobs. Kellen is coming around, but Toby is an angry dude. Well, I say, doing a graceful bow, that's me for the day. I turn, still laughing, and get back to work. I realize only after I'm midway through my afternoon jobs that it's the first time I've truly felt at ease for a long, long time. I never thought that would happen when I lost the garage, but I'm slowly coming to terms with all the changes. They're more challenging than I could ever have bargained for, and that isn't a bad thing. I think I might just like it here. Yawning, I stretch and take lazy steps as I head into the garage. It's just about 7 a.m., but no one is here yet, which is strange. 
It's Friday, and Tazen told me to be in earlier for a job that needed to go out by closing of business today. I pushed my ass out of bed and made it in on time, but no one is here. I figure I can get started anyway, so unlock the front door and step in. I don't see it coming, because obviously no one sees a giant paint tin swinging towards their face coming. I open my mouth to scream, but it hits me straight in the forehead— I stumble backwards as a sharp pain radiates through my head. I topple to the ground as I lose my balance. I crash down with a cry, trying to steady my fall with my hands, but not succeeding. I land flat on my back. Agony. Something warm is gushing down my forehead, and I realize it's blood. Tears burst to my eyelids, and I try to push up, but my head is spinning so I stay down. I hiccup, and a sob tears from my lips. This was a prank, obviously, but it was a cruel, heartless one. He could have killed me. A mix of anger and pain swirl in my chest and my tears flow harder. I press my hand to my forehead to stop the blood flow, but do no more because I can't control the tears. I don't know how long I lay like that, clutching my head, but I hear a shouted, Fuck! And then Tazen is kneeling over me, his hands on my face. You, I croak, piece of shit. Baby, he whispers, his voice pained. I didn't. Do you think it was funny? I sob. You could have killed me. Shit, it wasn't meant to. It was meant to just spill. Yeah, I laugh brokenly. Well, clearly it didn't. He leans down, scooping me into his arms. I'm so sorry, Angel. You're not sorry. You've wanted to hurt me like this from the start. No, he says, striding towards the bathrooms. No, I didn't. He sounds truly pained, and I know he didn't mean for it to go like this. I can tell just by his reaction. But I'm hurting, and I'm embarrassed. I squirm in his arms, but he holds me tighter. Hold still. You're covered in blood. Fuck. Where are you hurt? My, uh, head. I blink as I feel a bit lightheaded. Jason. I whisper. I'm dizzy. Shit, he says, kicking the door to the office open. Do you want me to call an ambulance? I don't, ah, uh, no. Sit, let me see. He places me down on the desk and rushes towards the cabinets to pull out the first aid kit. He doesn't speak as he starts wiping my head and getting the blood away so he can see the gash. I stop feeling dizzy as he works, and when I'm cleaned up, he leans in close to inspect the gash. I don't know what comes over me, but the sudden urge to taste him, to feel him, overwhelms me. I try to push it back as I whisper, Taze it? His eyes dart down to mine. Yeah, Angel. We took it too far. He closes his eyes for a moment and nods sharply. Yeah, baby, we did. I'm sorry. His eyes shoot open and he stares at me in shock. No, don't you say that. I've been a fucking dick to you. And I've been a royal pain in the ass. His eyes go back to my gash. I hurt you. I reach up before thinking and place my fingers against his cheek. His eyes find mine and everything just seems to move quickly from there. He leans down and captures my lips with his, and before I know it, we're kissing. It isn't a deep kiss, but it's long and it's sweet. His lips explore mine with no tongue for a while. Then he snakes an arm around my hip and pulls me closer to him, forcing my legs apart so he's standing between them. That's when the kiss gets hot. In fact, it gets frantic. Weeks of sexual tension, anger, passion, and lust explodes. I capture the back of his head with my hand and tangle my fingers in his hair, kissing him hard and deep. Our tongues dance, our groans fill the small space, and passion radiates through my body, making me want so much more from him. I open my legs wider, angling my hips up so I can feel him right there, right on my sex. Fuck, he breathes, pulling his lips from mine. You're hurt. We need to stop. No, I breathe. I don't want to stop. Angel, he growls. You're hurt. I'm fine. The pain is eased. I want this, Tazen. I've wanted it since the start. You can take me to the hospital after you fuck me. His eyes flash with need and he leans back down, taking my lips again. 
His fingers glide up my sides, taking my tank top with them. He pulls it up and over my head. Then he unclips my bra, not wasting any time. He leans back when he's got my bra off and stares down at my exposed breasts. I knew, he says in a husky rumble, that these would be fucking beautiful. He leans down and captures my nipple between his lips, rolling the hard butt around until I'm gasping and squirming against him. Jason, I plead. Oh, God. He sucks and pulls, flicking the tip with his tongue. He sucks and licks the soft flesh of my breast before taking hold of my pants and jerking them down. I shift so he can get them off, and then I'm sitting on the desk, fully naked while he's fully clothed. Color rises to my cheeks, and I squirm uncomfortably, not knowing how I feel about being in this situation with him, even though I want it so badly it burns inside me. Don't be ashamed, he rasps, his voice so thick I can hardly make out his words. You're beautiful, Angel. He drops to his knees in front of me, taking hold of mine and spreading my legs wide. I suck in air when he leans forward and closes his mouth over my aching sex. A loud whimper escapes my throat as my backside launches off the counter of its own accord. Tazen takes hold of my hips, holding me down as he spreads me wide and sucks my clit into his mouth. It's then my whimpers turn into pleasured cries. He doesn't take it slow, doesn't hold back. He sucks my clit deeply, drawing it in and out of his mouth to create friction. I gasp as little bolts of pleasure shoot right to my core. t t t t t -tazen. I stammer as a thrilling sensation radiates through my body and right to my center where he's still sucking. When he slides a finger inside me and curls it upwards, hitting that sweet spot, I explode. My head drops back and I don't care that it throbs when it does. It feels so fucking amazing that nothing else matters. I scream his name as my hips buck furiously, and my orgasm tears through me. Tazen pulls his mouth from my pussy, with a hiss of pleasure, and stands, fumbling frantically with his jeans to get them undone. I watch with a hooded expression as he jerks them down and frees his cock. My eyes widen. Oh, wow. Tazen's cock is beautiful. It's long and thick, but not too much of either. It's the perfect size, not so big it'll hurt, and not so small you wonder if it's in. He's perfectly structured, and I can't tear my eyes away from the throbbing thick length that is now in his hand being stroked, while his other hand is reaching into his jeans pocket. I watch in fascination, and a little terror, as he pulls out a condom and tears it open with his teeth. Then he rolls it over himself and steps closer to me. Need to fuck you so badly it hurts. Tell me if it's too much, but I gotta get in there, baby. He can get in there any day of the week. I nod, and a flutter of nerves hits my belly. It's been a long time since I've done this, and I've only ever done it once. Will it hurt like it did back then? Panic swells in my chest as Tazen spreads my legs wider and presses the thick tip to my entrance. He pushes it in slightly, and I gasp from a mix of pleasure and pain. Tazen notices and stares down at me. Fuck, it's been a long time. You want me to warm you up some more? I love that he's offering that, but I don't want him to stop. I want him inside me, and I want it to happen right now. No, I whisper. Don't stop. His eyes grow hooded as he pushes in deeper. I groan as he fills me, inch by inch. The mix of pleasure and pain isn't unpleasant. The more he fills me, the more pleasure takes over and pain is forgotten. With a ragged groan, he jerks his hips and fills me completely. I drop my head back and gasp his name as a million sensations take over my body. God damn it, he grinds out. So fucking sweet. Tazen, I pant. More. He gives me more. He slides his cock out and then sinks it back in, and we both let out long, pleasured groans. And then he takes hold of my hips and he fucks me. He fucks me just the way I asked. He does it slow but deep, his hips creating the perfect rhythm for this thrusting. His head is dropped forward, his eyes on mine, but his jaw is so tight I can see the muscles jumping there. He wants to let go, 
From the pleasure rocketing through my body, racing for the finish line, I'd be happy for that to happen. Let go, I pant. Fuck me harder. His eyes flash with something animalistic, and he lets go. His thrusts go from long and deep to short and fast. The sounds of our skin slapping and panting. Breathy moans are the only thing filling the small space. My back arches as an incredible sensation fills my lower regions. I feel myself winding tighter and tighter as the amazing feeling looms closer. Fuck, Tazen grunts. You're going to come for me, baby. You just got so fucking tight. Come? That's what's going to happen? God, if it feels as amazing as it's promising to be, I never want it to stop. Tazen! I yell as that sensation reaches its peak. I explode. Pleasure unlike anything I've ever felt dances through my body as Tazen thrusts hard to keep it there. My knees wobble, my toes curl, my hands slap the desk beneath me and I scream. I scream his name, I swear and I convulse as the most amazing sensation takes over my body. I can feel my sex clenching and spasming around his cock, and by the sounds being wrenched from his throat, he likes that. Can't, he grunts. Hold on. He throws his head back, showing me a gorgeous corded neck, and bellows my name as everything comes to a standstill, and he thrusts deeply, then stops. I can feel his cock pulsing inside me, and color rises to my cheeks when I realize he's coming. He's coming inside me, because of me. That feeling makes everything inside my body feel warm. I can't take my eyes off him, as I watch his face go through all the motions of pleasure from his jaw tightening to it suddenly going slack. God, yes. He finally looks down at me, and his eyes are flaring with something intense. He pulls out slowly and reaches down, cupping my cheek in his rugged, rough hand. I'm going to get something to clean you up, okay? I nod, unable to find my words after that amazing sex. He pulls his jeans up and disappears out of the office, a moment later, he returns with a clean, damp towel. He cleans me up, and my heart falls a little more in love with this man. Love? I blink. Love. Why would I say love? I don't love Tazen Watts. Do I? No, of course not. I barely even like him. Yes, I'm infatuated by him, but it's against my better judgment, and I certainly don't love him. If I'm being honest... I know that I could love him, and that scares the hell out of me. Hey. I jerk and look over to see Tazen staring at me. You okay? I nod, biting my bottom lip. His eyes drop to that and his jaw gets tense again. Keep biting that lip, and I might just have to see how many rounds I can go before the guys get here. My cheeks grow pink and he smiles. Angel is blushing. That surprises me. Why? Because you're always so tough. Yeah, I say, pushing up off the desk. Well, don't get used to it. He chuckles. Stepping closer, he takes my hands and helps me stand. How's your head? It feels fine now, I say honestly, because it does. I have a slight burn in my forehead, but there's no pounding. Do you want me to take you to the hospital? Do I need to be stitched? He shakes his head. No, it looked worse than it is. It's just a small split, but nothing that won't heal normally. I nod. Then I'll be fine. He narrows his eyes. If you have any problems at all, you tell me, yeah? Yeah, Tazen. He reaches out, curling his fingers around the back of my neck, forcing me to step closer to him. He keeps his big, warm hand there as he speaks. I've wanted that since I first laid eyes on you, Quinn. I know I fucked up taking this garage from you. And since then, we've done nothing but taunt each other. But I truly am fucking sorry for hurting you. I know you are, I say in a soft voice. It's time for it to stop. If you're still interested, I'll let you step in more with the cars. But no more pranks. I agree. He nods, leaning down and kissing my lips softly. I got a car to get cracking on. You good? I nod, staring into his beautiful eyes. Yeah. Get dressed, and I'll make sure no one comes in here. Come out when you're ready. 
He turns and walks out of the office and I quickly pull my clothes back on. I find a spare pair of coveralls, pull them on and then tie my hair up. My body is still alive, and so every movement reminds me of the intense pleasure I just experienced with Tazen. I'm sure I will feel that all day. It was that good. When I'm ready, I head out into the garage. All the guys are there, starting their day. Kellen and Rick both stare at me as I go past, and their eyes widen. What the hell happened to your head? Rick asks. I give him an ugly stare. Like you don't already know. He narrows his eyes. I don't know. So Tazen worked alone? I find that hard to believe. It was a prank that went wrong. Kellen's eyes go big. Shit! Are you hurt? I was. Where's Tazen? He had to go out to pick up some bits for this car. He'll be a few hours. Great. He does a runner as soon as he's fucked me. That makes my chest feel tight. But I shove it aside and turn to Rick. What am I on today? Tazen said you can help me out today. You up for it? My chest swells. He's giving me a chance to work on something bigger. Maybe things aren't as bad as I first thought. He's putting some faith in me. And for that, I swear I will make Tazen Watts proud of me. Chapter 16 Fuck! Rick barks, throwing his spanner down. I lift my head from the engine, I'm helping piece together, and see Rick storming across the workshop. What's going on? I ask as he passes me. That piece of shit is refusing to start. I fucking give up. He charges outside and I can't help myself. I stand and walk over to the engine that Kellen, Toby, and Drasco are all standing around, studying. Rick has let me help on it all day, but he hasn't let me do any hard work. I guess he's afraid I'll stuff it up. You connect everything, right? Drasco asks. Yeah, Toby says, scratching his head. Maybe one of the lines isn't connecting properly, Kellen adds. I stare at all of them and then I stare at the engine. Have you checked the gas lines? Their heads swivel to me. You're not allowed to work on these cars. You can help out, but Tazen only lets Rick work on them when he's not here, Toby points out rudely. Well, I'm not touching it. I'm just asking a question. We know what we're doing, he snaps. Listen, buddy, I growl, stepping up into his space. I get it. You don't want me here. But you don't get to speak to me like I'm trash. Do it again, and you'll find your balls in a place you really don't want them to be. Drasco snorts, and Kellen chuckles. Rick comes charging back in with a phone pressed to his ear. Yeah, we can't figure it out, and they want to see it running by close of business. Where the fuck are you? He's talking to Tazen. Yeah, well, get in here. Silence. Of course I fucking checked that. More silence. Whatever. Just get back here. Rick slams the phone down and glares at me. You got any ideas? His question stuns me and surprises me so much. I open my mouth to answer, but nothing comes out. Impatient, Rick shakes his head, clearly too frustrated to wait. Instead, he barks at the guys. Toby, go and get the plans for this engine. Kellen, check everything again. Give me a minute. I might be able to help, I say thinking hard about what the problem might be. Rick is obviously finished giving me my chance. This pisses me off. Toby and Kellen rush off and Rick starts talking to Drasco. So I slip in behind him and study the engine. I run my fingers over all the pieces, checking to see if they're connected right. I check the gas lines and they seem to be correct. I look at all the fuses and they seem fine. While Rick and Drasco are chatting, I slide underneath the engine and mess around with the battery. Then. Clear as day, I see the problem. The starter connection is broken. With a snort, I slide out to see Drasco and Rick bickering about something, still not having noticed I'm under the engine. I find the correct tooling I need and slide back under the car to fix what is quite simple. I tinker carefully, not wanting to cause any more problems. I'm just about finished when I hear, What the fuck? I ignore that and do the last adjustments on the connections and then slide out to see Tazen, Rick, Drasco, Toby, and Kellen, all staring down at me. I stand up, 
Slap my spanner into Tazen's hand and then turn, flicking the engine over. It roars to life. I face them again with a smile. You're welcome. Then I walk off, but really, I want to skip. I just showed them all up, and in front of their boss. Finally. I'm in the female restroom, washing my face and fixing my hair, when I see Tazen appear in the mirror. He's standing behind me, leaning against the doorframe. I meet his eyes in the glass, and he gives me a lazy, gorgeous half-smile. That was impressive what you did back there. I told you, I say, lifting my hair into a neater ponytail. I know what I'm doing. Just how experienced are you, Angel? I've been doing it since I was under five years old, Tazen. My dad, before, uh, we lost my mom, was one of the best mechanics around. He taught me every single thing I know. I did an apprenticeship underneath him when I was fifteen for five years. Then I became a fully qualified mechanic. Jesus, he mutters. Yeah, I say. And you thought I was just a stupid girl. Never thought that. I meet his eyes again. Well, it's beside the point now. You've seen for yourself what I can do. Yeah, I have. And it's why I'm in here. I feel excitement bubble in my chest, but I keep my casual expression. Oh? I want you on my team. I want to scream inside, but I don't. You do? Yeah, he says, studying me. I've been impressed with your work. Not just today, but every day. It's neater and more precise than any of the guys on my team. Men have heavy hands, but your work is delicate. In the business I'm running, that's important. People want perfection. So I'm offering you a full-time job as one of my mechanics. I'm inwardly screaming with joy. Will I get to help on the builds? He nods. Yeah, you will. And you won't treat me like an idiot? He grins. No, Angel. Then I accept. Happy dance, happy dance, happy dance. Good. Then fix your hair and get back out there. You're part of the team now. I let my hair go with a massive grin. I turn and his smile gets bigger when he sees how happy I am. He steps forward and his arm lashes out, curling around my waist. I don't fuck employees, he murmurs, staring at my lips. I'd like to hope not, I laugh softly. They're all men. He grunts, but he's smiling. Exactly. But this time, I think I'll make an exception. That might not be a good idea. I say, it's a great idea. There's a fuckload of hoods to bend you over out there. My cheeks get pink. But, he says, looking away, we can't make it known to the guys. I get that. And I do get it. Relationships in a close-knit garage like this can cause everyone tension if they go wrong. Besides, right now, I just want this between us. Good. Now come and kiss me before I take you over this bathroom sink. I go up on my tiptoes and he kisses me long and deep, with a hint of tongue, before letting me go. I grin and slide past him, practically bounding into the garage to announce to the guys that they have a new team member. They already know, but I'm so happy I don't care. I rush right over to the build they're working on, and pride and happiness is bursting from my chest as I slide under the car with Rick. You sure you're ready for the big man's world? He asks, handing me a spanner. I take it with a massive grin. Oh, I'm ready. Then welcome to the team, Quinn. Welcome, indeed. Chapter 17 Throw me those fuses, will you? Toby barks at me. Say please, Toby, and I might consider it. He glares at me. I get back to work. Fuck, he mutters. Please. I inwardly groan and throw him the fuses. See, that wasn't so hard. He doesn't answer. I think we're bonding. Quinn? I lift my head and see Tazen standing in the doorway to the office. It's been a week since he gave me the job as one of his mechanics, and since then, we've not had a second to even look at each other. I'm not entirely sure if what we did was a one-time thing, or if he wants more. We didn't exactly have a smooth start. He crooks his finger at me and I get up, moving towards him. What's up? I don't get to finish my sentence, because he takes my arm and hauls me into the office. He kicks the door closed, jerks the blinds down and spins on me. Then he's kissing me, deep and hard, all tongue and serious lip action, 
I whimper and press my body against his, hooking my fingers through his belt loops and tugging his hips closer to mine. He kisses me for a solid five minutes. He explores my mouth, lets his hands run over my body and takes me to amazing heights without even touching my happy places. When he pulls his lips from mine, he stares down at me with lusty eyes. I have been wanting to do that for a long fucking time. I lick my lips and he groans. Fuck it. I have five more minutes. He pulls me close and starts kissing me again. This time his fingers go to the clasps on my coveralls and he flicks them off. My coveralls drop to the floor without the support and I'm left in my panties and a tank top. Tazen's still kissing me, reaches down and shoves my panties aside. Then his fingers are gliding through my sex. I gasp against his lips and step even closer rotating my hips so I can get a deeper friction. Tazen grunts and massages my clit with his fingertips as he pulls his mouth from mine and glides his lips down my neck. I close my eyes and tilt my head back, panting softly as pleasure shoots through my core. Tazen's fingers are like magic as he rubs and flicks, bringing me to the edge. Come on, he murmurs against my flesh. Come for me. I'm winding up tighter and tighter, and before I know it, I'm exploding around him. He lets out a low groan of pleasure and continues rubbing until every tremble leaves my body. Then he slides his fingers out and brings them up to his lips, sucking me off them. My cheeks burn, but it's without a doubt one of the hottest things I've ever seen. His eyes hold mine as he slowly slides his fingers out of his mouth and reaches out, capturing my hips. He brings my body flush against his, and I can feel how hard his cock is. It doesn't seem fair that he should miss out when he just gave me a great orgasm. Before I know what I'm doing, I'm sliding downwards. I hit the floor on my knees and reach out for his jeans. He helps me unclasp them, and I could swear his fingers were trembling as he did it. When his jeans are undone, I reach in and pull out his cock. I've never put one of these in my mouth before so I've absolutely no idea what I'm doing. I look up at him, and he's staring down at me with a fiery, intense expression. I've never, I lick my lips, done this. Jesus, he grunts. That makes it even better. Tell me what you like. He strokes my hair from my face, then bunches it up behind me in his fist. This turns me on in epic ways. Lick the head for a while. Then slide it into your mouth and suck like you were enjoying a lollipop. Best lollipop ever. Okay. I turn my face back down and slide my tongue out, touching the soft head of his cock. The skin is like silk, and there is little to no taste as I swirl my tongue around and around. Tazen groans above me, spurring me on. I do as he asked and open my mouth, taking him in as deep as I can, without feeling like I want to choke. I suck, hollowing my cheeks, and start sliding my head up and down. Tazen's entire body jerks, and he hisses something I can't make out. Then he's using my hair as a guide, bobbing me up and down at the perfect rhythm. His cock is full and heavy in my mouth, and I love the feeling of my lips sliding over the silky skin. What I love the most, though, is the deep sounds of pleasure being torn from his throat with each suck. His cock swells in my mouth, and he tugs my head back. I'm going to come. I watch in fascination as he strokes his cock quickly, and then sticks his hand over the tip and lets out a long, guttural groan. He pumps it, fast at first, then slowly until he stops. Then he pulls his hand away, and I watch a long bead of cum drip from the tip as he begins to go slack. I lick my lips and look to his hand, where he's got a handful of his release. He reaches for an old towel in the corner that's ready for washing and uses it to clean his hands. I get to my feet and he turns to me, his eyes sedated now. Fuck, that was amazing. You weren't so bad yourself, I smile. He steps forward and cups my jaw with his clean hand. What are you doing to me, Angel? I lean in close, pecking his lips. Being real, honey, just like you wanted. With that... I make sure I'm fully dressed again, and I exit the office, feeling on top of the world. Everything happens for a reason. At least, that's what they all tell you. 
I think this time I might just believe that. Tazen came into my life for a reason, and I'm beginning to think I might just like that reason. Very much. Yawning, I finished cleaning the dishes. Dad has been out since before I got home from work, and I've been trying to stay awake until he gets home. But that's proving to be harder than expected. I'm exhausted. I've been working like a maniac all day, and I just want to crawl into bed. The couch will have to do for now. I walk over and flop down onto it, leaning back and throwing my feet up. My phone beside me rings just after I finish adjusting the pillows beneath my head. I reach over and grab it, seeing it's Tazen calling. I can't wipe the dopey smile off my face as I press the green button and answer it. Hey, you, I say with a smile in my voice. Hey, Angel, he responds, his voice husky. Just ringing to let you know I've taken on two brand new jobs, so you'll get to work with me from the ground up with these ones. Yes, finally he's giving me a chance to work on cars with him, which is what I've wanted since the start. That's awesome. What are they? One is a race car, which we're doing first. The second is a race car of sorts. Of sorts? So it's not a race car? He chuckles. Yeah, it is. Okay, who is it for? He's silent for a minute. Just a local racer. Oh my god, he's lying to me. Is that so? I say. Yeah, that's so. What are you doing? I'm, uh, waiting for my dad to come home. Why? Where is he? He's out with some friends. I lie. Now who's lying? Damn it. I sigh. I don't know where he is. Does he do that often? Only every night these days? No, I lie again. Jesus, woman. At least try and tell the truth. I snort. You should talk. He's quiet a second. Right. Subject change. What else are you doing? I laugh. Nothing. You want me to come fuck you to pass time? My legs clench, and I would really, really like that. But I can't risk Tazen coming here and finding out just how bad my life is behind the scenes. I'd love that, but I'm exhausted. I'm going to go to sleep. I have a boss that seriously likes to ride my ass. You should come and teach him a lesson. He's grinning, I can tell, when he says, That's so. Mm-hmm. He really is a bully. Maybe you need to ask him to ride your ass in the more natural way. I snort a laugh. You're the devil. He laughs too, low and husky. I never denied it, Angel. Go ahead and get some sleep, leaving me hanging and broken because you rejected me. I roll my eyes even though he can't see it. I'd love to be fucked by you again, Tazen. But after that little comment, I think I might just make you wait longer. We'll see just how long you can hold out. Oh, we will. He chuckles. All right, Angel. I'll let you go. Night. Night, boss. I hang up the phone and fall asleep, smiling. It doesn't last long. I'm woken to the sounds of my dad stumbling into the room. I rub my eyes over and over again. And when I manage to focus, I see him trip over the rug that's fraying and torn on the edges. He lands with a thump and I sigh, swinging my legs off the couch. I walk over to him and lean down, scooping the bottle up. He's passed out cold. Only he could trip, fall down, and pass out without even a bother. Too tired to move him, I pull the pillow off the couch and lift his head, placing it underneath. Then I cover him with a blanket, hide the alcohol, put a glass of water beside him, and make my way to bed. I don't even get changed. Instead, I pull the covers back and fall face first, down onto the soft pillows. I don't move until the sun wakes me in the morning. Chapter 18 They want it brown, I say, scrunching up my nose. Tazen snorts and stares up at me from the clipboard he's holding. They want to be different. Who am I to judge when they're paying me so well? Brown is an ugly color. Cars should be green or blue or red. He gives me a lazy half-grin. Business is business, Angel. Now call the painter and book in body work for two weeks. Also get cracking on gathering everything we need for the engine. It's an impressive engine, I admit. 
With over 700 horsepower, it should be. I sigh. One day I'll have that kind of power at my fingertips. Tazen flashes me a grin. You already do. I throw a pen at him. Animal, get going. No favors for the pretty girl. We have work to do. Yes, boss, I grin, turning and disappearing into the garage. I make all the calls I need to. Then I help Toby fix one of the cars that was brought back in with a busted radiator. I pass that on to Kellen to polish, while I fit some sweet black and white tires to an old restored Mustang that's a lot like mine. Tazen didn't build it, but the guy that owns it refuses to take it to anyone else. He loves Tazen's work. Quinn, Rick calls just as I fit the last tire. I stand, wiping the back of my hand across my forehead and look over to him. What? How busy are you? That depends, Rick. What do you need me for? He jerks his head, indicating I need to come closer. I do this without too much fuss. When I reach him, I cross my arms and prompt him to go on. Well, I say when he doesn't speak, I don't have all day. As much as I'd love to chat and bond with you, we both have jobs to do. He gives me a bored expression. I'm so glad you're thrilled with my presence, I mutter. Just waiting for Tazen. Right. I stand next to him, wondering why the hell we're waiting for Tazen. He comes out a moment later with his phone pressed to his ear. He holds up a finger for us to wait, then disappears back inside. Rick steps a few paces forward, and I actually lift my arms and smell underneath them. Nope, I don't smell. He just apparently doesn't like me. Rude. I walk over and stand by the wall, and because of my new position, I can hear Tazen's phone conversation. Give me a month, Murray, and it's yours. We're on it now. Murray, the man who came in and the two had that completely suspicious conversation. He's ringing again, and it doesn't take a genius to figure out one of the cars we're building is for him and whatever the hell he's doing on the side. You tell her to fucking wait, Tazen grunts. I don't have the time for her shit. I tilt my head to the side and listen some more. I couldn't give a fuck what's going on with her car. She's going to have to hang out and wait for me to build a new one. If she didn't flog them so hard, they might actually last. She, she, she. I know they're talking about this mysterious Cheyenne. I want to know who she is. I want to know what she does and why the hell she's going through so many cars. The curiosity is definitely going to kill this cat. Fuck me. I'm busy Saturday night. Find someone else to look at it. Interesting. I don't care if I fucking built it, Murray. I told you I'm done with all that shit now. I'll tell you again. Find someone else. He slams the phone down and I turn casually back and act as though I didn't even know he was so close. He comes around the corner and I pretend not to see him as I sing softly to myself. He walks over and I turn slowly, smiling when I see him. Hello, boss. Rick told me you needed me. His eyes flick around, and I follow them to see Rick is obviously given up waiting. Tazen reaches me and puts a hand on the wall beside my head, leaning down. Need you, baby. You have no fucking idea how much I need you right now. Stay behind half an hour tonight. I'm going to bend you over Trent's old Mustang and fuck you so hard you'll forget your own name. I cross my legs and stare up at him with fuck-me eyes, because the very idea of being pressed over a beautiful car... Being fucked by a beautiful man is just too much to bear. I think I could live with that, I murmur, staring at his lips. Can't do it now, but fuck. If you keep looking at my lips like you want to suck them, I might just change my mind. I think I like my new boss. He grins, showing that gorgeous dimple. Trust me, your new boss likes you. There you are. Fuck. We going to leave now, or are you going to keep eye-fucking her? We both look over to see Rick standing with his hands on his hips. Tazen pushes off the wall and crosses his arms, making his forearms bulge. Yum. Since when do you order me around, Rick? Since you're too busy thinking with your dick. You going to take her to the paint shop, or am I? Paint shop? Paint shop? I squeal happily inside and turn excited eyes to Tazen. I get to see the body getting painted? He grins at me. Not fully, but Chief is getting a makeover, and I thought you'd want to see, considering how excited you were over that car. Chief? 
I breathe. Yeah, Angel. Chief. Oh my god! I launch upwards and fist pump the air. Then I begin doing my happy dance around the garage. Rick sighs. Tazen laughs. I'll take her. Tazen says at Rick's expression. You oversee the remainder of the cars and make sure the guys don't slack off. On it, Rick says, disappearing and looking relieved to be doing so. Right, let's go and watch magic happen. Tazen takes me out for a coffee, before we go and check out Chief. We go to a local coffee shop and order. We sit at a table overlooking a gorgeous green park, with thick trees and people everywhere. I love this place, I say, staring out at it. Yeah, Tazen agrees. I'm thinking I like this town more and more. Do you miss home? I ask. He shrugs. Nah, I like new things. I grin. Am I shiny and new? He smirks. Baby, you're more than shiny and new. I laugh. The waiter puts down our drinks and I take mine, wrapping my hands around it. Tell me a random Tazen fact. He stares up at me from his coffee, his brown eyes sparkling. A random Tazen fact? I grin. Yep. Something funny. Something that made you. Something that created who you are. His eyes flash and then he gives a wolfish grin. There was that time in second grade that a girl asked me to marry her. I burst out laughing. Sounds like a bold one, not waiting around for you to pop the question. Guess I always appreciated a girl with moxie. We got married behind the bike racks. My smile is big. Okay, I can see how that totally created who you are. You discovered early on that you have a way with women. Yeah, he says. I even made her a ring made of grass pieces tied together. I press a hand to my heart. You romantic, you. All right, he says through laughter. Serious now. There was one thing that really made me grow up. I stop, smiling, and stare at him. I was fifteen and was walking home from school one day when I saw this boy on the side of the road. He was on the ground and he was this strange shade of blue. My heart starts pounding. I could tell by the way he was gasping for breath that he was probably having an asthma attack. I had no idea what to do, and he couldn't speak. I knew he needed the little thing that makes them breathe, but I didn't even know what it looked like. So I started giving him mouth to mouth on the sidewalk. He was waving his arms at me, trying to push me off, but I was determined to save his life. A man stopped and went through the boy's bag, pulling out what he needed. He gave it to him, and when the boy could breathe, you know what he said to me? I shake my head, my eyes wide. He said, dude, what the hell were you trying to kiss me for? I smile and my heart warms. He remained my best friend all through high school and college. Wow, where is he now? He's working overseas. He does a lot of goodwill work. That's amazing. He smiles. Yeah, he still teases me about trying to make out with him. I laugh. He sounds awesome. Now it's your turn, he says, studying me. Tell me an awesome thing that changed your life. I think back, and one thing pops into my mind, and I smile. I was just shy of ten, and there was this boy next door. He was in a wheelchair, but he was one of my close friends. I used to play with him all the time. One day I was walking home from school because we lived really close to it. I saw a group of boys around him, teasing him and picking on him. One of them pushed him out of his chair, and he landed on the ground so hard, he busted his knees and elbows. Shit, Tazen says, his eyes hard. That's fucked up. I nod. Anyway, I ran over like the powerful ten-year-old I was. When I reached the boy that pushed him out, I raised my knee and hit him right in the balls. He went down hard, too, and he screamed so loudly people stopped and stared. Then I gave him a mouthful, telling him off so badly he ended up picking up my friend and putting him back in his chair. He disappeared with his tail between his legs. Tazen grins. That's my girl. I blush. Well, I was a tomboy. He smirks. Baby, you still are. Is that a bad thing? His eyes flash with something more than lust. No, it's a fucking amazing thing. Gosh. Now, he says standing. You ready to see this car? I leap to my feet. Absolutely. I thought Chief looked hot before, 
I say with wide eyes. But now? Holy shit. She looks amazing. Red is totally her. Tazen snort laughs and I turn and stare at him as the painter sprays a gorgeous candy apple red over Chief's newly prepped body. Everything gets funny that the car's name is Chief, but we all refer to her as, well, a her? I shake my head. No, it suits her. It's tough, but beautiful. Because Indian chiefs are truly beautiful. I couldn't think of a better name. You're right about that. She's probably the best car I've built in a long time. Tazen Watts. We turn to see NASCAR champion Jimmy Fordola coming in. I want to fangirl, but that would be uncool. So I simply smile like a loser and watch as Tazen steps forward and stretches out his hand. Jimmy, how's it going, brother? Jimmy nods. Fucking great, dude. Chief is getting a makeover and I'm firing through the championship lines. It doesn't get better. How's she handling? Fucking beautiful, Jimmy says, staring at his car. Wouldn't have changed the color if it wasn't for my opponent having the same color. You could say that doesn't sit well with me. Tazen laughs. Yeah, I get you. Jimmy, this is my girl, Quinn. You met her at the unveiling of Chief. Jimmy looks over to me, but my heart is doing beautiful happy dances, because Tazen just called me his girl again. Fangirling be damned. That takes the cake. Quinn! I blink and turn to see two pairs of amused eyes on me. I smile sheepishly and extend my hand. It's awesome to see you again, Jimmy. He takes my hand and shakes it. You too, love. What do you think of Chief's makeover? Orgasm-worthy? Both their brows shoot up and I laugh. Come on, boys. You can't say my words aren't the perfect fit. Tazen nods, and Jimmy throws his head back and laughs loudly. Tazen, dude, I think I like your new girl. I beam. Yeah, she's all right. Did I tell you she's a mechanic? Jimmy turns to me. No shit. That's impressive. Thanks. Well, he says, turning towards Chief. I was just checking in to make sure I didn't end up with a pink car. I'll catch you guys in my next race. Tazen looks to me and my eyes go wide with excitement. Think that's a yeah. He grins, taking Jimmy's hand again. Good to see you. You too. Catch you. Later. When we're done looking over the paint, we head on out, both of us happy, both of us wanting to rip each other's clothes off. This might prove to be an interesting afternoon. Later, boss. I pretend to be dallying around with my clothes as the last of the guys leave the garage that night. I wait until the door closes before turning and laying my eyes on Tazen, who is walking out of the office with serious determination in his eyes. He's wearing an old pair of jeans and no shirt, because he was midway through pretending to get changed. When he reaches me, his arm hooks around my waist, and he spins me around towards the Mustang that's behind me. He reaches down, lifting a sheet off the floor, and places it over the hood, grinning. Don't want to scratch her. I laugh, but that's cut short when he spins me around and takes my arms, pulling them behind my back. Now we play it my way. He murmurs into my ear as he places a hand in the middle of my back and pushes me down onto the hood. My cheek hits the sheet and my excitement levels rise. Do as I say and it'll feel good, baby. Don't. He runs a hand over my ass, and it won't. I shudder. He takes hold of my jeans and reaches around, unbuttoning them and pulling them down over my hips and off my legs. I step out of them and color rises to my cheeks, when I realize I'm bent over with no pants on. Fuck, Tazen growls, and my embarrassment quickly flees, leaving me only with lust. He likes what he sees. I like that. I hear him shuffling around, then he steps forward and places a warm, hard hand on my ass. He squeezes roughly and I whimper, going up on my tiptoes. Stay still, Angel, or I'll make this ass sting. Oh, boy. I stop moving and he runs his hands over my backside, before dipping lower and gliding through my exposed sex. I groan as he rasps. Fucking wet already. You've been waiting for me, haven't you? Yes, I pant. Tell me what you want me to do, Quinn. Make it detailed. Dirty fucker. I love it. I want, I gasp as he dips a finger into my heat and finds my clit, 
He starts massaging it gently. Yes, he prompts. I want, oh God. That's not an answer, baby. Last chance. What do you want? For you t t too. Damn it, he's rubbing so perfectly. Sparks are flying right to my core and I don't want to talk. I just want to feel his fingers all over me. His hand comes down with a slap over my bottom and I cry out. He reaches down and squeezes my ass cheek, where he just slapped it. Now, he growls. What do you want me to do, Quinn? I want... I want you to lick me. Lick you where? He says in a thick voice. His finger is running up and down my ass crack now. God, I wish he would just stop. This is pure torture. R right there, I gasp, arching up as he slips a finger inside my sex. Here, baby. Y y yes You want me to lick your sweet pussy? I cry out and yell, yes, God, yes. He slips his fingers from my depths, and I hear a thud as his knees hit the floor. Then he leans forward and buries his face right into me. I squirm forward, not loving the position, but with a few adjustments, he manages to tilt his head and slide his tongue right in. His fingers and mouth work my clit and sex, and I throw my head back in ecstasy, not just over the erotic position, but how incredibly amazing it feels. Tazen, I yell, uncaring if anyone outside can hear. Fuck, yes! I come so hard my knees buckle. Tazen's arm goes around my belly and he holds me still as he licks every last shudder from me. Then he hangs on to me as he stands. Get your footing, baby. You're about to need it. The sounds of his zipper going down and a condom wrapper being torn alert me to the fact that I almost certainly will need it. His hands find my hips and he curls his body over mine his cock pressing into my ass as he whispers in my ear, You ready for me? Yes, I rasp. How do you feel about hair pulling? My body spasms. God, is it wrong that I would seriously love that? I couldn't imagine anything better than Tazen taking hold of my hair as he drives his cock in and out of my flesh. I think I would love that. He nips my earlobe. I knew there was a good reason you and I hit it off. He pushes off me and slides his hand up my back until he reaches my hair. He tangles his fingers in the back of it. Then he presses his cock to my entrance and pushes in. In one hard thrust, I cry out, and my feet skitter forward as the amazing sensation swarms over me. My fingers curl into the sheet, and Tazen's fingers tighten in my hair. Then he uses it to tip my head back slightly, as he starts fucking me. We'd be quite the picture, with me bent over this beautiful car, Tazen's hands tangled in my hair, his cock driving in and out of me. The very image has my moans going from soft to frantic, as my pussy hugs him, already needing a release. His grunts are low, deep, and damned sexy, as he drives deeper and deeper. I push up on my hands as he tugs my hair harder, my neck is tilted backwards, my back bowing, and God, it feels fucking incredible. The sounds of our skin slapping are echoing through the garage, and I am charging closer and closer to that edge. I'm going to, I gasp. Tazen, I'm going to come. Yes, fuck yes. He fucks me harder and I explode with a scream. My entire body breaks out into a thousand tingles as the most intense pleasure roars through me, finding every nerve and lighting it on fire. I scream Tazen's name over and over again, and he becomes frantic with his movements. Then he lets off a loud bellow and stills inside me, tugging my hair harder and grinding his hips against mine. We've barely come down from our high when the sounds of banging interrupt us. I flinch and all my remaining tremors rush to my stomach and turn into nerves. Who the hell would that be? Tazen turns his head to the side and stares at the garage door. He narrows his eyes and then stiffens when a husky female voice calls out, Tazen Watts, get your fine ass out here. Fuck. Tazen grunts, pulling out of me quickly. My knees wobble as I push off the car and turn to him. Who is that? That is Cheyenne.
you should go. He leans down and lifts my jeans, tossing them at me without a glance. My heart burns as he doesn't even give me a second glance, as he walks towards the door, buttoning up his jeans. Get those clothes on, he orders, not looking at me. I swallow the hurt rising in my chest, as I watch the man who just fucked me turn cold as ice. I... I have to go out that door. He stops as he reaches it and looks over his shoulder at me. Fine. Just tell her you work here. Why should I tell her anything? She's not his girlfriend, is she? I've heard her name thrown around a bit lately, and Murray said something about them dating for three years. Is there something I don't know? My body fills with anxiety as I put on my jeans and stand, pulling them up. I run my fingers through my hair, pull the sheet off the car, and watch in horror as Tazen tucks the condom into his back pocket. Then he reaches for the door. I scurry towards the female bathroom, not wanting to make it seem obvious that we just had some seriously amazing sex. I get in just as I hear him say, What are you doing here, Shay? The door shuts behind me, and I press myself against it, taking a few panting breaths. I press a hand over my heart, steadying my breathing, before walking over to the mirror and splashing some water on my face. I'm midway through doing this, when the door swings open and Cheyenne comes charging in. I stop abruptly and take in the stunning woman in front of me. She's possibly Italian, or maybe Spanish. She has long raven hair that is tacked straight and falling to her waist. Her eyes are as dark as the night, and her skin is coffee and cream. She's tall, she's lean, and she's so fucking beautiful, it hurts to look at her. And he tells me he has no one in here, she says, waving a hand at me. Cheyenne, Tazen barks, taking her arm and hauling her backwards as I stand, confused. Get out of here. She's my employee. Cheyenne throws her head back and laughs. You think I'm stupid? I know how it looks after you've been fucked by Tazen Watts. Because I've been fucked, she stares at him, right in the eye. By Tazen Watts. Oh boy. This is getting awkward fast. Ah, uh, I say. I'm just leaving. Damn right you're leaving, bitch, she hisses. My back straightens. I can handle a nasty woman, but a woman that calls me names when she doesn't even know me? I don't think so. Tazen notices my shift and tugs Cheyenne harder. You know, I say in a sugar-sweet voice, you're right. I did fuck him just now. Last time I checked, he was a free man. Oh, and it's rude to call someone a bitch when you're one yourself. I wave a hand between us. Pot? Meet Kettle. Her eyes flash with a level of crazy I have never experienced before. This woman is wild, and she doesn't do anything to hide it. What did you just say to me? I step forward. You heard me. Enough, Tazen says, stepping between us, and then he looks to me. Quinn, you should probably go. I blink at him, but he's giving me nothing. He's shutting down around her, and I want to know why but right now I feel too hurt to think about it. He wants me to leave. He's just kicking me out. That hurts. Yes, bitch. You should go, Cheyenne yells. Because if you don't go, I'll lose my shit and that won't be pretty. I've been trying to contact you for weeks, Tazen, and this is how I find you? She goes from angry to pouting in about three seconds. Told you, Shay, he mutters. None of your business. You're always my business, she says in a way that freaks me the hell out. Now get rid of your little toy so you can play with a real woman. Oh my God. I open my mouth to retort, but Tazen looks to me. I'll call you later. I blink, and hurt swells in my chest. He's kicking me out, even after she just insulted me. He's just going to let her treat me like a dog. I look to her and she's smiling at me. I give her a cold smile back. You're welcome to him. I don't really go for the quick fuck type anyway. Quick, she scoffs. Tazen Watts isn't quick, honey. He's slow and thorough. Oh, 
I say casually. Well, maybe he was like that with you because you're so... I look her up and down. Boring. It must be hard not being able to excite a man enough that he can... Enough, Tazen barks, cutting me off. I glare at him, and then I step past the two of them. Have fun! You deserve each other. With that, I rush out the front door, horrified, humiliated, hurt, and most of all, angry. How dare he treat me like that as soon as she comes in? Maybe I was wrong about Tazen. Maybe a leopard really never changes its spots. Chapter 19 So it's been worth it, then. I'm out to dinner with Jace, because I haven't seen him for a week. Besides, it's a good distraction. I don't want to think about what happened with Tazen tonight. I don't want to think about Cheyenne and what role she plays in his life. And I certainly don't want to think about how much it fucking hurts. It's been a great experience, I tell him, which is the truth. Working with Tazen has been amazing. And you got to build, he says. Lucky bitch, I laugh. Yeah, I must admit that part is fun. Fun, he scoffs. That shit is epic. I nod and look down at my half-eaten burger. You're not yourself tonight, Quinny. I shrug. It's been a long week, Jace. He reaches over the table and taps his finger on my hand, so I look up at him. His eyes are concerned, and he studies my face. But that's not all it is. I sigh, slumping. No, it's not. He frowns. Tell me it's not, Tazen. I swallow and look away. Ah, Quinny, you didn't. I continue looking away. You did, he declares. Shit. I nod, turning back to him. That about covers it. So, was it one time, or... My cheeks burn. No, it's been a few. Quint, he says seriously. You're playing with fire. Coming from the guy who probably has an entire bed with notches on it. He gives me a look and I snort. I don't work with the women I fuck, and I certainly don't like them. You just made yourself sound like a giant douche. He shrugs. At least I don't pretend to be something I'm not. Okay. So Tazen's my boss and we took things a little too far. But I like him, Jace. A lot. Jesus, woman, he says, tilting his head back and muttering some curses. You can't help who you... like. He stares at me, unamused. Let's change the subject. He crosses his arms. Ack! I mutter, throwing my hands up. Come on, Jace. Let's just talk about something else. I've had a bad enough day as it is. Fine he says, narrowing his eyes, but we will be talking about this. I don't get the chance to answer him, because a text flashes on the screen of my phone. T, where are you? Oh no, he does not get to text me when he's ready to acknowledge that I exist. I reply before thinking. Q, eat a giant dick. Jace snort laughs, and I look up to see he's reading my message. I snatch my phone away and glare at him. Uncool, Jace. It's funny, though, he smirks. I can just imagine that will go down well. Just as he finishes his sentence, my phone rings. Tazen's name flashes on the screen, and I let it go to voicemail before typing out another text. Q. Perhaps one dick isn't enough for you. As it would appear, one vagina certainly isn't. I know. Go and eat two giant dicks. Jace roars with laughter, leaning back in his chair. You're evil, and I love it. I laugh, unable to hold it back. My phone buzzes, and I glance down to see Tazen has texted again. T, where the fuck are you? He doesn't find my texts funny. Q, eating giant dicks. I smirk as I wait for his response. It doesn't come. Someone is angry. Good. I hope he's angry. I hope I piss him off. I hope he feels desperate. Those are all the things he made me feel tonight, when he kicked me out, as though I was no more than a quick fuck. I turn my phone off and look up to Jace. I really have to go. I'll call you during the week and we'll go out. He smirks up at me, nodding at the same time. Yeah, honey. No worries. I wave with a big grin. Later, Jace. Later. I arrive at home and see the lights are out inside. 
That either means Dad is asleep or he went out. I hope he's asleep. I really do. I'm not in the mood for him tonight. I walk up my front steps in the darkness. Where were you? I scream at the sound of the voice coming out of the darkness. I spin around to see a shadow in the corner of my porch. I know it's Tazen, but him standing in the dark at my house is just weird. What the hell? I cry, clutching my chest. Why are you standing in the corner of my porch, in the dark, like a creeper? He grunts. Because you wouldn't have stopped if you saw me waiting. That's disturbing. I walk towards the front door, but he stands in front of it, blocking me off. We need to talk. No, I say, trying to reach around him. We don't. He takes my hand and curls his fingers around it, stopping me from going any further. We do. No, I say, jerking backwards. We don't. You made it very, very clear where I stood tonight. You don't understand the situation, Quinn. If you did, you would know that what I did was the best way to handle it. Oh, I laugh bitterly. You mean tossing me out like a cheap hooker when your girlfriend came in? She isn't my fucking girlfriend, he grunts. Well, I'm sorry when your lady of the night came in and treated me like shit. There's a lot about Cheyenne you don't know. I was doing what was best. You're right, I say, stepping back. I don't know, and I don't want to know. We made a mistake doing this. We should have never taken it past professional. It needs to stop. Tonight proved that. Tazen moves quickly, wrapping his arms around my waist and spinning me so my back is flat against my front door. He leans down close, and even though I can't see him, I can feel his breath tickling my face. We are not ending any fucking thing. Ah, uh, yes, I say, pushing at his chest. We are. No, he grunts, shoving my hands down. We're not. Jesus, Tazen, you treated me like a cheap whore and now you're asking me to just understand and play happy lover? He growls. Don't you growl at me, I warn. I wouldn't if you weren't acting like a fucking brat. Let me open my mouth and speak for long enough for me to tell you about Cheyenne. I reach back and curl my fingers around the door handle. Then I lean into his face. I don't want to know about Cheyenne. Good night, Tazen. I open the door quickly, doing a stealthy side slide in and slamming it shut. I lock it and press my back against it, breathing a sigh of relief. Tazen pounds on it, warning me that if I don't open it, he won't be happy. Join the club, buddy. I know I should probably hear him out, but I'm hurt and not ready yet. I push off the door and walk through the darkness towards my room, passing Dad's as I go. He's in his bed, sound asleep, and snoring. Thank God. I continue on to my room, and when I get in, I go straight to my bed without turning the light on. I kick my shoes off, strip down to my bra and panties, and slide under the covers. My phone buzzes with a text, and I glance down at the screen. T, this isn't over, Angel. I'll see you tomorrow at work. Q, no, you won't. I'm taking a job on the corner. I smirk at my comeback, even though I know it'll piss him off. T, every time you smart mouth me, I'm going to add it up. Then I'm going to fuck you until every single remark is gone from my mind and yours. Q, ooh, I'm scared. T, tomorrow, Quinn. Don't be late. Q, what are you going to do? Fire me? T, tomorrow. He's no fun. Really, he isn't. Tomorrow should prove to be interesting. Chapter 20 I'm under the engine tinkering with it when I hear Tazen's voice fill the garage the next afternoon. He's been missing in action all day. Rick said he has business meetings. But personally, I think those meetings start with an S and end with an E. That woman's sudden appearance has put Tazen off guard and made me wonder why. He's usually so cool, calm, and collected. But since she entered the picture, he's on edge. I want to know their story, but I'm still not ready to forgive him for treating me the way he did, so it'll have to wait for another day. I don't roll out from underneath the car when I hear him ask where I am. I just keep doing my work, knowing I'll head over and no doubt demand something of me. I'm right. 
because a moment later a booted foot hits my slider, and he pulls it out, taking me with it. I glare up at him, waving my spanner around. I could have been doing something important. You weren't. Get up. We need to talk. I kick his foot off and slide back under the car. No thanks. With a grunt, he slides me back out. I don't have time for your games today, Quinn. Oh, I laugh. You don't have time. Well, you should have thought about that before you stuck your dick in me and then treated me like shit. I kick his leg again, but he doesn't pull it back. I'm warning you. He grinds out through clenched teeth. Oh, you are? He glares at me. I'm busy, Tazen. And I'm your fucking boss. No, you don't, I say, my voice getting hard. You don't pull that roll when you want something. Or I'll pull the you-shouldn't-fuck-employees card. We don't want to go down that road, so drop it. I just want to talk to you. Fuck, woman. Do you always have to be so difficult? I think about that, then nod and slide under the car. Yes. Yes, I do. Good day, boss. With a frustrated growl, he mutters, I have shit I have to do tonight, Rick. Don't know if I'll be around in the morning. You open. He's got shit to do. My interest is piqued. No worries, boss, Rick says. If Murray calls, I might be out of service. Tell him I'm on my way. I jerk. Murray. Now I'm very interested. I slide out from underneath the car to see Tazen disappearing out the front door. I get up quickly and turn to Rick. I just remembered I have a doctor's appointment. Shit. He gives me a look that tells me he absolutely does not believe my story, but nods and says, Whatever. We're done for the day. I nod and rush out, coveralls still on, and see Tazen's car pulling out onto the street. I jump in my Mustang and reverse out as quickly as I can. I get onto the road and see Tazen's car four spots ahead. I keep my eye on him as we move through the afternoon traffic. I want to know where he's going tonight. I want to know what Cheyenne and Murray are doing. I'm also a little too proud to ask, because I basically rejected him when he tried to tell me. Besides, this way is more fun. As we move out of town, the traffic clears and the sun begins to set. That's perfect for me, because then Tazen is less likely to recognize my car. We seem to be going further west, closer to the next town. Why would Tazen need to go a town over? He's up to something. I just have no idea what it is. As the sun continues to go down, we go further and further out of town until the traffic thins out, and there are only a few cars on the road. When the sun finally ducks down behind the trees and the night sky spreads itself out, I see we're finally coming to a stop. Tazen pulls off down a long road, and I give it a few minutes before I follow him, not wanting to seem suspicious. As I move down, I see bright lights ahead. We're well off the road now, and as we move closer, I see why. I know exactly what this is. I've watched The Fast and the Furious. Racing. Illegal racing. This kind of racing is dangerous and is highly frowned upon. I pull my car over a fairway down and get out. I start walking up the long road to the masses of people and revving engines. There are a good two hundred people here, all betting illegally. They're making money, and they're probably getting a good amount if they win. I can't see Tazen any longer, but I blend well in the groups of people. You betting tonight, girly? I turn at the voice coming from my left. I see a young, lean man smiling at me. He's got flaming red hair and blue eyes. He holds out the massive pot of cash he's collecting. Uh, betting? I say. Yeah, on the race. Big share if you get it right. I nod and then glance around before taking a risk and saying, Is Cheyenne racing tonight? For a moment, the man stares at me like I've lost my marbles. Oh, God, is she not a racer? I had a feeling she was because she seems involved in all of this from the conversations I've heard between Tazen and Murray. You want to bet on Cheyenne? Okay, I wonder why he's suspicious about that. He doesn't seem to like the idea at all. Is she a shitty racer? Only one way to find out. Sure, I say casually. He shrugs and then says, Fine, your loss. My loss? Why would it be my loss? 
I decide to prod a little further. You don't like her? He snorts. No one fucking likes her. She's a cheat and she's crazy. She smashes up so many cars in fits of rage that I honestly wonder why they continue getting her more. But, he says, leaning in close, when her head is screwed on, the woman is a maniac on the track. She's worth every penny if she wins. The problem with Cheyenne is nobody knows what kind of mood she's in, so they don't want to risk putting money on her. Interesting. Well, I'll take the risk. I hand some cash over, and he hands me a little sheet with information on it, in case Cheyenne does win. I thank him and then push closer to where the loud roaring of engines is coming from. I step out of the crowd and see six cars lined up on an old racing track. Now that I think of it, I remember there being a track out this way that isn't being used anymore. It's perfect for this kind of thing. I study each and every car, and they're all impressive, some more than others. I can tell right away which ones are home jobs and which have been done by a professional like Tazen. My eyes reach a sleek orange car with purple flames licking up the side, and I see Tazen standing beside it, with his hand on the roof, leaning down and talking to whoever is in it. My guess? It's Cheyenne. I see Murray standing beside him and two other men. Tazen leans back, waves his hands around and barks something. The car door swings open, and Cheyenne launches herself out, waving her hands around, too, and getting in his face. He grabs her by the wrists and pins them behind her back, slamming her against the car. Confusion swells in my belly, still unsure about what this girl means to him. He says something else. Then he pulls back and has a set of keys in his hands. He's taking her keys. I watch from my higher spot in the crowd as he pushes her out of the way and gets into the car. Then it's taking off with a growl so low I have to clench my legs together. Tazen hammers the car around the lap with a few other people who are warming up. Knowing it's him inside that car has a certain warmth building between my legs. I'd love nothing more than to see Tazen Watts racing. I take my eyes off the car for a second, to see Cheyenne having a shit fit, getting in Murray's face and throwing a seriously childish tantrum. Maybe that guy was right. Maybe she is crazy. She seems to have dramatic mood swings, and clearly when they're bad, they're bad. My attention is taken from her when Tazen comes to a screeching stop, the car fishtailing to the side before correcting itself. He gets out and goes right around to the hood, lifting it up. Something is wrong with the engine. My palms itch, because I want to go over there and check it out. I know this is all very wrong. But there's an atmosphere here that is truly thrilling. It's dangerous and edgy. It's living on the dark side. I like it, as much as I hate to admit it. What worries me the most, however, is that Tazen could lose everything by being involved in illegal racing. It surprises me that he is allowing that risk to be a part of his life. He's worked so hard for what he's created. It seems like a silly thing to put it all at risk for. I lean closer to the railings and watch as all the drivers prepare their cars. Tazen is busy under the hood, and Cheyenne is leaning against the car still carrying on about something. The final five minutes is called, and Tazen doesn't move from under that hood. When the racers are told to take their places, Tazen steps out and slams it shut. He says something to Cheyenne, and she simply snatches the keys out of his hand and gets into the car. Panic rises in my chest. Is she going to race a car that's not fit for racing? The way Tazen is now yelling at Murray, it would appear she is. I chew on my bottom lip as the girl with her checkered flags walks out onto the track. We can't hear a thing over the roaring of the engines, but when she raises her flags and then drops them, no words need to be said. The cars screech off, smoke pouring from their back ends. Adrenaline and excitement run through my veins, and my skin prickles with delight as I watch the cars hit the corners, sliding perfectly around them and picking up speed on the flats. Beautiful. I rub the little bumps forming on my arms over watching this racing. There's a certain thrill that comes with watching a car in all its glory, rumbling and growling like a wild, uncaged animal. I turn my eyes to Cheyenne's car and see she's actually holding well so far. 
She's hugging the corners and picking up speed on the flats. The crowd is roaring, and the atmosphere has become electric. I close my eyes and take in the deep, barking sounds of the cars, and the way those sounds travel through my body. As they pass us on lap one, the zooming sound of each car speeding past has my body coming alive. I can't help it. I start screaming with the crowd. After that, everything explodes. People become frantic. The cars pick up speed and the roar of the crowd and engines combined is a sound I'll never forget. The cars hit their final lap, and I cross my fingers, watching Cheyenne taking the lead. They're right. She's an amazing driver when her head is screwed on the right way for the night. She's got talent, and she's got skill. Then her car makes a loud explosion, and my head jerks to see her spiraling out of control. My eyes widen, and I find myself jumping over the railing in a frenzy as the car spins and then slams into the railings at the side of the track. The crowd goes silent, and real panic spreads through. It's an illegal race, which means paramedics aren't here. It's a risk, but it's a risk you take when doing something illegal. I run towards the car, which is smoking. Cheyenne climbs out of it, and I sigh in relief. She's fine. This becomes clear when she starts laying into the car, kicking and punching it like a maniac. I reach the car, and her eyes find me and widen. Then she spits, You've got to be fucking kidding me. Then we're surrounded by people. Voices call out, and arms start grabbing. It's chaos. Get the fuck back. That's Tazen. Move or I'll use force. Murray. The people back off, and then Tazen and Murray come into view. Tazen's eyes flick to me and flare with rage and confusion, but most of all with concern. I ignore him and turn to the smoking car. The loud sounds of the other cars can still be heard as they complete their final lap. I rush over to the hood and pop it. Gray smoke bellows out and I start coughing as I wave it away. You let me drive a dud, Cheyenne screeches. I didn't fucking let you drive anything. You took the keys even after I told you not to, Tazen barks. Your cars are meant to be the best. This shouldn't have even happened. I ignore them as I start frantically checking over everything. The color of the smoke indicates an oil leak that has possibly gotten into parts of the car it shouldn't. This can easily cause an engine fire. Cheyenne is stupid for getting in after Tazen told her not to. I manage to clear some of the smoke. I need something to cover my hand so I can check the engine. Left with little choice, I unbuckle my coveralls, hold them at my waist, and remove my tank top from underneath them. I have a bra on, so I put my coveralls back over that. Wolf whistles flow in from the crowd, and then suddenly Tazen is by my side. What the fuck? Don't what the fuck me, I mutter. This car needs my attention. This car is fucked. I look over to him, and he's now leaning down with me. No car is fucked, Tazen. It's just not treated with the respect and love it deserves. What did you say? Cheyenne demands. I stand and turn to face her. Did I stutter, Cheyenne? If you treated these cars like the pieces of beauty they are, you wouldn't have so many problems. Instead, you're a hot-headed, careless bitch, and you take that out on these cars. If you want to be a true racer, learn some respect. Her face swells red, and Murray steps in front of her, glaring at me. What? I say, crossing my arms. It's the damned truth. Protect her from it all you like. Maybe that's the problem. Tazen is by my side, curling his fingers around my arm and warning. God, why are they all protecting this woman, who does nothing but treat them all like trash? It makes me angry, because she's walking all over them, and they're letting her. You better watch yourself, Cheyenne threatens. Or what, I say. You might have these guys by their dicks, Cheyenne, but I owe you fuck all. I say it how it is. If you can't handle it, I wave my arms towards the crowd. I'm sure you know the way out. I'm going to hurt her, Murray, she yells, stepping forward. He turns and curls an arm around her, holding her back. I roll my eyes and lean underneath the hood again. I cover my hand and start checking everything. I'm right. 
There's a major oil leak and it's damaged a lot of parts. Not to mention this engine has been flogged. She's treated it badly. I can tell by the wear and tear. Why Tayson would ever sell this dragon a car is beyond me. It's got a massive oil leak, I say to Tayson straightening. It caused some serious engine damage. It needs a lot of work. It needs to be burned, Cheyenne snaps. I could say the same about you, I mutter. She bares her teeth at me in a feral hiss. Jesus, issues much? It might not need to be burned, Tazen says, but it needs close. It's fucked, Quinn. It's not fucked, I say. It just needs a rebuild. And I don't have time for that shit, Tazen says. Close the hood. I'll get rid of it. No. He turns to me, eyes flaring. What? I said no. You're not getting rid of it. That bitch destroyed a masterpiece, and I'm not going to let it go to waste. Let me have it. If you're just going to dump it, then at least let me have it. He studies me, then shakes his head and shrugs. Fine. Whatever. Good. Oh, and if that new car is for her to destroy, I'm not helping you build it. I'd rather gnaw my own arm off than to see that disrespectful cow get behind another one of your cars. His eyes widen, and Cheyenne lunges forward, but Murray catches her again, pulling her back. Let me teach her a lesson, Murray, she screeches. Stupid bitch! Let me rip her hair out! I open my mouth to reply, but Tazen clamps a hand over it and says in a low voice, Be very careful, Quinn. There's a lot you don't know. Things that can get you hurt. If I could tell you, I would. But you need to trust me, okay? She's bad news. Just simmer down, okay? I know enough to have followed you here, where you're involved in some pretty stupid stuff. If you want to risk your career to please that spoiled brat, you go right ahead. I turn and walk towards the crowd. I look back over my shoulder before I reach it. Oh, have the car delivered for me, will you? Then I blend in with the people. Shit just got real. Stop, Quinn. I keep walking towards my car, parked in the darkness. Tazen is following me. Of course he is. I'm ignoring him. Jesus! Stop, will you? I'm just about at my car when he takes hold of my hand and spins me around. I lose my balance and slam into his chest. It takes me a moment to gather my footing, but when I do... I push him backwards and shoot him a menacing glare. What the fuck did you follow me here for? I cross my arms. I knew you were up to something. I wanted to see what. It's none of your business. Considering I'm your employee, I'd say it is. Oh, and there's the fact that you've fucked me. Fucked plenty of women. Ouch. I flinch and anger bubbles in my chest. You know what? I say. Fuck you. I'm done with you. You've done nothing but play games with me from the start. Me? He snorts. I think you're the fucking game player. Whatever, I say, opening my car door. I'm done. No, you're not. We're going to talk. He takes hold of my arm, but I spin around and shove him backwards. There's nothing to talk about. I'm finished with you and your psycho girlfriend. She isn't my girlfriend. He growls. No, you just make her car after car, so she can trash them. I thought you cared more about your work than that. Listen, Cheyenne is a spoiled brat who you all keep making excuses for. He sighs and runs his hand through his hair. She's not right in the head, Quinn. No shit. I'm being serious, he yells. She's nuts, and it's getting worse. We don't know what's wrong with her but she's having massive episodes where she just loses it. She's taking it out on her cars, on her friends, and what little family she has left. She was my girlfriend for a while, and I noticed it was happening. When she tried to run me over after a fight one night, I knew it was spiraling out of control. I shake my head. I feel sorry for her if that's the case. I do. But them spoiling her is not helping anyone. All it's doing is teaching her to be a bigger bitch. If they wanted to help her, they'd take her to a doctor. And you think that's enough of an excuse for me to forgive you for treating me like shit and then handing her car after car? 
I shut down on you in front of her so she wouldn't explode at you. I was protecting you. And as for the car, racing helps her, but... He trails off. I knew it. There's something else. What? I prompt. Look, she's a loose cannon, and she knows I used to do things I shouldn't have. If she exposes me, I could lose everything. Do you understand me? I can lose every single thing I've worked for. You're not making any sense, I mutter. He sighs. Look, there's a reason I know a lot about this illegal racing. I've done things, Quinn. I've sold cars to people I shouldn't sell cars to. I've taken deals to build illegally, and worse, I've raced illegally. If that comes out, I risk losing it all. Cheyenne knows everything there is to know, and with Murray like a dog on her heels, it isn't easy to flick her off. Ding, ding, ding. There it is. Maybe that's true. But Jesus, Tazen, she is treating your work like shit. Surely there's a way you can get around it without losing your career. Does she have solid evidence? You don't get it, Quinn, and I don't expect you to. But Cheyenne has the means to destroy me if she wants to. I am pulling back. I am refusing builds, but she's bringing in the threats hard and fast. I need the time to figure out how to sort her out without risking my life's work. I get that, and it's your business, Tazen. But standing back and letting her treat you like shit and destroy so much beauty, do you really have to stand back and let her do that? I thought you cared about your builds more than that, but I guess I was wrong. Jesus, he grunts. You're in a mood. No, I say, leaning close. I'm just sick and tired of you. Yet here you are, he spits. Whatever. I jerk my door open, but he slams a hand on it and presses my body against the car. He drops his head to my ear, and I can't help the shiver that runs through me. Maybe, he says. You're jealous. Dream on, I mumble. Most girls wouldn't take such an interest. Yeah, well, most girls are probably okay with being fucked and treated like shit. I am not. I told you. I was protecting you. I can protect myself. Now get off me. He presses his hips into my ass, and I can feel how hard he is. Right against my ass. I close my eyes, wanting to beat him senseless. I can tell you with a hundred percent certainty that I have no interest in Cheyenne. And that's meant to make me feel better? He grinds against me and his hand goes down to cut my breast. Will it make you feel better if I tell you that I'm cutting ties with her? It actually would, but I don't say that. Why would that make me feel better? You've made it clear I'm not enough for you. He stills and then rasps, Baby. Don't you baby me, I breathe back in a breathy tone. You fucked me. And then treated me badly, Tazen. I didn't mean for it to hurt, Angel. Angel. Damn him. Yeah, well, it did. You want my apology? He says. His lips so close to my ear, I shudder. I do, yes. Then I'm sorry, baby. I didn't do it to be a prick. If I don't show anything towards you, she won't react. It was a sticky situation and I was trying to get you out of there so you didn't have to deal with her. You've only seen a small percentage of Cheyenne. Trust me when I say it was for the best. Yeah, well, fuck Cheyenne. If you've been inside me, I want you to be damned proud of that. Fuck, he breathes into my ear. I'm more than proud. You hear me? I shrug. You need me to show you just how fucking much I need you, Quinn? Is that what you need from me? Maybe, I whisper. You want me to come undone for you? Yes, I rasp. He unclasps my coveralls, letting them drop. Then he reaches around me and cups my sex. You're so fucking wet, baby. Tell me what made you so turned on. I swallow. It was you, racing. My girl likes me behind the wheel. I nod as his finger rubs over the silk of my panties. So slick, he rasps. It makes me hard to know how turned on you are. The flash of a car light hits us, and Tazen quickly opens the door and shoves me inside. He climbs in after me, 
just as the line of cars starts retreating from the racing grounds. Tazen doesn't seem worried about them, because he doesn't stop. He slides my seat back and then pulls me onto his lap. How do you want me to fuck you? Just like this, I pant. He grins and reaches down between us, unbuckling his belt. He pulls his cock out. He hands me a condom, and I lean back to roll it over his impressive length. While I'm doing this, he captures the back of my head in his hand and pulls me down, kissing me fiercely. I kiss him back, and the frenzy takes over. I rise up when I have the condom rolled down. I pull my panties aside enough to let him in, and then I sink down. We both moan in delight. My sex stretches around him as I begin rotating my hips in little figure-eight patterns. I reach up, tangling my fingers into his hair and giving him a good, hard tug. He hisses, and his fingers curl into my hips. Fuck me good and hard, Quinn. I plan to, I pant. I rise up and then sink back down onto him. I start slow, using deep, long strokes. Then I'm fucking him harder and shorter, desperate and hungry. My nails scrape along his scalp as my head falls back. He is making animalistic noises and driving his hips up to meet my thrusts. He leans forward, capturing my neck in his mouth and sucking long and hard. I hiss at the pain. Tazen, I groan, as pleasure begins deep in my core and starts venturing out. Yes. He grunts against my skin. Fuck yes. I ride him hard and deep, pressing my breasts into his chest, loving the feeling of his fingers against my flesh. His lips are moving over the skin around my neck and shoulders. I whimper and arch towards him as pleasure reaches its breaking point. Then I let go, coming so hard around him that my nails drive into the flesh of his head. He moans, a mix of pain and pleasure, and then he's coming right along with me. The car doors are steamed up and we're both crying out, no holding back. I like the way we sound together. I like the passion that is ripped out of us when we're together. There's an intensity that so many people don't have. Tazen and I? We have it. It's there, and it's deep. I wonder if he feels it as deeply as I do. I press my forehead against his as I come down from an amazing high. I ease up on his head and run my hands down until they're resting on his shoulders. Fuck, he murmurs. I think it's hot, and it gets fucking hotter. I smile against his flesh. Of course it does. You're with me. He chuckles and then leans back, looking at me. His face is serious, but not angry. I'm sorry, Angel. I was a fucking dick and it wasn't the right thing to do. I should have known better than to think I was protecting you. I wasn't. Cheyenne is fucked up. But you're right. We have to stop playing the game. I just need time to figure out how the hell to do that. It doesn't take away the hurt, but him saying sorry means something to me. So I'm not going to be a bitch about it. It's forgiven. And I trust you, Tazen. I just don't want to see her destroy anything else you've made. He's silent for a minute. His fingers go up and run through my hair, slowly untangling it and trailing it down my back. You really want to keep the car? He asks. I nod, loving how my skin feels as his fingers lightly glide over my hair and back. It's beautiful, I whisper. Something that beautiful should be cherished. It means a lot to me that you feel that way about my cars. So you raced? I whisper. He nods and I meet his gaze. For how long? He shrugs. About two years. I loved it. I was building the cars. Cheyenne and I were together and she introduced me to it. Not only was I getting to build the car, I was driving it. I loved racing. But I love my cars more. I had to pick. And when things went south with Cheyenne, I knew I had to give the racing up. I also knew it was risky for my business. And you were selling them illegally. That's dangerous, Tazen. He's quiet for a minute. Yeah, I know. I made a mistake doing that. Sadly, I've sold a fuckload to illegal races and sketchy people. I sigh. That's such a risk, Tazen. Yeah, that's why I'm trying to pull away from it. It won't be easy, but I am doing my best. I press my cheek to his cheek. 
I understand why you love it. I felt it out there, the adrenaline. It was amazing. It is, he says fondly, but it's also distracting and dangerous. Yeah, I agree. I think I see that. More silence. Did Cheyenne really try and run you over? He bursts out laughing, his body shaking against mine. Yeah, baby. She did. I frown. That's not okay. He laughs harder. No, I think you're right about that. Do you think something is wrong with her? He stops laughing, and his arm tightens around me. I... He hesitates. Yeah, I do. I don't know what, but there's more than just mood swings going on. She refuses to get help. She thinks we're all crazy. Why didn't you just cut ties when you broke it off with her? Do you... He squeezes me tighter. No, I don't love her. I never loved her. I was infatuated with her. She intrigued me, but I was never at that point. Have you ever been at that point? He's silent for a while. Yeah. My heart twists, and I swallow down my jealousy. I hate knowing there was a woman out there that had Tazen's heart. It's a beautiful heart to have, and I'm curious about what kind of girl managed to capture it. Oh? When was that? His silence stretches long. I wonder if it's a story he doesn't want to share. I'm not one to push, but I do hope he tells me. When he opens his mouth and answers, my entire world, which was in so many pieces, starts fusing back together, all with one single word. Now. 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 He has gone past that point. Now. With me. Oh, God. Chapter 21 Tazen and I part ways at the track, both of us slightly shaken by his words. He basically admitted he's falling in love with me, and I said nothing. I just sat there, tucked up in his lap, completely speechless. I think he took it wrong, because he told me quickly that he had to go, kissed me and left. I cursed myself that I didn't say something, but I honestly didn't know what to say. I feel the same. There's no doubt about that, but my life is so complicated. His is exactly where he wants it to be. I'm not sure us being so serious is going to work. He doesn't know about my life. He hasn't met my father. Jesus, we haven't even spent a full night together. Sure, we've been together every day now for months, working and taunting. But that's all there has been. I want more. I want to know who Tazen Watts is. Where is his family? Is he close to them? Where did he grow up? There are so many unanswered questions that need to come before the confession of love. I need to explain that to him. But instead, I sat there speechless, making him feel like I didn't want it. I decide I can't let him go to sleep tonight, thinking he's made a mistake with me. I pull out my phone and text him, just as I arrive at home. Q, what's your address? It's important. I get out of my car and check on Dad, before making my next move. He's watching something on television, his eyes drooping, his bottle of alcohol tipping all over the sofa. Grinding my teeth, I walk in and pick it up. I take it to the kitchen and toss it in the bin. Then I clean up the soggy mess on the couch. Dad is out of it now, so I just push him down and cover him with a blanket. This is getting tiring. My phone buzzes just as I get out of the shower. I get dressed in a pair of soft leggings and a tank. Then I throw a hoodie on and lift my phone. T. Something wrong? Q. No. I need to see you, Taz. Tell me your address. T. Okay, baby. He sends his address a minute later, and I'm relieved he doesn't sound angry. I check on Dad again before heading out to my car and driving over to Tazen's place. When I arrive, I stop in the driveway and look to my left and then to my right. He lives here? My jaw goes slack when I see his car in the drive. Yes, he lives here, in this mansion. I stare up at the three-story cream-colored house. It seems to go on forever. It has a triple garage, a double front door, and a porch that is amazing. It wraps right around the base, and it's at least ten feet wide. I suddenly wonder if I should be here. I live in a cheap two-bedroom shack, and he lives in a mansion. 
I never felt we were opposites until this very moment. My heart sinks. But I get out of the car. I walk up the stone path to the front door. I knock softly on the door, trying to swallow down the pain rising in my chest as I take it all in. A moment later, the front door opens and Tazen is standing there, wearing nothing but a pair of sweats. They sit low on his hips, showing his gorgeous body off. I meet his eyes and they're soft, but weary. He wants to know why I'm here, I can tell. Ah, uh, hey, I say gently. Hey, Angel. I look past him, then say, You live here? He nods, studying the weariness on my face. Yeah. You don't like it? Like it? I've never seen something so incredible in all my life, but I also know it's not something I'll ever have, so it makes me feel uncomfortable. He steps back and pushes the door open. I step in and glance around at the first story of the massive home. The floors are a gray tile, shiny and polished. The furniture ranges from leather creams to blacks, all of it immaculate. The house is utter perfection, and I've never felt so out of my league. Quinn? I jerk and turn to Tazen. Ah, uh, I... He steps forward, kicking the door closed behind him. He reaches out, cupping my cheek in his hand. He studies my face for a long time, then murmurs quietly, What's going on in that head, baby? I close my eyes, turning my head towards his palm. I nuzzle him and breathe him in. Then I look up and meet his eyes. I've never been somewhere so beautiful, Tazen. I've never had... I let my eyes travel around the room, then go back to him. Anything like this in my life. It makes you uneasy. It's not a question, it's a fact. I nod. Come on. I know how to make this more... comfortable. He drops my cheek and takes my hand, leading me towards a dark gray door near the massive kitchen. He opens it and steps in. Then he flicks the light on. A massive, and I mean massive, garage comes into view. It has polished floors, top-of-the-line equipment, and the lights are so bright, it lights up like a showroom floor. I gasp and let go of his hand, stepping in further. Tazen, I breathe, looking around. He has three cars in there. One of them is the beautiful car Cheyenne destroyed on the track tonight. He brought it back for me. The other two are red and white racing cars, but they aren't a classic style. They look like Formula One cars. I wonder if they're private projects, because I haven't seen them before. Those two cars, who are they for? He leads me over to them, and up close, they're even more impressive. They got shipped over yesterday from my other garage. We had them built for the F1 racers. I thought so. Impressive. They're so... Fucking incredible. I nod, squatting down and getting up close to the powerful machines. These were the first I've built in their class. It was a good challenge. Do you build at home? I ask, moving to the impressive engines. Yeah. On the side, I've done a few jobs. Have you ever built one you just want to keep? He shrugs and squats down beside me. Plenty, but I've always parted with it in the end. One day I'll build one I'll keep. I stand and walk over to the car Cheyenne was driving. I stare down at the beauty and hate that she destroyed such a beautiful creation. Don't give her another car, Tazen. He's quiet for a second, and I hope I haven't offended him. I turn and look at him, to him studying me with a passion in his eyes I have seen in my own before. I've wanted to meet someone my entire life that looks at cars the way I do. He steps closer. The way you gave it to Cheyenne tonight. The way you stood up for my work. I realized that someone is you, Quinn. Oh, God. I open my mouth to speak, but he keeps going. You have a fire that matches my own, and a passion that runs deep. You made me understand that I don't have to do anything for anyone else, if it isn't what I want. That's why after you left tonight, I rung Murray and told them I'd no longer be supplying Cheyenne with cars. He did? You did? I whisper. He nods. I put my heart and soul into those cars, and I am tired of seeing them go to waste. But she could destroy you with what she knows. He sighs, and there's definite fear in his eyes. I know that. It's why I told Murray I would pay him and her to shut her up. You did? I gasp. He nods. And will he? 
he shrugs. He said it seemed like a fair deal, but I get a strong feeling he is at his wit's end with her and is considering taking the money and cutting all ties. I don't know if he will do that, but if he does, I still have Cheyenne on my back, and I don't know how to flick her off. The only thing I can hope is that if Murray has had enough, that he might consider helping me. Tazen, I say, twisting my hands together nervously. This is risky, he nods. Oh, fuck yeah. It's far from over, too. Cheyenne won't be happy. But I have a feeling Murray might try to keep her from spilling. After all, I know a shitload about him, and he knows it. Still, Cheyenne is uncontrollable. She could bring this down for everyone. And I don't imagine Cheyenne is the type to let up easily. No, he says distractedly. Listen, Quinn, can you just tell me what you came here to say? I blink at him and then nod weakly. Then I take a deep breath. You said something to me tonight that threw me. It threw me not because I don't feel it back. Because Tazen, I meet his eyes. I do. It was just that we've had such a hectic time from start to now, and I honestly don't feel like we know each other. Then tonight, I came here and I realize how different our lives are. That doesn't matter, Angel, he says, stepping closer. These things are just money. They're not me. But you haven't seen what I live like, Tazen. We're from different sides of the tracks. He studies me. We might not be as different as you think. I narrow my eyes and study him. You have money, and you live in a place like this. I couldn't even keep my garage open, and I can tell you right now my entire house is as big as this garage. Quinn, he says, reaching out and hooking me around the waist. I have all of this, but I haven't had it my entire life. Maybe, but I worry we're just too different. And yet, he says, running his finger down my cheek. We're so very similar. He's right about that, too. I can't deny it. Tazen, I whisper. Baby, give me a chance. Do you think it honestly matters to me if you have nothing? No, I don't honestly think that. No. Does it matter to you that I do? I'm not sure. Then it's something we'll explore. But right now I just want you to give me a chance. I've had a crazy life. I've had a lot of girls. I've had a successful career, but fuck, Angel. I've never had you. Damn it. I bite my bottom lip and look up at him. You want to know something about me? Then all you have to do is ask. Really? I whisper. Fuck yeah. I give him a small smile. Then can I ask? He grins. Yeah, come on. We'll get a drink and then we're getting in the tub. You can ask as many questions as you want. My body roars to life and I shudder. In the tub with Tazen? Yes, please. I let him lead me inside again, where he grabs a couple of beers. Then he leads me up the stairs. The second story has a mass of bedrooms. At least, I think that's what is behind the closed doors. We go right to the end of the polished hall and through a big wooden door. I stop dead when I see the size of Tazen's bedroom. Oh, Jesus. It's bigger than my house and probably the neighbor's house. Sitting in the middle of the room is a massive bed that couldn't even be classed as a king size because it's way bigger. To the left is a plush lounge suite, and to the right are big floor-to-ceiling windows. There's a massive open bathroom that steps down from the main floor. It has a shower, a double vanity, and a huge spa bath. This is your room? I breathe. Yeah. He takes me down the two steps to the open bathroom, he lets me go to start the bath. He pours something that smells amazing into it, and then turns to me. He steps forward, his eyes suddenly lusty, and he takes hold of my hoodie. He raises it up, and I let my arms up so he can slip it over my head. Then he takes my tank and does the same. I'm standing in a bra and leggings now, and he steps back, and his eyes travel slowly over my body. Fuck, you're beautiful. Those words go right to my heart, and it swells. So are you, I whisper. His eyes flash to mine, and their chocolate-brown depths seem darker tonight. I think lust does that to them. He reaches around me, pressing his lips to mine as he unclips my bra. I whimper when he steps back and my breasts fall free. He takes one in his hand, 
tossing my bra with the other. He cups it and then leans down, capturing my nipple in his mouth. I gasp and clutch his biceps. He sucks each of them, then he removes his mouth and kneels down before me. He takes my leggings and slides them down my hips, making sure my panties go with them. When I'm naked before him, he cups my sex. Then he slides his hand between my legs and rasps, spread. I do as he asks, spreading my legs a little. He curls his hand around my calf, and then he lifts my foot and places it on his shoulder. My cheeks burn at the position he's put me in, and I'm about to protest when he leans forward and puts his mouth between my legs. All my thoughts fly out the door as sensation quickly takes over once more. I gasp and reach backwards to hold on to the vanity as he devours my pussy. Tazen, I gasp. Yes. He sucks and licks, doing nothing but those two things, until I'm wound up so tight I'm ready to explode. My knee is shaking and struggling to hold my body weight with the other foot off the floor. My fingers are curling into the counter, and my head is tilted back. Tazen puts his teeth over my clit and rolls it and I explode. A scream is ripped from my throat as the most amazing orgasm takes over my body. Before I've even come down from my high, Tazen has my foot back on the ground and is standing, jerking his pants down. Pill, Quinn, he grinds out. You want it? Y yes I gasp as he spins me around and presses my body over the vanity. You clean? Y y y y yes Are you? Yeah, got tested. You want to see? I believe him. No. Thank fuck, cause baby, I'm going in bear. He puts his hand to the middle of my back and pushes me gently forward. I can see us both in the mirror. My cheeks are flushed and my dark hair is falling around my face. My breasts are full and my nipples are hard pebbles. Tazen's eyes are nearly black with lust. We look beautiful together. Tazen reaches between us and takes his cock. Then he pushes inside me. I gasp. He grunts. And then he starts fucking me. The cold porcelain is pressed against my belly. But I hardly notice as sensations begin sparking to life inside me again. My clit is swollen from Tazen's last encounter with it. So everything is super sensitive. Look at us in the mirror. Tazen orders. I lift my head and look into the mirror. I like what I see. Tazen's jaw is hard and his body is wound up tight. His eyes are flashing with pleasure. My eyes look exactly the same, only my cheeks are now a perfect pink and my lips are parted in pleasure. Tazen reaches forward and takes a handful of my hair, tilting my head back slightly. Seeing him do that in the mirror has my pussy clenching around him. Fuck you feel good, bear. He grinds out. So sweet, so warm, so fucking tight. Yes, I pant. Tell me how hard you want it, Angel. Tell me how hard you want me to fuck you. Hard, honey, I cry out. Hard. He picks up the pace, fucking me hard and deep. I close my eyes and let my head fall back, loving the tingle in my scalp as he pulls my hair a little harder. I come before him because I'm so wound up already. I yell his name as my orgasm explodes through me. Tazen hisses my name, and then I watch in the mirror as he throws his head back, and pleasure overtakes him, too. His thrusts slow down, and I watch as he meets my eyes in the mirror again. Fuck, he breathes. Yeah, I agree. He pulls out of me gently and then helps me stand straight. You okay? I nod. He turns us both towards the spa bath that is now full. He turns the water off and then holds my hand as I step in. It's the perfect temperature. Not too hot, but not too cool, either. I sink in with a moan, loving how it feels to have the warm water surrounding me. My muscles thank me for it as I instantly relax. Tazen climbs in beside me and then scoots over so he's sitting across from me. Good, he asks. The fucking or the bath? He chuckles. Both. I grin. Then yes, good. He leans back, his chest muscles bunching as the water slides over them. He holds his breath and then ducks under the water. When he comes back up, his hair is hanging over his face and he looks so damned good. I do the same and when I come up, 
He's giving me the same expression. Maybe we are more alike than I think. Time to find out. So, do I get to ask you anything I want? He shrugs. Nothing to hide, Angel. Okay. Where did you grow up? L.A. I snort. Well, don't get into great depth, will you? He grins. Is there much more depth to get into? Did you want the color of my house, street name, and dog's name? I roll my eyes at him. Smart ass. You took us there, baby. I laugh. Fine. What about your family? Do you have siblings? My mom is awesome. She's still kicking and is married to an awesome dude that isn't my dad. They live in L.A. My dad is a piece of shit, and that's all you want to know about him. I have a sister, Retro, and a brother, Kellyan. I blink. Your sister's name is Retro? He snorts. Retina. But we call her Retro. It suits her. And your brother is Kellyan? He nods. Yep. And you're Tazen? He laughs. Yeah, baby. I shake my head. Your mom wanted to be different then? He nods with a half grin. Yeah, you could say that. So how old are Retro and Kellyan? Retro is 31 and Kel is 25. So you're the middle child. He scrunches his face up. Yep. Poor baby. I tease. What about you? What's your family like? No, we're still discussing him. No, you don't. We're not done talking about you. All right, he says, his eyes sparkling with amusement. Did you study? Nope. Cars was it for me. I nod. Fair enough. What about girlfriends aside from Cheyenne? Have you had any long term? He nods. Two. One when I was sixteen. I was with her for three years. Then I was with another for a year when I was around twenty-one. Then there was Cheyenne. So how come none of them worked out? He doesn't seem offended by my questions and is answering them quite openly, which I like. The first was because I was far too young. The second, she wanted to go to another state for school, and I had just started my building, so it wasn't going to work. Cheyenne, you know how that ended. And all the other girls? He reaches up and runs a hand through his hair, darting his eyes to the left. He is uncomfortable with this question. Well, I prompt. After I got successful and started going to races and building cars for racing drivers, I got attention. When the TV show was being aired, I got even more. Finding women wasn't hard, and for a while it was nice just having the fun and no commitment. I swallow but nod, and there were heaps then. I didn't count. Right. We both fall silent, but it's me that breaks it. I can't be angry at him for his women. It's not like I didn't know Tazen was a womanizer before he met me. Do you ever want to get married? He nods. Yep. Wow, that surprises me. He certainly doesn't seem like the type to want those things. You do? I say with wide eyes. I'm not a cold-hearted bastard, Angel. I've had women. But after a while, I realized just how fucking boring it was only having sex with them. I am all for marrying the right one and building something real. Am I the right one? God, I'd love to be. And kids? He grins. Fuck yeah. My heart falls a little more in love with him. Well, Tazen Watts, you're proving to be a very interesting topic to discuss. His grin gets bigger. Okay, let's go for the hard stuff. What's your favorite food? He laughs and leans forward, grabbing me and sliding me across the tub so I'm between his legs. He turns me around and presses my back to his chest. Then he wraps his arms around me. Definitely pizza. Ugh. He pokes my belly button. You don't like pizza? Nope. I don't understand it. You don't understand it? Yep, I say. It's a whole heap of ingredients, which separately would be amazing, but together just seems dumb. It tastes good like that, he points out. No, it doesn't. Strange woman, he mumbles. I laugh. I never denied it. He pinches my breast and I wiggle. Do I get questions now? Yep, I prepare myself for his questions, because I don't want to react badly to any of them, especially when it comes to my dad or the garage. Tell me about your family. I knew that one would be first, 
I decide to keep it as simple as possible. I'm not ready for him to know the world I live in just yet. I'm just not prepared to show him what's deep inside my soul. Because when I do that, it'll be when I know he's the one I'll keep forever. My dad and mom were childhood sweethearts. They got married, bought the garage, and had me. It was awesome until mom got cancer. Oh, baby, I'm sorry. I swallow and keep going. She died and it was just dad and I after that. It was hard on the both of us, but it was so much worse for him. She was the only thing he breathed for. But we, uh, got through it. It sucks you had to lose someone so special to you. Yeah, I say softly. And she was special. You want to tell me about her? She was the best kind of mom. The one who bakes and sings and acts crazy. She literally was sunshine. So happy and fun. I don't remember a lot, but I remember that. She was the reason the garage was named Pixie Wheels. She used to call me Pixie when I was a kid, because I was so little. Tazen is quiet for a second. God, I'm sorry we took that down. It doesn't matter, I assure him. I have it now, so that's all that matters. What about your dad? He obviously kept the garage. Yeah, he did, but he lost interest in it. I spent most of my teenage years working there. I loved it, though, so I didn't mind. Still, Tazen says carefully, that must have been hard. It was. So no siblings? I shake my head and he wraps an arm around my belly, squeezing me softly. That sucks. Yeah, I always wanted siblings. Understandable. Aside from that, there really isn't much to know. I've been here my whole life— I had only one boyfriend in my teen years, and the only friends I have are the guys that worked with me. Cars are all I've lived and breathed, and I want it to stay that way. One boyfriend? I grin, knowing he'd pick that out of what I said. Just one. Lucky guy, I laugh, coming from the one sitting behind me. I never said I wasn't lucky. I smile and lean back, putting my head on his shoulder. Are we really giving this a shot? I ask. Fuck yeah, we are. I stay at Tazen's that night, and we make love twice more before falling asleep. We also talk for hours. His bed is like heaven, and it's the nicest thing I've ever laid down on. I fall into the soft mattress and plush pillows and drop off in minutes. I don't move all night. I'm woken the next day with Tazen's body over mine, he makes love to me for a long, glorious hour, and then we shower. Now I'm sitting in his kitchen, coffee in hand, watching him cook breakfast. While I wait, I glance down at my phone. I have a few missed calls from Lenny, so I quickly give him a call back. Morning, sweetheart, he answers. Hey, Lenny. Tazen turns and then smiles when he sees I'm on the phone. Listen, I just went past your place. You're not there. No, I'm out. Dad should be there, though. He didn't answer. I knocked a few times. I glance over to the clock on the wall. It's well past 10 a.m. Dad never sleeps that long, even after a big night. Maybe he was in the shower? I hope so, but worry is clenching inside my belly. I'll give him a call, see if I can find out. Okay, love. I'll talk to you later. Later. I hang up from Lenny and then find Dad's number. I dial it. No answer. I try the home line. No answer. Panic swells in my chest and something just doesn't feel right. I turn to Tazen. Hey, I can't get hold of my dad. Do you mind if I just run home and check on him? He turns and studies me. He can obviously see the panic in my face, because he stops what he's doing, turns the heat off, and then says, I'll throw on a shirt and come with you. Shit. Tazen is probably about to see my dad at his worst. I wonder if I should warn him. But forget about that when Tazen walks out and waves his keys. Let's go. We rush out and get into his car. It takes us a couple of minutes to get to my place, and we both jump out. Tazen knows where I live, but he's never experienced the ugliness of the inside. I don't have time to worry about trying to find a way to stall him, because my dad could be in trouble. I fling the front door open, and the stench of vomit hits me hard. Shit. I start running down the halls, and there's patches of it, leading to the bathroom. I kick the bathroom door open and see Dad on the floor, on his back, passed out. 
It's not seeing him passed out that makes my heart stop. It's the odd blue color. I drop to my knees and frantically press my hand near his nose. He isn't breathing. Oh, God, he isn't breathing. Tazin? I cry out. He's already behind me. Shit. He's not breathing. What? What do I do? Call an ambulance. Now. I push back tears running down my cheeks as I dial 911. Tazen flips my dad to his side and then shoves his fingers into his mouth. I cry out, but he ignores me. He just keeps pressing his fingers inside my dad's mouth. 911, what's your emergency? My dad, I squeak. He's not breathing. He's had too much to drink, but he's not breathing. Stay calm, ma'am. I'll send someone right over. What is your address? I give it to her, and she assures me that someone is on their way. I drop the phone and turn back to Tazen, just in time to see my father vomit across the floor. I stare at Tazen, who's kneeling over my dad, finishing a chest compression. I drop to my knees on the floor, pain ripping through my heart, as dad starts wheezing and coughing. Tazen turns him on his side, tilting his head the right way so he can't choke. Dad coughs and splutters, and Tazen holds him firmly, even when he starts squirming and crying out. Stay still. The ambulance is coming, Tazen orders firmly. Five minutes later, the paramedics arrive and lift my dad onto a stretcher. One of them is asking me questions, but I'm numb. Tazen answers them for me, and then they inform him which hospital they'll be taking him to. Tazen nods, and we both watch them carry him off. When they're gone, I start rushing to my room to get some things. I need to get to the hospital. Your dad is an alcoholic. It's not a question, but it still slams into my heart like a knife being driven in. You didn't tell me. Again, not a question. I have to get to the hospital, I say frantically. Quinn, baby, look at me. I don't. I throw open my drawers and start pulling out something clean to wear. Quinn! He takes my hand and I spin around, tears pouring down my cheeks. Tazen's face is soft as he steps forward and takes me into his arms. It's all right. He's going to be fine. We got here in time, and he's going to be okay. It's all my fault, I cry. I shouldn't have gone away for a night. I left him. It's my fault. Tazen flinches. Quinn, he's your parent. You're not his. I'm all he has, I yell, pushing out of his arms. Quinn. Take me to the hospital, Tazen, I say, my voice numb. Take me, please, he sighs. Yeah, come on. I walk out to his car, not even noticing the distance to get to it. I left him alone. I left him, and he could have died. This is all my fault. Chapter 22 we're at the hospital for the entire day as they pump Dad's stomach. Then Tazen takes us home. He wants to stay, but I just need time to process. I tell him I'll call him and he doesn't argue. He just kisses me softly and tells me he'll call. This isn't his fault, but I can't focus on anything else right now. I get Dad into bed, then I find a spot on the lounge and just sit, staring at nothing, too scared to sleep in case he gets sick again. I'm tired of living this life, tired of being unable to feel okay or free because of my father and his alcoholic ways. It's hurting me and it's hurting him. I'm drowning in guilt, but I'm afraid to leave him to his own devices because he'll end up dead. A part of me has had enough. I just want to get up and leave. I don't want to be his caretaker for the rest of my life. I know he needs help, but I don't know how to get him to accept help. For years, I've begged and pleaded with him about it, but it's done no good. He has to choose sobriety for himself, and until he does, all my arguments mean nothing to him. It seems like there's just no way out. I close my eyes and start sinking into an exhausted sleep, when I hear the crashing sounds coming from my father's room. I push to my feet quickly and rush towards it, only to see him throwing things around. He stops for a minute and clutches his head, then he starts destroying his room again. Dad! I yell, rushing in. What are you doing? He spins to me and his eyes are bloodshot. My head is pounding. Where's my alcohol, Quinn? Dad, you nearly died today. He glares at me. I was fine. 
Where's my alcohol? My heart falls to pieces. I got rid of it. You have to stop this. That's not up to you to decide, he roars so loudly I flinch. I take a weary step back as he spins and starts kicking things over again. He drops to his knees near his bedside table and jerks the drawer out. Then he reaches in and pulls out a bottle of whiskey that had been hidden there. Dad, I say, coming closer. You need to stop. He unscrews it with shaky, desperate hands. Then he tips his head back and starts swallowing it. My heart cracks wide open now, and pain lashes my body. Dad! I cry, rushing towards him. He spins on me, glaring. Don't you tell me what to do, Quinn. This is my house. Understand? No, I yell. This is our house. What you're doing is dangerous, and you're going to kill yourself. Stop telling me what to fucking do, he roars. Fear fills my veins. I've never seen him like this before. Never. He's scaring me. I take a hesitant step forward. Dad, please give me the bottle. Will you just get the fuck out? He barks. Dad, you have to stop this. Now. His eyes point daggers in my direction. Who died and made you my fucking mother? That hurts. My mom died and made me his fucking mother, because he refuses to take care of himself. Mom died, I whisper, and instead of taking care of me the way you should, you turn to the bottle. I'm tired of it, Dad. I don't want to have to do this. Then don't, he barks, standing straighter and glaring at me. Move out, Quinn. I don't fucking care if you're not here. Ouch. That hurts like hell. It hurts so bad a pained noise is ripped from my throat. You'd die without me here, I whisper, because my voice is too shaky to work. He snorts and laughs loudly. You're so sure of that? Then get out! I shake my head, blinking back my tears. We'll talk about this when you're not so angry. Give me the bottle and get some sleep. Don't tell me what to do, he roars again. He's never yelled at me like this before. Dad, I try again. You need to put that bottle down and go to bed. Fuck you, Quinn. Dad, I say, stepping forward. You're done for the night. He spins and snarls at me. No, I'm not. You are. Before I know what's happening, he's raising his arm and roaring. No, I'm fucking not. Get off my back. Then he launches the bottle across the room at me. I don't have time to duck and it hits me in the temple. I cry out in pain and stumble backwards as it smashes all over the floor. Whiskey sprays up my body and blood trickles down my head. I stumble a few steps and then a burning pain shoots through my foot and I scream. I glance down to see blood gushing out onto the carpet. I stepped on the bottle. I manage to pull myself away from the glass, but my heart is tearing into a thousand tiny pieces. I look up with tears running down my face at my father, who is still panting with rage. He has no remorse over what he's done. He's so far gone, he doesn't even realize he's hurt me. He doesn't care. Something explodes in my chest, a pain I've not felt before in my life. Pure devastation. I know I have to get out of there, and I have to do it now. I hop out of the room towards the front door, trying to keep it together. Dad growls something at me, but I don't hear what it is. I have to go. I can't be near him. He frightened me. Pain, fear, and hurt mix in my chest, and I can feel the panic rising. I manage to get myself into my car and drive into the next street over. Before I pull over and let it all go, I cry. I cry so hard my body shakes, and silent sobs rip from my throat because I'm too far gone for them to have a sound. My dad tried to hurt me. He was violent. I've never been so afraid in my life, never felt such hurt. I clutch the steering wheel and let it all out. It pours from me in waves, exploding from my body like an eruption of agony. When I manage to pull back the tears enough to think, I realize... I don't really have anywhere to go. If I show up like this to Lenny or Oscar, they will lose it. Jace won't know how to deal with me like this. 
That leaves only one more person I trust, Tazen. I pull out my phone and call him a few times, but he doesn't answer. Not in the right mental state to push, I decide to go somewhere I feel safe. The garage. I put my car into drive, swipe my tears, and drive slowly the entire way over there. It's dark and quiet when I get in, so I unlock the door and slip inside. There's nowhere for me to sleep, but there's a shower and a toilet, and I can find some old towels to lie on until I can get hold of someone. I can't go home, even though I'm worried about what Dad will do if I'm not there. How sad is that? I'm worried about him when he threw a damned bottle at my head. I decide to send Lenny a text, coming up with some lie about why I can't go home. He'll arrive and probably just think Dad's drunk again and help him to bed. He doesn't know Dad went to the hospital today. I don't want him to know either. He doesn't deserve that extra stress. Q. Hey, Len. I have to work extra late tonight. So is there any chance you can check on Dad, make sure he's home and in bed? He replies a minute later. L. Sure, sweetheart. I breathe a sigh of relief and then let myself into the office. I'm trying not to think of what happened because every time I do, it hurts like hell. I just need to focus and figure out what I'm going to do next. First, I need to check my foot and make sure it's not stitches worthy. I hop over to the cabinets and I pull out the first aid kit. Then I flick on a light. I turn my foot and scrunch my nose up. It's not deep, thank God, but it's long, running nearly half the length of my foot. I get to work putting strips on it to hold the skin together, and then I patch it up. Once I'm done with that... I walk into the bathroom and look at my face. My temple is swelling and the beginning of a bruise is for me. How the hell will I explain that one away? I shower with my foot poking out, and then I find one of Tazen's work shirts on the shelves. I pull it on and then make a bed on the floor with towels, a sheet, and my purse as a pillow. It's horrible and uncomfortable, but it's safe. I lie down and try Tazen once more, but he still doesn't answer. I'll stay here until he does. As I wind down, my thoughts start invading. My throat gets tight, and more tears spring to my eyes as I relive what went down. My dad tried to hurt me. My dad, who was once my hero. Another sob escapes, and I curl into a ball. I stay that way until I cry myself to sleep. Chapter 23 My phone rings, jerking me out of a restless sleep. I reach out groggily and see it's Tazen. My heart lurches as I quickly answer it, putting it to my ear. I need him right now. I need him so badly it hurts. I can't think of anywhere else I'd rather be. It seems stupid that up until this point, I've not spent time with him in his home. If I did, I would have gone straight to him. I'm keeping it together well, right up until I hear his low, husky voice. Baby, he murmurs, how are you doing? I lose it. Tazen, I croak. Quinn, he says, his voice alert now. What's wrong? I, Tazen, I'm hurt. I need you, I, I need you. Are you in pain? Shit, Quinn, where are you? I'm, I swallow, at the garage. You tried to call me. Fuck, Angel. I didn't hear it. It's okay, I whisper. Just come, please. I'm coming. Sit tight. I hang up and push myself into a sitting position. I tuck my legs up to my chest and rest my chin on my knees as I wait. I can't stop the thoughts invading my mind as I think about everything that's happened. I don't know if I can go back and see Dad. I don't know if I can live with him anymore. What's going to happen next time? He could hurt me severely, or worse, kill me. If that bottle had hit the wrong spot, God. My chest burns at the memory of him throwing it at me, and even though I have cried for hours, I have to fight back more tears now. I don't know what to do, and I don't know who to turn to. As promised, Tazen is running through the garage door only ten minutes later. I push to my feet and walk over, stopping in front of him. As soon as he sees me, Rage washes through his face, and he hisses. Who did that to you? My bottom lip trembles and his face softens. He steps in closer, wraps his arms around me, and kicks the door closed behind him. 
He lifts me into his arms and walks into the office, sitting down on a chair with me in his lap. Talk to me. <laughs> there were problems with Dad last night. His entire body turns to stone. Tell me, he rasps. Fucking tell me he did not do that to your face. I press my cheek against his chest and say nothing. Angel, he says through gritted teeth, did your father do that to you? He was angry about having no alcohol. He had a headache and... Shit, he growls, cutting me off. Fucking shit. He... he's never... he's never done something like that before. You need to tell me what he did. I curl my fingers into his shirt and close my eyes, taking a deep breath. When we came home, he woke up and demanded alcohol. I thought I'd thrown it all away, but he had some whiskey stashed in his room. I tried to stop him, and he said some... My voice hitches. Horrible things. Then he just lifted his bottle and threw it at my head. It smashed all over the floor, and I stepped on it. What? Tazen whispers, his voice so hoarse it's no longer working. It's fine, I'm... Show me. He moves me without warning and twists, putting me down onto the desk. He kneels down, taking my foot. I don't bother protesting as he unwraps it and stares down at the wound. His jaw ticks and he stares blankly at it for so long. I begin to panic. His thumb gently runs over the ugly slice, and then he wraps it back up before standing abruptly. I'll be back soon. Tazen! I cry, panic rising in my chest. He stares at me and there's fire in his brown eyes. I said, he grinds out, I'll be back soon. Please, I beg, don't hurt him, he's sick. He hurt his child. He threw a bottle at her head. Then she sliced her foot open on its broken pieces. He might be sick, but he will not get away with violence. Tazen, I cry, standing on wobbly legs. He's my dad. He's all I have. Don't hurt him. He stares me right in the eyes, but his expression is softened slightly. I won't hurt him, Quinn. I would never do that to you. But this has to end. I open my mouth to protest, but he steps forward, curling his fingers around the back of my head. He brings me close, so our foreheads are touching. Trust me, Angel. I nod and close my eyes. He pulls back and kisses my forehead, before disappearing out the door. I hobble back to the chair and sit down, rubbing my stomach to break down the nerves swelling there. I wait like that for what seems like hours. Maybe it is. My legs go numb and I'm sure I only breathe enough air to keep me conscious, because the rest of the time I hold my breath. I hear the sound of the main garage door opening. I stand up and rush as quickly as I can over to it. My eyes widen when I see Tazen and my father standing in the entrance. Tazen has his hand on my father's shoulder, and he shoves him forward, not roughly, but giving a clear message that he isn't going to take any shit. Quinny, Dad whispers, his bottom lip trembling as his eyes scan over my face. Are you seeing this, Rob? Tazen says in a hard tone. Do you see her face? Tazen, I say. His eyes dart to mine. Quinn. You're going to stop babying him right now and let him see what he's become. If you love him, trust me, this is for the best. He's right. Somewhere down deep inside I know this. I have to stop feeling sorry for my dad. I have to stop feeling guilty for trying to move on with my life. It's time I step up and make my dad get the help he needs, no matter what it takes. I'm so sorry, Quinn. Dad rasps. I wasn't thinking. My head, it hurt so badly. I just needed a drink to take the edge off. I stare at him, and usually I'd forgive him, but I can't until he takes responsibility for this. If I don't let him, he'll never change. You hurt me, Dad, and you scared me. His lip trembles again, but I keep it together. I didn't mean. That doesn't matter, I rasp, fighting back emotion. It doesn't matter if you didn't mean to. You did. You did, and you need to admit how bad your alcoholism is and change. I can't be your babysitter anymore. I can't be your parent, and I can't keep picking up the pieces. If you love me, if you're truly ashamed of what you did, then you'll go and get help. 
His head drops, and a tear runs down his cheek and drips off his nose. I never. I'm so sorry. I know you are, I say because it's the truth. But if you want to prove to me you're willing to learn from this and change, then get the help you need. He looks up at me, then to Tazen. This boy, he begins. He knows a place that I can go, get the help I need. I look to Tazen. You do? He nods. My dad was in there for a while. Tazen's dad was an alcoholic. Our eyes meet and something sparks between us. It's understanding. Did it help? I ask hopefully. Tazen shakes his head. My uncle busted him out before they got the chance to make it work. But Rob is going to stay in there. Aren't you, Rob? It's one of the best facilities in the country. My dad nods. I've given them a call. He is going straight down there. I've got him in a six-month program. I don't... How much does that cost? Tazen's eyes soften. You don't need to worry about that. Tazen. You don't. He leans in closer. Need to worry about that. I swallow and nod weakly, so humbled by his help. He reaches out, capturing my hand. Get your purse, baby. He needs you right about now. I do as he asks and get my purse. Then I take his hand, and we take my dad to get the help he needs. Finally. Tazen and I take dad to the rehab center. I'm still uncomfortable about the entire situation. I'm still upset and confused over what happened between dad and me. But I'm also uncomfortable with the fact that Tazen is paying for it. I mean, sure, we've got something solid between us. But it is such a massive expense. I would have found a way, though, even if he didn't. After what happened, I know this is the only place Dad can be now. I have a pain etched deep down in my heart at the thought of him being alone. But I no longer have a deep sense of guilt. He needs this place, and I need to figure out how to live my own life. I won't sell his shack. I'll clean it up with the money from the sale of the garage, so when he gets out he has a place to live. Me? I'm finding my own place. It's time for me to move on. Dad tells Tazen and me that he doesn't want us to take him inside, that he would rather do it alone. That hurts me, but I don't argue. I don't have it in me to argue. When he hugs me, I'm stiff as a board, but I manage to pat his back lamely. I don't cry. In fact, I'm not sure I have any tears left. He hurt me. He stole something from me I'm not sure I'll get back easily. I need time to process all of that. Good luck, I say. It's all I can say. I'm sorry, Quinny, he says on a whisper. I'll prove to you I want to change. I nod. I hope so, Dad. I watch my father disappear inside the large building, and then I turn to Tazen. I don't know what my expression says, but it must say a lot, because he reaches out and cups my jaw in his hands. He steps closer treating me as if I'm China and I'm about to break. Are you doing okay there, Angel? I look up into his eyes. It's the best thing for him. That isn't what I asked. I look away, but he tilts my head so I'm forced to meet his eyes again. I'll be okay, Tazen. Are we going to have problems with me doing this? I sigh. I can't let you pay for something like that. We're together, yes, but that's a lot of money. I hesitate, and he jumps in. I'm going to tell you something, and I want you to pay attention because I won't say it again. First, I make more money than you could begin to imagine, so the expense for this is nothing to me, and it's the least I can do after buying out the garage. My heart swells. It swells and explodes. Second, he goes on, I've been in your situation, Angel. You might not know it looking at me but I know how it feels to live in a difficult situation. Now my interest is piqued, but I say nothing and let him continue. Third, he leans in close, pulling me to him. I've had a lot of women, but none of them have managed to get under my skin the way you have. You drive me batshit crazy and make me feel fucking incredible all at the same time. I don't know if we'll go far. I don't know if it'll last. But I hope to God it does, because you're changing me. I need that to be enough for you right now. I need you to let me help. 
Something beautiful and warm explodes in my chest. Something that coats all the ugly and makes me feel something I haven't felt in my entire life. Joy. Pure, unadulterated joy. And I want more of it. I want as much as I can take. So, with a smile, I say the only thing I can. Tazen Watts? Are you officially asking me to go steady? He bursts out laughing. I think that's a yes. Chapter 24 It's been two weeks since Dad went in and started his long road to recovery. He hasn't called me. The nurses and doctors have informed me that the first four days were agony, but he's slowly getting better with each passing day. But it's still a long process that requires a lot of work. I'm glad that he's getting through. I'll call and visit him as soon as I can, but we both need this time. I'm feeling better about everything, and have tried to push the incident to the back of my mind by keeping busy at work. Tazen has kept me occupied by helping me sort Dad's house and apartment hunt for my own place. We're going away tomorrow, back to L.A., to visit his other garage and attend the massive unveiling of a car. Plus, we're going to watch a race with one of his builds and attend a charity function. I'm looking forward to it for more reasons than one. Getting away is something I need desperately, and getting away with Tazen, I think I might just need even more. Things between us have been good. We've been spending time together. We've worked together, even though it's on separate jobs, and we even went out to dinner last night. There's something between us, a deep spark that's proving to be rather beautiful. I'm nervous about going away for a few days, but it's a good nervous. Being alone with Tazen isn't something I thought I'd ever be doing. Then there's the fact that he's taking me to his original garage. That blows my mind. I've wanted to see where he started for so long, ever since I first watched his show on television. There's something about seeing where someone started out. How's the fix coming along? I jerk out of my thoughts and stare over at Toby, who has his arms crossed over his chest. He's giving me his usual angry look. I still haven't figured that guy out. Damn him. I will get the better of him eventually. He has me curious, that's for sure. I give him a bright smile even though he's giving me a glare. It's fine. He raises his brows. Fine? Yes, I nod. It's fine. Tazen asked when it'll be complete. Tell my hunk of a boss that if he wants to know that, he can ask me himself. I get back to work and listen to Toby's grunt. I smile and focus on the task at hand. I might also be thinking about what I'm going to take for our weekend away. We're going to a charity dinner, which means I'll need a nice dress. I wonder if I have time to go and buy one before we leave. I'm deep in this thought when a hard body presses against my back. Are you being difficult, Angel? I grin at the sound of Tazen's voice. His hand slides around and lands on my stomach, pulling me back into him. No, I said it's fine. That's an answer. I'm thinking you're pushing me to bend you over another car. I shiver. Maybe I am. He presses his lips to my neck, and we hear the grunting of the guys around us. Fuck. Take it outside, Rick mutters. I grin in turn, reaching up and hooking my arms around Tazen's neck. Then I lean in and kiss him. I make it deep and hard, with loads of tongue. Jesus, Drasco yells. That's sick. It's awesome, Kellen laughs. Fuck, Toby grunts. I pull back and see Tazen is grinning, obviously impressed by my show of affection. I'm going to leave early today. I need to get a dress. He shakes his head and I frown. We're going to a charity dinner, I point out. I can't go without a dress. His lips quirk. I already got you one. I blink. You got me one? Yeah, I got you one. I narrow my eyes at him. You got me one? He chuckles. Okay, my sister got you one. I gave her your size and she got you one. Well, it's actually three, so you can choose. My mouth drops open. Three? Yeah, baby, three. But I don't need three. He leans down, brushing his lips against mine. Only the best for my girl. His girl. That feels nice. Yes, but... Three? He leans back with a wolfish grin. 
That's three for me to peel off. I slap his chest. You're an animal, and... and you got your sister to do it. He shrugs. She thought it was fun. Okay, well, I'll be sure to put them all to good use. You won't be wearing any of them for long, he says, spinning me back towards my job and slapping my ass. Now get back to work. Aye, aye, boss. He walks away with a chuckle. I get back to work with a smile. The plane ride to L.A. isn't long and we arrive just as the sun is setting. I've never been here before, so I'm fascinated as we drive through the busy streets. We arrive at our hotel and check in. Tazen has planned for us to meet his family for dinner, which has my stomach twisting with nerves. I hope they don't think I'm too average for their son. The hotel is beautiful but I did notice Tazen didn't go over the top with the room. I think he did that for me, and the very idea makes my heart swell. He doesn't want me feeling uncomfortable. It is a nice room, though. It has a massive king bed, a beautiful patio that overlooks the lights of the city, and a seriously awesome bath. As soon as we shut the door, I drop my bags and rush out onto the patio. Tazen is behind me in seconds, wrapping his arms around me. You like it? It's amazing, I breathe. So pretty. Yeah, I liked living here. Why did you leave? I ask, twisting so I'm facing him. Florida has better clientele for racing, so therefore more business for me, and more opportunities to build racing cars. You made a good choice. What time is dinner with your family? At seven. We have an hour. An hour? I cry, turning and rushing back into the room. Oh no. He laughs sitting on the bed and kicking his boots off. He watches in fascination as I rush around the room, pulling out clothes, showering, doing my hair and getting dressed. He doesn't move from his spot as I do. When we have only ten minutes to go, he showers and changes, like I'm making a big deal out of nothing. Damn him for being so casual. I'm dying of nerves. Ready? He asks. I'm pacing by the door. Of course I'm ready. He laughs. I glare. Come on, he says, taking my hand and leading us out. They'll love you. We get into the elevator, and I turn and glance at myself in the mirror. My dress is black, but it's not tight or short. It's snugger fitting around the bust, but flares out at my waist and goes to my knees. My shoes are the only pair of heels I own, and they're sling-back pumps, also black. I left my hair down and did some basic makeup. I look nice but I feel so out of place. I don't do dresses. You can get back into your jeans later, Tazen teases. My God, he knows me so well. My heart melts. Not funny, I squirm. I hate dresses. Maybe, he says, placing a hand on my lower back and leading me out of the elevator. But baby, they don't hate you. Damn it, I grumble. Why do you have to be so sweet? He flashes me a grin and we exit the hotel. We catch a cab to a nice restaurant in the middle of Hollywood. It's quaint and looks like it serves delicious food. I'm fidgeting like mad as I wait for Tazen to point out his family. He leads me inside and then waves towards a group of four people. I look in their direction and my heartbeat starts thumping harder. The older woman, who is clearly his mother, Regina, is an attractive, raven-haired beauty. She's tall and slim, wearing a nice halter dress in red. She's got a man on her arm, who I'm assuming is Tazen's stepfather, Josh. He's handsome, with salt and pepper hair and kind blue eyes. To his left is a younger woman, who I am assuming is retro. She's, well, retro. Her hair is bright blue, no kidding. She's wearing a black and white polka dot dress that looks like it belongs in the 50s, and she's got sleeve tattoos up her arms. She's gorgeous, though. There's no denying that. The man standing next to her must be Tazen's brother, Kellyan. He is as good-looking as his brother, with his long dark hair and dark brown eyes. He's got a more gentle face than Tazen, not as rugged, but he's handsome as hell. We stop in front of them, and I'm concerned I'm going to throw up on someone's shoes. I've never met someone's parents before. What if I say something wrong? What if they hate me and demand that Tazen find someone better? I want to gag. Instead, I force a smile as their eyes take me in. Tazen lets go of my hand and hugs them all, sharing backpats and kisses. 
Then he steps back and wraps an arm around me. Mom, Josh, Retro, and Kel. This is my girl, Quinn. Oh, boy. Oh, Tazen, Regina says, stepping forward. She's beautiful. Hi, Quinn. It's so lovely to meet you. She reaches out, pulling me in for a hug. Well, I guess Tazen's mom likes me. That's a good start. It's lovely to meet you, too, Regina. She smiles warmly at me and Josh extends his hand. Josh, good to meet you, Quinn. Hi, Josh. Finally, I've been waiting for this moment, Retro says, throwing herself at me. She pulls me in for a hug, then steps back and studies me. Gosh, you are pretty. I laugh softly. Thanks. So are you. She touches her hair and grins. I know. Kel rolls his eyes and extends his hand. Pleased to meet you, darling. Oh, boy. Charmer like his brother, too. You, too, I smile. Right. Now that's out of the way. We can let poor Quinn breathe, Regina says, and we all laugh. The ice is broken. Thank God. Chapter 25 So you're a mechanic? Josh asks, digging into his seafood soup. I nod, poking my fork into my pasta. Yes. That's impressive. How long have you been working on cars? All my life, basically, I answer. Nice. Josh nods his approval. She's fucking good at it, too. Tazen sings my praises. I gave her a hard time at first, but it turns out she's got more skill than half of my seasoned mechanics. My heart swells at his compliment, and I smile at him. He winks at me. That's hot, Kel says. I wish I could find a girl that wasn't a ditzy Barbie doll. Then maybe you should stop shopping for them in dollhouses, son. Josh laughs. Kel grunts. Probably right. I'm totally in awe, Retro says. I wish I was that badass. I look at her. Pretty sure you are, she grins. Yeah, that's totally true. Love yourself much? Tazen says, grinning at her. Bite me, Taze. You're no better. He smiles knowingly at his sister. I laugh at their banter. So, Regina says, looking at me. Do you have siblings, Quinn? I shake my head. No. And your parents? Tazen reaches over, squeezing my hand. But I don't mind answering. I can't hide from my past any longer, and I'm not going to be ashamed of it. I did nothing to be ashamed of. My mom died of cancer when I was younger. It was hard on my dad, and he became an alcoholic. He's getting the help he needs now, though. So we're getting there. I hate the pity in their faces, but I push past it. That's a shame, love. I'm sorry, Regina says. This girl, Tazen says, pulling me close and pressing a kiss to my temple, is tougher than anyone I've ever met. I turn and smile up at him. He leans down, brushing his lips across mine. When we turn back to everyone, Regina is watching us with a twinkle in her eye. She's happy her son is happy. My heart swells at that. And how's the garage going, Taze? Josh asks. They get into a conversation about the garage, and I spend that time getting to know Regina and Retro. When we're all finished and the night has progressed, they announce they're leaving. We all stand and say our goodbyes, my heart warm that I got to meet Tazen's family, and they're so amazing. I hug them all, and then Tazen and I head back out to the street. You tired, baby? He asks, wrapping his arm around my shoulder. I shake my head. Nope. Why? He grins. Good. I have something you're going to love. Tazen and I stand in his garage that sits right outside L.A. in Glendale. It's impressive. You can tell it's been looked after and expanded. It's massive. Eight bays with cars from one end to the other. The parts room is extensive, and they even have a paint bay. Wow. If this is what he plans on doing to the garage back home, I might just admit it was the best thing for it. Taze, I breathe, shocked that I'm even calling him that. This is amazing. It's pretty incredible, right? He says proudly. It truly is. He leads me towards a sleek blue car. We're taking this baby out tonight. 
I stare at him. We are? Isn't it someone else's? He shakes his head. No, this one will just go up at an auction. We make good money that way, too. So for now, it's still mine. I have just the place to take it. You ready? I nod and excitement bubbles in my chest as he opens the door for me, and I slip into the car. It's only a two-seater, with bucket seats and black leather interior. It's beautiful. Tazen gets in the driver's side and flashes me a shit-eating grin. We're going to make the streets of L.A. scream tonight. Oh, boy. And baby, he says, as he cranks the engine and it roars to life. We're going to make sure your panties are soaking fucking wet because of it. I flush and cross my legs, already feeling warmth building there. I look forward to it, I say in a husky tone. He grins and pulls a remote from his pocket. He presses a button and the garage door begins to slide open. You ready? I nod. Oh, I was ready yesterday. He backs the car out and she's literally shaking with the power that's stacked under the hood. When we're out onto the street, Tazen lays his foot down and we fly forward. I scream happily and press my hands to my knees as we zip past the cars driving at a normal pace. Tazen takes us out of the city and down a long highway. The car shows its true speed when we're on the open road. She grumbles and soars, like every good car should. Like at home, Tazen starts leading me to the back streets. I realize he's taking me to a racetrack when he pulls into a large space loaded with people. This must be where he used to race. It's heaps bigger than the one at home, and it's impressive. Lights, people, cars, and all the good things a decent racetrack should have. Obviously, this isn't legal racing, but I don't care. I don't live here, and I'm up for an adventure. Tazen takes the car down a side road, and we pass a few other cars that are lining up to go in. We reach the gates, and a man comes out, walking towards us. Tazen lowers the window, and the moment the man sees him... A smile lights his face. Tazen fucking Watts. No way. What's up, Doug? Tazen says, putting his hand out and shaking Doug's hand. Fuck all, bro. What brings you back to this side of the world? Visiting my garage? You gonna let me race tonight? My heart rate accelerates. Race? Tazen's going to race? Oh, God. Yeah, fuck yeah. Always got a spot for you. Line up, Fourth Bay. Tazen nods and shakes his hand again. Then we drive down to where all the cars are lining up. I turn to him when we stop. You're going to race! He grins. No, baby. You're going to race. I stare with wide eyes. P -p -p pardon You heard me. You said you've always wanted to get behind a wheel of one of these. Now is your chance. No, I say quickly. I'm not driving this. I don't know how to drive this. I'll crash it and... No. Tazen reaches over, curling his fingers around the back of my neck. You won't crash it, and you're going to do some warm-up laps. You can't go wrong with this, Angel. You lose, it doesn't matter. You win, great. I'm not driving this car. His grin turns wicked. Oh, yeah, you are. I can't. You can. He gets out and walks around to my side. Slide over. We're taking her for a few rounds. Tazen? No, I stammer. He reaches in, lifts me, and throws me across the seat. You'll never get another chance like this, Quinn. You've got it in you. You've been around cars all your life. You know how to handle them. Now start it up. He slides into the passenger side and tosses me the keys. I catch them, but I can barely breathe through the nerves. I don't know. No more hesitation. Start her up. I turn and slide the key in. Then I kick off my heels and start her up. The engine rumbles to life and my nerves hum in excitement. Oh, God, he's really letting me do this. He's letting me race his car. Suddenly, I'm a bundle of excited energy. I listen as Tazen goes through everything about the car. I nod and then turn to face the front. It's your time to shine. Away you go. He sits back in the chair and I edge the car forward. I can feel the power beneath me, and my heart starts fluttering harder. I slowly pick up speed as I pull onto the racetrack. There are only two other cars doing warm-up laps, so it's basically all mine. I hit the first two corners quite slowly, scared to let it go and give this car what I know it wants. Speed. Come on. 
Put your foot on it, Tazen encourages. I take a deep breath. Then I press the gas pedal to the floor. The engine sparks to life and the car lunges forward. With a happy squeal, I press down further. The loud rumbling fills my ears as the car starts getting faster and faster. You know how to take a corner, Quinn. Tazen yells over the sound. Slight break in, but always accelerate out. I do as he says and take my first corner beautifully. Fuck yeah, baby, he shouts. My adrenaline builds and I pick up speed, taking the corners like a pro. Tazen is laughing beside me and my chest is full of excitement. I'm pumped up and happier than I've been in such a long time. When we reach the start, we go around again. This time I get faster. I'm concentrating hard now, trying to memorize the corners as best I can. When we complete the second round, I pull up and turn to Tazen. Oh my god! I scream. That was amazing! It's about to get better. The race is starting. Suddenly I feel sick. Tazen must notice because he leans over and makes me look at him. You're a natural, baby. Give it all you've got. Then he gets out of the car. Wait, he's not coming with me? He walks around to my side and I lower the window. He's about to lean in when we hear a familiar voice. What the hell are they doing here? Tazen turns, and I look past him to see Cheyenne storming over. Great, just great. I push the car door open and get out. We don't have long before the race starts. Cheyenne gives me a once-over and then stops in front of Tazen, with her hands firmly planted on her hips. You're going to let this, she waves a hand at me. Amateur, drive one of your cars, but you won't give me a damned new one? Tazen steps up in her face. That girl right there has more respect and talent in her pinky finger than you do in your whole body, Cheyenne. I'd give her a thousand cars before I'd ever give you one again. Her eyes flare with anger. You'll be giving me one, Tazen. I'll make sure of it. She has the nerve to threaten him. She has no scruples. We'll see about that, he growls. She opens her mouth to say something else, but the beginning of the race is announced. She glares at me and hisses. I'll have the time of my life smashing your little girlfriend here off the track. Anger bubbles inside me. I really don't like this woman. I'd love to see what you've got, I say. She laughs, flicking her hair back. Oh, you'll see what I've got. I have a new car, and it's amazing. Nothing like that piece of shit you're driving. She did not just insult Tazen's car. Funny, I say, my voice smooth. It's these pieces of shit that you've been begging for since Tazen flicked you off his shoe. Her chest puffs out. You better watch yourself out there, bitch. I smirk at her and she turns, storming off. Tazen turns to me, his eyes suddenly worried. I don't trust her, Quinn. I take his hand, squeezing. You have to let me do this now, Tazen. He sighs. Fuck yeah, I know I do. I lean forward, pressing a kiss to his cheek. I've got this. God, I hope I've got this. I get back into the car and he leans in. You're in the fourth row, best spot to be. You're not on the ends or dead center. Watch out because Cheyenne is always on the end, and she'll try to push you in. You get scared, you pull off. That's simple. This is fun, okay? I nod, but we both know, as soon as Cheyenne challenged me, it became about more than fun. Now, get over there and show me what you're made of. He presses a kiss to my lips and then steps back. I wind up the window and pull the car to the starting stop. My palms are sweating, and my stomach is twisting as I watch the girl walk out into the middle of the road. She's got the flags in her hands. She looks around, smiles, and then holds them up in the air. I get the car ready, holding the steering wheel like it's my lifeline. When she lowers them, I put my foot down. The car roars forward, and the sounds of the other cars zooming off makes it damned loud in here. I bound towards the first corner with three cars beside me and two in front. We take it easily and I study my opponents. The two cars in front of me are quite close. If I can edge to my right, I might be able to get around them. Deciding that's my plan of attack, I start edging to my right and picking up speed. 
I hit the gas when I see a gap and soar right past them. Pride and desperation compete in my chest as I come up against the car in first place. The two I just passed are close behind me and could make it past me at any second. I study the track and try to remember where the next corner lies. I recall it being a sharp one, so I pull into my left slightly. I'm right, and the drivers behind me are forced to slow down because they hit at the wrong angle. This gives me the jerk forward I need. I close in on the car currently in first, excitement building high. It's then I realize that car belongs to Cheyenne. Great. I don't focus on that, but instead on the plan of attack. Another corner is coming up that sharp. I need to get around her just after it for me to be able to win this thing. As we approach the corner, I tuck myself in the inner lane and come up beside her. Apparently, she does not like this, because she swerves her car towards mine, making me jerk my hand and therefore my car to the left. I have to quickly correct it before I spin out of control. By this time, another car has passed me. Anger flares and I hit the gas and bring the car back up near the two at the front. I'll bring her down for that. I pass the first one and am faced with Cheyenne again. I anticipate her move because I've watched her race before. And break right as she jerks her car towards mine. She pulls too hard and ends up turning the front of the car too much towards the middle. I take this chance to get around her. Suddenly, I'm in the lead. My heartbeat picks up and my palms become sweaty as I see the finish line. I glance behind me. There's a different car coming up close, and any second he's going to get around me. This is my chance to give it all I've got. I drop the car down a gear, and I put my foot flat to the ground. She roars and growls, speeding up and screaming towards the finish line. I cross it two car spaces in front of the other one. I screech to a stop and am screaming with joy when Tazen opens my door. He's screaming something, too, but I launch out of the car. He lifts me up and my legs wrap around his waist. He holds me tight, yelling something in my ear, but I can't hear it past the roaring of the crowd. I won. I fucking won. Holy fucking shit, Tazen yells, putting me down. Baby, you won. I won, I scream. His smile is so big it's infectious. People are around me, patting my back and congratulating me. The announcer tells the crowd I've won, and they erupt into cheers. I'm new, but they know who Tazen Watts is, so therefore they put their money on his car. They made the right choice. So did I. A moment later, I'm being handed a thick bundle of cash. Your winnings. My winnings? I stare down at it. There has to be ten thousand dollars here. I stop breathing. Baby, Tazen says into my ear, you fucking won. <laughs> this money is mine? Fuck yeah, it's yours, and well earned, you little firecracker. This money will change my life. Holy shit. You fucking cheated. I turn to see Cheyenne storming towards me. She's furious, enough for Tazen to put his arm at my belly and push me around behind him. She fucking cheated, running me off the track. I could have been killed. I lean around Tazen. If I recall, you pushed me first. Don't be a sore loser, Cheyenne. Her body jerks and she roars. I'll kick your ass. Let's do it again, right here, right now. I snort. No thanks. I already won. You go and stroke your pride. It'll make you feel better. Tazen laughs just as Murray approaches Cheyenne. It was luck, Cheyenne spits at me. Luck. Or, I say grinning, you just suck. She lunges forward, skidding to the side to try and get around Tazen and get to me. Tazen puts his foot out, and she trips over it, toppling down. She glares up at him when she hits the ground and he leans down, staring her right in the eyes. No one touches my girl, Cheyenne. If you want to see a bad side of me... Try it again. That stupid slut cheated. And, Tazen growls, no one calls her names. Cheyenne, Murray says, and for the first time I notice he looks exhausted, like he's just had enough. He reaches down and lifts her. Let's go. This isn't over, she screeches at Tazen. I will destroy you. 
I know what you've done, and I am going to take you and your stupid little girlfriend down, Tazen Watts. You'll pay for all of this. Tazen grinds his jaw and flicks his eyes to Murray. I'm done with this, Murray. Done with her destroying my cars. Done with her threats. And her bullshit. I swear to you now, if she goes to the cops, I will destroy everything you've worked for and take you down with me. Murray flinches. Cheyenne keeps yelling. You know nothing about him. But I have everything on you, Tazen. I am going to destroy you. Murray's jaw clenches, and he spins Cheyenne towards him. We're done here, Cheyenne. You won't be opening your mouth, and you won't be saying a damned word. Because if you do, I am going to take you down with me. She blinks and then screeches, You won't do anything of the sort! You're all crazy! She throws her hands up into her hair and screams loudly. For the first time, I see it. What Tazen was talking about. She's lost it. There's something clearly wrong with her. Murray watches her and something flashes across his face. Then he takes her wrist and tugs her hands from her hair. We're done here. You're at the end of the rope, Cheyenne. You need help. Don't tell me what I need, she bellows. Everyone is staring at us now. You do as I say, Murray grunts, or I will cut you off. Without me, you will have none of this. She stops screaming and blinks at him. You wouldn't do that to me, Murray. I fucking will, he barks. Now move, or I'll make true to my threats. He doesn't let her answer. He just wraps his arms around her and looks to Tazen. Walk away, Tazen. We're done. You will hear no more from either of us if you hold up your end of the deal. The money. Murray might know Cheyenne is nuts, but he still wants a payout. Honestly, people can be such dogs when they want to be. Do I have your word, Murray? Tazen grunts. Murray reaches a hand out and Tazen shakes it. You have my word. Good. I'll be in contact. Murray nods again and then drags her off, and then Tazen turns to me. There's definite relief in his eyes, and a smile breaks out across my face as I launch myself into his arms, love and happiness swelling in my chest. I love you, Tazen Watts. He holds me tight and leans down to my ear. Fuck, baby. I love you, too. Best night ever. Chapter 26 Oh, God, I gasp, arching up. Tazen is driving his cock in and out of me. We're both on the bed. His big body is over mine and he's thrusting just quick enough to spark my nerves, but slow enough to make it sweet and perfect. His hands are in my hair, his lips are roaming my neck, and my legs are around his waist. Baby, he grunts. Yes, honey, I cry out, clutching his back. Going to come so hard. I beat him to it, squeezing his cock with my orgasm. He follows behind, rasping my name as he thrusts into me. As he comes down, he drops his forehead to mine. Fuck, that felt good. You had me so fucking hard watching you race. I press my lips to his neck. It was amazing. Thank you. You're an impressive woman, Quinn Peterson. He rolls off me and I smile over at him. Well, I could have told you that. In fact, I think I did, he chuckles. Yeah, you did. Are you excited to see the unveiling tomorrow? Hell yes. I can't wait. When we get home, I'm fixing that car for you. I need to see you handling them more often. Because it turns it into you having the best sex of your life? He grunts. You know it. I roll into him and he tucks me into his arms. Yes, I think Tazen Watts and I just might be made for each other. The unveiling is taking place at a racetrack, because it's a new race car. It's wild with adrenaline and people, and Tazen is making a speech and revealing the car before the race starts. I'm excited, purely because I'm back at the track, and I feel so at home here. This time, I get to be by Tazen's side, watching him in his element, showing the world just what he's made of. We get to go into the pit with the pit crew and watch the cars being prepared for the race. Being a part of that makes me feel right at home. 
and I can't stop myself from getting excited. Tazen seems to fit right in, too, and I notice he's more than well-respected around these parts. Drivers come over and tell him how much they love his work, and there are even fans of his. While we're going over the engine one last time, a group of girls comes over and they beg for Tazen to get a picture with them. He flashes them his best smile and poses for them, and I'm totally okay with that. When one of the girls slides her number into his pocket, I'm not okay with it. What's worse is that Tazen gives her a smile and nods his head, and then she disappears. He doesn't take it out, tear it into a thousand pieces, and stomp it into the ground. Okay, that's being slightly dramatic, but still. Quinn? I jerk and look to see Tazen watching me. Uh, yeah, coming. I step towards him, but stop when I hear the girls talking as they disappear back into the crowd. I had him last time he was here. He's amazing in bed. The things he can do with his tongue are incredible. If you get Tazen Watts to fuck you, you'll never think of another man again. I'm looking forward to him calling, then. My back stiffens, and even though I know that Tazen has had plenty of women, having one that close and talking about him makes the green-eyed monster rear its ugly head. I force my legs to move away, getting closer to Tazen. He studies me, but I force a smile and say, Yeah, what do you need? He frowns. I pretend I don't notice and smile at the pit crew. Tazen sighs and says, Just want a second set of eyes before we hand it over. My heart goes warm at the fact that he's giving me that chance, because it feels nice that he trusts me enough to give a second opinion. Okay. I do a once-over of the car, and then the announcers tell everyone that a car will be revealed. I stand against a pole, watching with pride as Tazen goes up to the stand and the microphone is handed over to him. This car is a pretty awesome build for my team. It had extra horsepower and some serious custom work on the body. It was a pleasure to be a part of an amazing project. As most of you know, I've jumped ship and am now working from Florida, so my building schedule has been doubled. This car, however, was one of the last ones I worked on before I left. The crowd cheers, women scream Tazen's name, and the atmosphere becomes excited. They want to see the car. My heart skips a beat, watching my man up there doing what he loves. I've got a lot of people to thank for this one, but obviously my entire team is the first for my thanks. It's them that work their asses off to bring these cars together. The racer who will be taking this baby on her journey through life deserves the very best of luck. And to all you fine people, the crowd roars, you've all watched my show. You've all been at my back as I built my business up from the ground. So mostly, I hope you enjoy this. He waves a hand and people clap and cheer. The car is in the middle of the track where everyone can see it. Tazen gives the nod of approval, and four men go over and lift the cover, sliding it off the sleek blue and white racing car with all the sponsor stickers covering it. The crowd cheers and whistles, and I can't wipe the massive smile off my face as I watch with pure joy the amazing work created by Tazen and his crew. As the announcer takes back over and introduces the car and driver, Tazen makes his way back over to me. He's got a beautiful big smile on his face. He looks happy, but most of all, he looks proud. So he should be. It's a beautiful car. When he reaches me, he leans in and kisses me hard, then pulls back. You going to tell me what's wrong now? I study his face and then sigh. That girl gave you her number. His brows go up. And? And you kept it in your pocket. He gives me a half smile that I don't want to admit is fucking adorable, even for him. And, baby. You kept it, I whisper. He takes my hips in his hands and brings me closer. I wasn't about to throw it on the floor. You learn one thing when dealing with fans. You do whatever to keep them happy in the public eye. If it means keeping her number and letting her think she's going to get a call, I'll do it. If I had handed it back, she would have lost it, and I would have looked like an ass. Damn it, he has a point. Okay, but when they were leaving, I heard one of them saying, She fucked you. He squeezes my hips. Sometimes you're going to hear about my past. 
I had somewhat of a reputation, but that was then, Angel. This is now. Damn it, he is right again. I nod and look up at him. Besides, you're all the woman I can handle right now. I glare at him and then slap his chest. We good? Yeah, I say. We're good. How do you think it went? I grin at him. They love you? Yeah, he says, turning us towards the crowd. It's a good feeling. It most certainly is. Stop fidgeting, woman. I snort and keep fidgeting. The dress I'm in is the nicest of the three Retro had picked out for me. It still looks like she went into a hooker shop and picked the three classiest dresses there. In other words, it's short, it's black, and it's tight. I don't do dresses on a good day, but tight dresses that show this much skin? Definitely not. I think everyone can see my butt, I complain. Tazen dressed in a tux, and looking heavenly, smirks at me. If they are, they're going to be able to die happy. That's not funny. You should have warned Retro that I don't wear, well, Retro. Tazen bursts out laughing. I thought she would get the whole charity dinner thing and realize it wasn't time for short and tight. Not that I'm complaining. You better donate some seriously good cash tonight, or I'm going to pop a cap right in. Tays and Watts. I'm cut off when a tall, elegant black man comes striding over. He stops in front of Tazen and me with a wide, beautiful grin. Hello, Jeremy, Tazen says. Good to see you. Jeremy takes Tazen's hand and they shake. You two. Long time. How's the building going? The two start jabbering about building, and I stand like the pretty sidekick and listen. When they're done... We make our way over and enjoy dinner. I join in some conversation, but mostly Tazen speaks, and I just smile. My lips begin shaking after a while. I'm doing that much of it. After dinner comes the charity donations recognition ceremony. Tazen and his company ended up donating one million to children's hospitals around the state. My heart melts. When that's done, Tazen leads me out onto the dance floor and takes me into his arms. It feels amazing being here with him, experiencing his world, and seeing the side to him that makes me truly understand why I love him. Tazen Watts is a good, down-to-earth, kind and loving man. He's what every man should be. He's exactly what I need. I look up into his eyes as we move across the dance floor, and my heart expands with raw, unadulterated love. Are you enjoying yourself? He asks as we move. I'm having a great time. I love seeing how you live and work. He smiles, running his hand up and down my back. It's always a good experience to see a car being revealed, and then being able to give back to the community through these functions. You did a really great thing. Those hospitals could use some serious donations. Nothing better than helping kids. I reach up, touching his cheek. I think there's a big softy in there, Tazen Watts. He grins. Don't tell anyone. It'll ruin my reputation. I chuckle. Your secret is safe with me. He reaches up, running his fingers through my straightened hair. I'm glad I found you, Quinn. I'm sure whatever reason you were sent to me, it was a good one. Even if you did drive me up the wall. I laugh and lean in, kissing his lips. You have plenty more years of me doing just that. Better get used to it. His eyes twinkle with love, humor, and admiration. I plan on it, baby. I look forward to that. Epilogue I smile at my father who is sitting on a lounge chair across from me. He's wearing a white tee and a pair of gray sweats. His hair is washed and has life back in it, and he no longer has dark rings under his eyes or sunken cheekbones. He looks healthier and resembles the man I remember. He's been in rehab now for three months, and he's doing really well. That's wonderful, Quinn, he says, as I tell him about rebuilding my new car. It's been a long road. The girl that was driving it was a hard racer, but it's finally starting to come back to life. It's nice when you see a car coming together. How's Tazen? He's doing really well. 
He just signed a five-car contract for a major racing mogul. That's going to keep us busy for a good long while. That's great. Is he thinking of moving into racing? He is. Tazen is making more money and expanding his career with the racing industry. Yes, it's getting bigger by the day, and he gets better contracts. That's great. It is. How are you doing, Dad? He smiles. Well, some days are harder, but I'm finding it's getting easier and easier to cope. And how do you think you'll do when you get out? His face loses its happiness, and he stares at me, really stares. There's so much guilt and shame behind his eyes. I know he's seen the very best counselors and therapists to help him through, but I also know he needs my forgiveness to truly heal. That's why I've been visiting each week now, because I want him to know I forgive him. I won't go back to it, Quinn. Every time I even think of having a drink, my stomach twists in pain over what I did to you. That memory will forever be linked to my drinking, so the very thought of it is gut-wrenching. My eyes soften, too, and I say in a gentle voice, Dad, you were very sick, and I don't blame you for what you did. I know you have to work through that at your own pace, but I want you to know I forgive you. I love you, and I'm so happy you made the choice to get better, because I know you did it for me. His eyes sparkle with tears. I would do anything for you, Quinn. I'll spend the rest of my life proving that. I beam. I hope so, because I want you around for it. He smiles and I stand, rushing over and throwing myself into his arms. He holds on to me tightly, and we sit like that for a long time. When I pull back, he kisses my forehead. I don't say it enough, but I'm so incredibly proud of the woman you've become, Quinn. And I'm proud of you. I love you, pixie girl. My heart explodes, and I smile up at my father. I love you too, Dad. Things are finally coming together for good. It's about time. Three months later. Keep your eyes closed, Quinn, Tazen orders with his hands over my eyes. You know I hate surprises, Taze. Where are you taking me? He chuckles. It's a surprise, remember? If I tell you, I think that might just destroy that. You're probably right, I laugh. Just keep walking forward. Did you buy me a pony? He laughs. A pony? Woman, don't insult yourself. I giggle. Okay, a truck. He chuckles. That's more like it, but no. I got you something much better. It's not my birthday. No, he says, his voice dipping low. So can you imagine what you'll get for that? My cheeks heat and I grind my ass against him as we walk. Enough of that. He murmurs into my ear. Why, will you get hard in front of the surprise? He nips my earlobe. Too late for that. Oh, boy. All right, he says, making me stop. Are you ready for this? I don't know. You are. He takes his hands from my eyes and I blink to get my bearings. I see my old team, as well as Tazen's guys, and my dad all standing around a covered car. My heart starts pounding as I stare at it. It couldn't be, could it? Tazen surely hasn't managed to finish my car without me. I mean, sure, I've been so busy at work I haven't even checked on it in his garage, but... Quinn, he says, turning to me. I've been wanting to fix things for you since the day I bought this garage, but I have never been able to figure out a way to do that. I took something from you, and I wanted to give it back. Tazen. I say gently. You didn't take anything. You made it better. Just let me finish, he says softly. I nod. You loved that garage for what it represented in your life. It was your mom and your dad and everything beautiful that you had left. Tears spring to my eyes. So, with your dad's help, your old crew and my crew, we managed to finish your car for you. I swallow the lump forming in my throat. Tazen, I rasp. But before I show you, I have some other news to share. Oh, gosh. The first is that I've given everyone in your old crew a job in the garage. We need more men with the workloads we've taken on. A tear leaks out and I take his hand, bringing it to my mouth and kissing it, rasping. 
Thank you, honey. The second piece of news is that your dad also has a job. He's working as head of the new mechanical team, which is your guys. He gave my dad a job. Oh, God. He gave my dad a job. Days, I croak. Now, for the best part, I thought about so many ways I could make this card true to you. But in the end, there was really only one way that could happen. So, Quinn, baby, this is your car. It's your family. And it's all your memories right back where it belongs. He nods and everyone pulls the cover off the car. As it slowly appears before me, my tears go from drops to a waterfall. My heart burns, my throat clogs up, and I let out a loud, piercing sob. The car, which was originally orange, has been fully repainted. It's now purple, which was my mom's favorite color in the world. That's not the best part, though. No, it's not even close. The best part is the pictures that have been incorporated into the paint and then glossed over. Pictures of my childhood. Pictures of my family. Pictures of everything that was once amazing in my life. My sobbing turns into thick, heavy crying when my eyes move to the hood of the car, and there, in perfect, bold letters, are two words. Two words that have always meant the world to me. Pixie wheels. I spin and throw my arms around Tazen, clutching him and sobbing loudly. He holds me tight, and then he leans down to my ear and whispers, I can't give you back your mom or the past, but I can give you back every beautiful memory you've ever had. I lean up and I kiss him. I kiss him with such ferocity my throat burns, my lips ache, and my heart feels like it's bursting with love. I love you, Tazen Watts. He swipes a tear away with his thumb, and I love you, Angel. I look back to the car, filled with all my happy places, and then I smile at each person in the room, because they've all come to mean so much to me. I never had many friends, never had any family, and now I have it all because of one incredible man. You asked me if I had a car that I loved enough I always wanted to keep, Tazen says, tucking me into his side. I did, I croak. Well, I finally found it. This is it, Gwyn. This is that car for me. It's the best thing I've ever built, and it's like that because of you. You brought passion back into my garage. You brought pride, but most of all, you brought spirit. You gave us back exactly what we needed. My mom would be so proud of this car, of me, of Dad, of all of this. Tazen squeezes me close. Angel, she would have been proud of you no matter what. Thank you, Tazen, I say, looking up at him. For what? I smile, and it's the purest, most real smile I've given in a long, long time. For bringing back everything beautiful. This has been an Audible Studios production of Hard to Break. Written by Bella Jewell. Performed by Carly Robbins. Executive Producer, Susie Bright. Producer, Mike Charzik. Copyright 2015 by Bella Jewell. Production copyright 2016 by Audible Inc. Audible Studios is a division of Audible Inc. Audible hopes you have enjoyed this program.